Good evening, party people, and welcome to June 28th. It is very nearing the close of Pride Month. Did I also mention welcome to the bar with an X? I completely scripted over that this time. A lot of adrenaline and stuff flowing through my body right now. Very colorful, too. So, to get things started rather quickly around here, this is Pride, at least at the bar with an X, week two, despite the fact that it kind of exists all year round, but you know, there are, as we as we ascribe to the corporate quarter schedule, or at least the weekly schedule, of which there are 52 weeks that we can celebrate throughout the year, we must make sure that we mark our calendars and mark our signages appropriately. If, because, this feels like a celebration because it should be a celebration. I wanted to do, I wanted to extend things out just a little bit farther because I wasn't quite done with everything that I wanted to celebrate from last week. If last week, if y'all joined us for that, it was celebrating pride as it pertains to the people who are a part of a community. We talked about the Cosmopolitan, a cocktail that has debated beginnings but may have come from a group of prideful people in Massachusetts. We talked about a couple of my favorite prideful content creators, especially in the cocktail world, and made a couple of their drinks as well. And I think there was a couple other things too we tried to make one drink that looked like a rainbow and that failed terribly it did not look very good and i am very much going to admit to that right off the bat so to kind of make up for it around here oh we got lycos floor popping in here with a raid was last seen playing fallout 3 that's my bro Please go check out Lycos Lore. I'll pop him a shout out in just a moment. Um, but because we failed so miserably at trying to create a rainbow last week, we're gonna do it a little bit one better this time around. The plan for this evening is sort of a marathon cocktail run as it pertains to the colors on the Pride Progress flag, I believe is the one that I'm referring to. That's the one that has like, it's got like six rainbow colors and then it's got the little like arrow thing on the side that's got like the trans flag colors in there and there's black, there's a white, I think there's a brown in there too. I guess white is technically included in the trans flag, but either way, it's got that arrow on the side. And it's got like 11 different colors associated with it. First I was going through it and I was like, ah, maybe we do like, uh, you know, like uh, the main like Roy G. Biv colors of the rainbow. But this was a bit of a challenge. I was like, you know what? Because if we just did like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, we'd be missing some of the other like really cool colors that showcase on some of the other pride flags out there, like the pink that appears on my own pansexual flag. It's not my flag. It's not mine. Uh, like, as in like, it's it is my possession. It is just like, I'm pansexual. Anyways, we're open about that in these week. I'm usually very not open about that. Just like get anxious and stuff. Plus like, you know, aside from the uh, whole like, putting in your face thing, you know, if somebody asks, sell it. Anyway, I, I digress. To go forth on things, we're gonna make a cocktail for each color on the Pride Progress flag. Starting off with the color red, and I'm pretty much gonna jump right into things here because there are a lot of cocktails to cover and I talk way too much. So if I don't get started now, we might be here until literally tomorrow morning, two o'clock AM. Uh, that is the goal. We're getting through all 11 of them. We absolutely will. But first, as I have my buddy Lycos popping in here, let me give that boy a shout out. I was watching him a bit before because he's an excellent content creator just like my own. And I actually had some really nice opportunity over the weekend to chat with my boy about this kind of stuff. He's a partner in crime of mine and I love him very much. So please go drop that boy a follow. I like it. He's got a YouTube too, and that's the fun part. So the first cocktail that we're gonna start things off with, I wish I, I I don't have like a Pride Progress flag to be referencing up here. Instead, I tried my best to put all the colors on the board over here. We're gonna start off with the color red, the red color on the Pride Progress flag, and the cocktail that we're representing on the color red is one called the Angostura Sour, or uh, technically, I guess you could call it a Trinidad Sour. There are many different ways to sour, but this one specifically calls for Angostura bitters. So that's where we're gonna start things off. This is Ango, Ang, Ango, Ango Stora Sour. And that's our red color. That's our red color. We're starting things off at the top of the rainbow. There even is, if there even is a top of the rainbow. We have a fancy color out here too. <laughs> this is the color red. Actually, I should grab all of my markers and stuff just so I have them all on standby here. This is my marker thing. Until the bar gets filled up with cocktails, I guess I'll, I'll just put those up in the corner. Yeah, you can't see those. It doesn't matter. This is red. This is the red one. The red one. Red in parentheses. Anyway, with that all that out of the way, so the Angostura Sour is similar to other sours in the sense that it has sour components to it. It utilizes an egg to create a really interesting foam. What's also interesting about the Angostura Sour is the fact that it uses so much Angostura bitters. I mean, relatively speaking, usually in your cocktails, you will wind up garnishing with a couple of dashes of Ango or perhaps one 
depending on how into bitters and stuff that you are. However, this one costs for an entire ounce of it. I think in some iterations, I've seen it use up to two ounces, two full ounces, about 60 something milliliters of this stuff. This is potent. It tastes like straight up like cinnamon, tree bark, and like like excitement. It's like passion in a bottle in, in certain way. It's, it's passion spice in a bottle. And it's, um, I'm actually gonna need to take the sort of dashing mechanic off of this thing to actually make the cocktail that we're talking about. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to dry shake things first because we're going to put an egg white in there. We're going to emulsify it a little bit and then we'll put things out into, it looks like a chilled sour glass. I don't know what a sour glass is, but I've got some coupe glasses in the freezer. So we're just going to go with one of those ones. So the first thing that we're going to need, I'm going to start things off colorful with my colorful plaid shaker here just because it's the first one of the evening i like to get this one out of the way because it feels like it's going to fall apart it's a beautiful beautiful little shaker here but um it wants to get everywhere it wants to get messy and that's okay sometimes we like getting messy um it also doesn't really take kindly to uh, a lot of ice cubes so uh i'm gonna put like three more little tiny cubes in here and we're just gonna call it and it just reminded me that it was a dry shake you're absolutely right i don't know what i'm doing See, this is the this is the reason why I try to slow down a little bit more. Dry shake first. Forget about those ice cubes for a moment. I literally put this in your freezer. I literally wouldn't be here without the, my beautiful fiance to remind me when I'm screwing things up. Especially right after I said the correct instructions. Do you have enough eggs? I have three eggs. That should be enough. I think I only need two this evening. Because um, we don't have eggs downstairs, so if you we don't have any eggs. No, we ran out. Oh my god, we ran out of eggs. This might be the perfect amount of eggs for this episode. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add to our shaking glass an egg white, some demerara syrup, some Angostura bitters, and that's it. Oh, and lemon juice. There's also lemon juice in there. At first I was like, there is absolutely no like base spirit in here. The Angostura is the base spirit. Um, I'm going to try my best not to get an egg yolk in here because now that I realize how like uh, conservative I have to be about these eggs, um, I'm going to try to be careful. I'll go check downstairs. And I was going to check downstairs just in case I wind up screwing well, actually, up here. If you just screw up, just make sure if I screw up, just like, like I, 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 you know what, you know what? She could always go to the, I don't want her to run to the store on my behalf, not to Oregon Street and it would feel so, I feel so bad. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attempt to crack this egg over top of this little egg yolk thing that I have here so that all of the egg white runs into the glass and hopefully none of the egg yolk. I have a bucket on standby for uh, anything that doesn't wind up working there. I see Harry popping in here saying, good evening, camera. And I say, good evening, Harry. How are you? Egg been cracked. I'm going to crack it over top of my thing here and hopefully I can keep the yolk intact. Lo and behold, it seems that I was able to keep the yolk intact. That's great. This bucket is now off limits to absolutely everybody. What am I going to do with this extra egg yolk? Probably going to cook it in the morning. So let me go get an extra container over from my little extra container bit over here and uh, see what I can do about making sure that I can conserve that um, so that I'm not like, you know, wasting perfectly good food. That'd be terrible. You can actually see, I'll pull over for a moment here, I'll pull over the cocktail angle for anybody who's uninitiated with the whole, you know, eggs and cocktails type thing. This is kind of what we got going over here. Hello, bud. I'm not going to be, I don't want to move this thing around too much because I fear, I fear for my yolk. Fear for my life. So you got to see the egg white kind of hanging on the edge there. If I shake this thing, it should like kind of get all out of there. Um, but if I kind of put it into my container over here, that should also help out. There we go. Most of that egg white, that snotty, snotty egg white is in there. And I've got... Evidently, one more egg yolk uh, for uh, the morning after. So that'll work out just fine. Harry says, I'm tired, but I don't want to sleep. How am I? I'm doing rather well this evening, all things considered. It was a rather, uh, it was an interesting day. There were a lot of things that needed to get done, and uh, my printer was not being very nice to me. Not my 3D printer, just my regular printer. It's a tale as old as time itself, a tale as old as technology itself, and we fight with the printer. It's, um, it's not surprising. It certainly doesn't surprise me in the least bit. Hopefully nobody else out there had printer troubles today. And if you did, great! I'm not the only one. And great, you're not the only one. I'm gonna put my little egg thing in here. I, I gotta get a little, I gotta get like a little like intermediary container for all the dirty tools that I want to use again later. So I'm just gonna sacrifice one of my, uh, I have one of these small little wine glasses over here. I'm just gonna sacrifice if it, nope, actually the lip is not even big enough for that. So let's, uh, I'm gonna use the boot. The boot's gonna be my sacrificial, um, yeah, I'm gonna put some of my tools in there. <laughs> just put it on my table over here. 
the 2D printer, the two-dimensional printer, the original printer. I guess not the original printer. The original is a printing press. So next what we're going to add is we're going to add an ounce of lemon juice, or about 30 milliliters, an ounce of Demerara syrup, as well as an ounce of Angostura bitters. Again, Angostura bitters, you wouldn't necessarily see in this large amount in most other cases, but uh, when it comes to the Angostura sour, um, being that the Angostura is like the whole like flagship thing there, like it better be prevalent, at least in some way. Ugh. It takes a little bit for me to get it uh, off the, the thing over here. And then my hand, as I'll show you, kind of has this awesome like little like bloody quality to it. It looks like I just like had a bloody nose into my hand, but I assure you I did not. It is just the bitters. It's just the ango. It's just the angle. It's the angle of the ango. That's what it is. Do a little bit of wordplay there for a moment. So I'm gonna take one of my measuring, whoops, the measuring the jiggers over here. I'll take this one because this one fell into the cracked egg that's currently in the bucket down below, which is on this side this time. And we're gonna add a full ounce, or about 30 milliliters, of our Angostura bitters. Keep things spicy over here, they're very spicy. Full ounce. And then I'll go get my lemons, so we do the lemon one. I can put the top back on this because I don't plan on using it again anytime soon. Um, unless it comes up later. There are 11 cocktails we're covering this evening. It's a marathon run. How late will that go? I don't really care. We're celebrating here. Harry says, can you show the badges you're wearing? I can't read them from my phone. I will do that after I put all the ingredients in here. I'll do that while I'm doing my first little dry shake over here. So what we'll do, I also need my Devarara syrup. Devarara syrup is just like regular simple syrup where you can mix in any particular ratio that you want to, such as a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one by volume, uh, except it specifically uses Demerara sugar, which I think comes from the Demerara part of the world. What exactly that means? It's kind of it's kind of molasses -y. It's kind of dark in color. It's like brown sugar, but not quite brown sugar. Although it is sugar that is brown. So there's that. But I didn't only need an ounce of that. I'm giving it a taste of my hand. And Demerara sugar, right off the bat, tastes a lot more, almost, it, it tastes more, almost cinnamony, almost caramel or toffee-like compared to like, let's say a regular white sugar, a white sugar type of syrup. Uh, it tastes amazing. And next what I'll do is I'll grab one of my lemons over here and squeeze it for hopefully a single ounce of lemon juice. We'll see. One of the things that I've been looking into um, is how to create a little local batch of super juice for the bar with the mech so that I'm not going through as many different types of citruses and stuff. Super juice, for those who aren't aware, is kind of this like this this product of, I guess, like food chemistry, where essentially you you take the base acids of, let's say, um, a lemon or a lime and combine it with a blended combination of the actual fruit itself, including the, the actual juice that comes from it. So, and if I was kind of trying to make like a, a lemon super juice, I'd take like, I don't remember the exact acids. Uh, one of them is definitely citric acid. I think the other one is malic acid. You blend up your lemons after giving them a nice clean, I suppose. And you also, you know, you put the lemon juice in there. And essentially you have something that is like, I think like six times more sour, six times more lemon or six times more lemon lime, I mean, than anything that you would be able to create like on your own from the things itself. Plus you, you use all the, you use all the different parts of the fruit. I think that's a, that's a nice admirable thing. I'm gonna take one of my other glasses over here, this pint glass, and I'm gonna put my other lemons in it for later. I now have utility glasses. That's something that I don't normally do. Uh, and I can put this over in my boot over here. Actually, that boot doesn't really wanna... The squeezer is a little heavy, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it in a second. Harry says, do you drink iced coffee much? If so, have you tried brown sugar syrup with it? I do drink iced coffee. I was meaning to get some today and I completely forgot to ask them to ice it, but the regular coffee was just fine. I have only, I've only put my own syrup in coffee once and that was using a molasses syrup that I didn't want to go to with, a burnt molasses syrup. It was way too powerful for my coffee. But the idea of using a brown sugar syrup sounds absolutely delightful with iced coffee. Is that something that you've wind up trying? If so, did you make your own brown sugar syrup? That's awesome. That's like more so than I'd say for most people that I know. It's rather impressive. Or I'm sure like, I feel like you can get brown sugar syrup at the store and stuff. So let's see, let me do, this dry shake is gonna be a little difficult. So I'm gonna try to try my best to keep things all sealed over here while I do the first dry shake. Essentially what we're doing here is we're allowing the acid of the lemon juice to be able to emulsify the egg without, you know, without the ice stuff in there. This is currently fighting against my grip uh, and kind of, leaking a little bit because uh when lo and behold 
when you don't have ice in there, you're actually creating an inverse pressure differential. Instead of the thing wanting to remain shut, it actually wants to explode and get all over the place. I didn't drop that much liquid. I can tell because the towel below me is a light pink color and it doesn't seem to be more dark pink than it was previously because the Angostura is just it's just absolutely maddening. I'm gonna try to be a little more aggressive on this just for a moment and then um, we'll put some ice in it to hopefully fix things up a little bit. Definitely shouldn't have used this shaker in particular, but we have it. And I didn't do too much of a mess this time. I just gotta get this thing off. There we go. And then we can add our ice to it and finish thing, this thing off. What's gonna be cool is this is gonna have a really, really awesome like foaming effect when it goes into the glass. This will be fun. This will be very, very fun. Okay, so I wouldn't trust myself. Now I went with the basic one and just went to Starbucks. That is a classic choice, Harry. I wouldn't trust myself or even know where to start to make my own syrup. I assure you, making your own syrup was intimidating to me as well at first, but it really is as simple as taking sugar and putting it into water. And if you know how to make eggs, if you know how to use a stove, you just gotta heat that thing up just ever so slightly to make sure that everything is completely uh, dissolved. If you, if you do equal parts of the sugar to equal parts of the water, every single milliliter of water, and you match with a single gram of sugar, then you have a great simple syrup. You can double the proportions for an even stronger simple syrup or other type of syrup that you just put things into, and it'll be shelf stable for a little bit longer. Actually, it could be a lot longer for like up to a couple weeks or so. Anyways, we dry shook without the ice. Now we're gonna shake with the ice and hopefully give ourselves a much easier time with this process, lest my shirt get stained. But you really couldn't tell anyway, because there's so much red on it already. All right, so now that that's all done, Finally, I'm gonna take out one of my chilled coupe glasses or a sour glass. I don't know what a sour glass is, according to AngostoraBitters.com, who gave me this recipe. However, we're gonna make it happen anyways. There's not a lot of liquid in here, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with this guy in the back. I have a really small freezer over here, so uh, it's gonna take me just a little bit to make sure I don't like, you know, break glass in there. Because if I break glass in the freezer, that's bad. <laughs> That means that I won't be able to know the difference between ice and the glass. Let's pop this cocktail angle over here to get a view of our beautifully chilled glass. Beautifully chilled, not by my part, but because of the part of the freezer. Everyone's going on a little ride for a second there. This is our... This is our throne. Our throne for our Angostura. Now, I didn't see anything here that says that we should garnish it with anything, but we don't really need to garnish it. It is a really cool looking cocktail on its own. Plus, I feel like if we added any citrus and stuff, it might just be distracting from everything else that we got. This is intended to be the red cocktail of the evening. Hopefully, it accomplishes that goal. And so far, it looks like we're doing all right. That foam is super duper prevalent, and it is very, very thick. I don't know if you all caught the sound that that made as it uh, came out of the shaker. I'm just gonna let that sit for just a moment. I'm gonna clean out the shaker because I'm pretty sure I might have to use it again later. Let me bring the bucket over so I don't make too much of a mess. We can just observe the Angostura Sour. We'll give it a quick taste before we move on to another cocktail this evening representing a different color of the rainbow. Can you guess which one's next? It's gonna be yellow. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wrong. It's orange. Roy G. Biv. And then we input the other colors later. Whoops, I made a mess. That's chill. There we go. Give that a little more water in it, let it sit for a little while. And then we'll make our way back to the show as per normal. You can see me kind of shaking things in the background. I don't usually sit on this angle for very long. All right. That made a bit of a mess. To the holding area. The holding area is, I don't know. We'll bring it back over here. There we go. I don't really know if I want to use that shaker again. A little bit of a mess. Let me switch things back. We've been staring at the Angostura long enough. So I would say, looking at this now, there are probably more red cocktails out there, like red er cocktails. However, this has such a nice shade of like, it almost looks like, I'm trying to think, it looks like brick. It has the color of brick. I'm talking like a like brick and mortar, like red brick type color to it. I think that looks really, really cool. I'm gonna pop a nice, picture of that for the grams, naturally. 
And uh, after the fact, I'm hoping that by the end of this stream, after we make a single color for every single one on the flag, there will be a nice array from, I guess, this way all the way that way of every single color that we covered. Hopefully, everything looks pretty, but you know, even if it doesn't, that's all right. Nothing has to be perfect, it's especially in the world that we're living in. I feel like many people, including myself, pressure themselves way too much to try to find perfect. But perfect is in you the entire time. Let me give it this a taste. And I didn't forget about the pins thing. I'm going to try to do that afterwards. Mm. Oh my god, I love that. It has been so long. I think the last time I made for myself an Angostura Sour was so long ago. It had to be like, actually the picture that I have here is in my old apartment, so it must have been at least two years ago. This is so well balanced. For a guy who doesn't really like the sour stuff, this is great. The sour actually matches really pleasantly with the bitterness from the Angostura and those strong, strong like citrusy, but almost, li almost slightly licorice components. It's almost like you combine a Red Hot with like a lemon head, and it's so tasty, and I absolutely love it. And it looks really good, and it's got an amazing... I talk about the texture. The texture is amazing. What you would think would be super duper dry to your mouth, instead of being like kind of sandpapery, which it is, it's like a high grit sandpaper. I think the high grit one is the stuff that's a little more smooth. So it's like a high grit sandpaper combined with like just a, just a touch of like flavorful cinnamon wood shaving. If you had a, a, a piece of sandpaper that was actually made from cinnamon wood, that's this cocktail, and it's delicious, and I love it. Harry says, dang, a pixel user? Rare to see someone with one of those, at least in the UK. What are they I, using in the UK? Yeah, what are they using in the UK there, Harry? Come on, come on, out with it. I love my pixels. I've been using pixels for a while now. I actually just saw an advertisement today for the Pixel Fold. Google's making their own flip phone now. But and then I was like, no, I don't need that. But then I saw that they were giving away a Pixel Watch too. My God, I need me a Google Watch. I want me a Google Watch. Pixel Fold is an interesting one. I agree with that. So let me grab, so that's the red cocktail. Somehow we're on track here. I guess we're kind of on track here. It's almost a half hour in and um, I have only made one cocktail. Yay! That's pretty fast. All right, we'll celebrate that. I'll take that. Uh, we'll put that off to the side as we move on to a different cocktail of a completely different color because there are plenty more to do this evening. What's going to happen, by the way, is if you keep track of this drink over here, that white foam layer on top is going to kind of get a little, it's kind of disappear over time. The bubbles are going to pop. Things are going to re-separate and stuff. Um, so that's just what happens. For something like this, I'd recommend drinking it rather quickly. Peter Matthews, 007, has just popped in here. Unfortunately, no Vesper martinis tint this evening. If clear was a color that we celebrate, then potentially the, the martini and its various different iterations would make an appearance. But, uh, but alas, you made the appearance for us, so congratulations. Harry says, I use the Pixel 6 currently, but iPhones are more popular. I feel like iPhones are more popular everywhere, really. I mean, most people I know, every actually every single time I see another Pixel user, I'm like, yo, yo, Pixel user, I love it. I'm on the 7 Pro right now. I love this thing, it's great for editing small form videos. So, we are done with the cocktail color red. The red color of our cocktail wheel was the Angostura Sour. Delicious, balanced, just, it's so good. And it's relatively simple if you're already familiar with sour type cocktails and stuff. The next color that we're going to is the color orange. And the cocktail that we'll be using for the color orange is going to be a mimosa. Nice and simple, we should move through it rather quickly. It's also really tasty, I love it. Peter says, greetings from Wisconsin. Disney Queen says, greetings from Philly. I will also echo that. Disney Queen is literally right there. I've doxed her, finally. So let me erase my board over here. Yeah, I doxed you, baby. I did, it's my fiance. Really cool together. So let me real quick update this board over here. We'll switch it out with a different color entirely and we'll make things happen. Are you gonna use the what color next? Okay. Am I gonna use the what color next? Are you use orange. Orange. Orange is next. Orange. Roy G. Biv, red, orange. That's how I'm doing it. I need the color orange from my marker thing. Hello there. Just Brutus just popped in as well, saying a mimosa, a classic. Indeed, a classic. One of my favorite, favorite places here in the city uh, called the White Dog Cafe. Actually, Thirsty Dice, which is like really, really close by actually, also does endless mimosas. Both of them do endless mimosas. And um, that is just a wonderful time uh, for a weekend. I definitely misspelled orange, but uh, again, none of us are perfect. I don't think I want to be perfect, and I lost the cap to my orange marker. Where did you go? 
Yeah. Where did you go? I mean, this is the orangiest thing that I can come up with. Oh my god, I lost it. All right, well, uh, I'm going to uh, commandeer the cap from a color I don't care about. Like, like, um, um, god, what color don't I care about? Don't do that. This is this is a really weird looking yellow. I'm gonna I'm just gonna pop it on over. I see Anna approaching me. Uh, I'm just we're gonna make a mimosa now, and uh, um, um, I'm not gonna worry about uh, the lady the approaching. <laughs> so a mimosa. It's actually you very quite here. simple. I did have an orange in there, but I'm looking for the cap, silly. I don't know where it went. Oh, I bet it's underneath the bar. Hold on a second. No, I literally have no idea where it went. Oh my god, you're gonna forget. This. R I P. R I P. In any case, what do we have going for us? Oh, hi there. I stepped in front. The mimosa. At least the recipe that I have according to... Where did this one come from? A mimosa is just orange juice and sparkling stuff. That's that's really all it is. That's that's really all a mimosa is. And there's so many different ways to make mimosas. You can put some fruit stuff in it. You can put other syrups and stuff in it. Change it up however you want to. Uh, but according to liquor.com, a very uh, pretentiously named uh, site as it pertains to the spirit world, says that you just take two ounces of orange juice, freshly squeezed, and top that off with chilled wine. I don't know where it is either, silly. I think you're just, you know, the effort is falling on deaf ears. That no, we greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate I'll be on the floor. Okie dokie. My dearest will be on the floor. Everybody wish her luck. Okay, I need a flashlight. I have an orange. I have to go get my I phone. do not have a flashlight for you. However, I do have an orange. And that orange is going to be squeezed for the purposes of this cocktail. I think we're going to have to use orange juice again later on. So I think I'm going to take this opportunity to just kind of take this orange and just... <laughs> this one and the other one that I have. Oh, I think I have two of them up here. I know there's chalk down there. I'm trying not to step on your hair, by the way. Yeah, please don't do that. I'm gonna take two oranges. I'm just gonna juice them for all that they have. Hopefully that'll give us enough juice for literally everything else that we have to cover later. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be nice. A flashlight orange? A flashlight orange. As opposed to a clockwork orange? I, I like where your head's at, just Brutus. I like that. Where did I put my squeezer? I found my squeezer. I'm currently fighting for space with my fiance. <laughs> He's just like crawling on the floor. I wait, wait, take a look at this. Honestly, let's go to the cocktail. No, angle. you can't just- Look, look. Look, can you see can you see her on the ground? I'm trying to find There her. she is! Oh, oh you caught her head for a moment. You're so rude. Anyways, anyways. It's cocktail time. Not a not not Cameron's crutch time. But that's that's next week. So essentially I'm just gonna juice this. Well, uh, Anna's looking for these. Yeah, I literally have no idea where it I went. I don't know how you did that. I don't know where it went. I have a knack for making these di disappear. Wait, is it underneath is it underneath the, the towel? No. No? Okay, well the towel is hella dirty. That should really be cleaned. We actually just had somebody come take a look at our dryer today, because lo and behold, as opposed to what a dryer sounds like it might do, it is not in fact making things less wet. It actually made it more wet. It made things more wet. The, the condensation was like backing up. Here's a it. question for the physicist out there. How does a dryer get so hot that it makes its clothes within more wet? Apparently, according to at least my local ma uh, maintenance man, who I'm just going to say is the placeholder physicist right now. Evidently, if things get too hot, it is going to cause things to condensate and then collect in the clothes and just make them even more wet. It's a wetter, not a dryer. Hey, oh, got him. Dab on the haters. I think this might actually be a waste of my time. No, I found it! Oh my gosh, she found it! Holy cow, she's amazing. Let me swap the cats. You're going to forget. Thank you, my love. Would you like a drink as, uh, as reward? Want a mimosa? Soda. Oh, oh, that's okay. oh, but it's not an art. It's not a fuzzy. I name. also need to have all the drinks for the the fancy gram photo. That oh, happens then at yeah. The end. No. I'm gonna take a I can shake you up some pralines if you want. Mm, I usually just drink that when you have friends. No, silly Anna will not be imbibing alcohol this evening. She's a doctor. How dare you think that? Uh, doctor. Doctors don't drink. Doctors Unless. Oh, doctors drink all the time. I think it's a wet or not a dry. Oh, I did. I read that one already. All right, I also mentioned that I was supposed to show off my pens over here, so uh, allow me to do so while I'm just squeezing oranges and making them feel like less than the fruits that they know themselves to be. It's, uh, I feel bad for them. So this is my chest, welcome to my chest. What do we got going over here? This is the one pin that I got. The one up on here says, what is it, be proud? It says be proud, right? Be it's beyond, beyond proud. Proud is, wow. proud is a word. Alexa, define proud. Alexa doesn't want to talk to me. Alexa, define proud. The adjective proud is usually defined as feeling pleasure or satisfaction over something regarded as highly honorable or creditable to oneself, often followed by a, an infinitive or a clause. I see. No, it says beyond proud with two periods, actually. It's beyond, dot, and proud, dot. No, it says be, you, be proud. 
No, that's it. Oh my god, you're absolutely right. I can't read. I not upside down, at least. Kid. That's so funny. She, I should trust her. She's the one watching the stream. I'm not watching myself. That's. I also bought it. That makes weird. She also bought it. This orange looks really funky. This is a really interesting looking orange. It's got a very interesting like set of like... Interesting. What else do we got over here? I have this one pin down here that was actually made for me by a friend. It's a bunch of hair pins. Hair pins? Safety pins? Safety pins. <laughs> Safety pins. And they've got different colors on them representing the pansexual flag. What else we got? I think I have two more pins. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's another one over here. And it's the, it's a rainbow, but it's the Pantone colors. And I think it's Roy G. Biv on there. There might be something else there. What do we got? I can't bend my neck that far to double check that one. And all this do we have over here? We got a fish with legs, leg fish. It's quite literally a fish with seductive legs I found it at a convention i love it i need no reason for it i just like it and then the other one is emotional support twink which apparently has a stain of angostura bitters on it <laughs> that seems oddly appropriate that was uh there was a oh my god this was at an anime convention uh not last weekend weekend before i believe and so we came up to this one creator who just had a bunch of like really really awesome like pins and stickers and prints and whatnot a lot of them were like references to Sonic the Hedgehog memes, which I personally love. Uh, and I was very shocked to find those particular references there. I'm not familiar with the series they came from. Quotes such as, I miss my wife tales, or you fool, I have 70 alternative accounts. I don't know where these references are from. Um, however, I know that they're on the internet and I love the fact that they do exist because I think they're very funny. Anyways, I think I've babbled on long enough. Uh, and lo and behold, oh my god, we have orange juice. This is great. I wonder where that came from. So to make our mimosa, all we're going to need to do is combine, according to liquor.com, two ounces or about 59 milliliters of these into some sort of champagne flute. It really doesn't have to be a champagne flute if you don't want it to be. However, if you, you know, if you want to feel fancy, this is just one of the many different ways to do so because we want to feel fancy around here. It's a celebration after all. That's just the way that it should be. So, I mean... There's no real need to measure out two full ounces exactly. You can mix it however you want to. If you like your mimosas a different way, there's a sticker in there. Somehow I juiced the sticker. I don't think I've ever done that before. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's essentially just combining these two things together. If you find that a ratio works better for you, then you use that ratio. But, if you want to do the cooking by the book, this is the way to go. Two full ounces. Pop in down here. I'm gonna try to pour this as best as I can into here. Wow, okay. This champagne flute, this is insane. I don't think, this is almost full with two ounces? How much does this thing hold? I'm gonna fill the top with sparkling water. I, I'm getting another champagne flute. This is redonkulous. I will, I, I don't I know. found the exact stickers. The exact stickers themselves. Yeah. Dude, post into the Discord. People must be aware of these. Oh, I should Rye popping in here saying, I like my mimosa sans orange juice. That's just the champagne sparkling wine or Prosecco or some other combination of things that are sparkly. Let me go get a better champagne flute. I don't like that champagne flute. Actually, you know what? I do like that champagne flute. Instead, instead of using the entire bottle of champagne that I purchased for tonight in a very wasteful fashion, instead, I'm just going to take the remainder of the Prosecco that I had from earlier this week. Uh... You know, because it's nice to be able to utilize the things that we already have. This is a Bria Brilla Prosecco. It tastes all right. And it's sparkly. As opposed to, I literally was like, I, I don't have enough champagne for tonight's cocktail. So I just went out and I bought myself a bottle of really cheap, uh, really cheap California champagne. But evidently, I don't need to pop it. Which means we can save it for, to actually utilize the entire bottle. I forgot to bring the cocktail angle over here. This is an awesome orange color so far. I was actually worried that it wouldn't be as orange as I wanted it to be, and lo and behold, it's actually looking pretty good. That's nice. And essentially, just fill it up to the top. It's going to get a little lighter in color because we're adding a more or less clear liquid. There we go. That's our that's our mimosa. Might not be your mimosa. If your mimosas have no orange juice in them, they are certainly not going to match the color that we see here on uh, on stream. However, your mileage may vary uh, depending on your mimosa. I say. Smells like oranges. Actually, I haven't had a good mimosa in a while, so I'm going to use that. Rye says, actually, that they put grape juice into their soda stream and then make your own sparkling wine. That's an excellent idea. That's a great idea. Actually, I was just talking to somebody about a soda stream the other day. 
not not a soda stream is in like streaming soda on the interweb more like a soda stream because i thought you had to get like specific packets for that no apparently you just charge it with co2 and you can carbonate literally anything i did not realize that's how it worked hmm this is a pretty good mimosa definitely not the best mimosa i've had i really i really feel like if i were to serve this to myself i'd be like it could be colder it could be a little more like this is super duper orangey it doesn't have enough like bite to it i feel like it needs to have like more bubbliness to it and the fact that i only put it there's probably only like half an ounce of prosecco in here because of the size of the container so maybe i take a big old sip of this and just pour the rest of the prosecco in there and he says hello there pride part two electric boogaloo you guessed right that's true there just wasn't enough i was like i was like I just ain't over yet. There was so there was just to give you an idea of what my creative process was for last week's thing. There were a lot more things regarding pride in general that I really wanted to cover. And one of the things was like the flags. It would have been like really cool to take the time to be able to figure out all of the density propositions to be able to create every single flag in like layered shot form. I could do next year because that would take a lot more effort than I was willing to give mostly because the work life balance is uh, insane. Or you can just do it, you know, on another stream. Or I can just do it on another stream. Yeah, pop in for like random two hour long episodes where I'm trying to make a single layered shot because physics a bitch. Physics the real bitch. Dizzy Queen says he's doing a full rainbow. That's a tall skinny mimosa indeed. Look at that. Personally, Rai's favorite mimosa recipe is made with the juice of a blood orange and ginger. I have had a blood orange mimosa before and they are excellent. They look freaking awesome, but I've never done it with ginger before. That's a topic that's actually come up in this house once or twice, actually, about ginger, because I, I drink ginger tea, or at least I should be drinking ginger tea, specifically for my acid reflux problem, and I really have not been doing so. I'm going to take this tall drink, and I'm going to put it, this tall and skinny mimosa, I'm going to put it on the other side of the bar. Pikachu can have a field day with that one. There you go, buddy. There you go. Actually, I don't like that coaster. That coaster scares me completely. I'm going to use this guy instead. Hello. This is a very tall and skinny one. This feels like it's just going to fall right off the bar and I'm going to be super duper sad. I mean, not that super duper sad. I'm just going to have to clean up afterwards. It's, it's a thing that happens. That's a pretty good mimosa, all things considered. Try cam. What are the proportions? What are the proportions? So this one is... So I was it called for two full ounces, of about 59 milliliters of orange juice, and then I filled it up with Prosecco. I think there's probably only like a half an ounce of Prosecco in there. I drank a little bit more. Let's say the ounceage is now up to maybe like an, a full ounce of Prosecco. Really, if this were a thicker champagne flute, because evidently this one is... Actually, I don't even know if that's supposed to be a champagne flute. It very well could just be a really deformed like candle holder, uh, but we went for it anyway. So I'd say there's probably like, it's probably a two to one ratio of, of juice to actual Prosecco in there. And um, it could definitely use more Prosecco slash sharp sparkling wine slash whatever it might be. Do you have a PO box where fans can send you stuff? Not yet, not yet. Oh, speaking of things, because this came to mind, Rye, I need to get in contact with you because apparently, you know how we were talking last week about Kentucky? Well, apparently we're going to be in Kentucky. So send me a DM when you have a chance because we got we got logistics to talk. Uh, Brad, if you're out there somewhere, we need to talk logistics there too. In any case, so many people. God, we're just going all over the place. That's the cool thing about like knowing where people are, I say in the creepiest way possible. <laughs> Strike from the record. It's that you can be like, hmm, you can plan like the trips to be able to see people. It's a fun time, this type of thing. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. So, moving along in this marathon of color-coded cocktails and stuff, we have conquered the red, which is the Angostura Sour. We've conquered the orange, which is a mimosa, which actually came out to be a lot orangier than I thought it would be, which is great, because we used fresh oranges, and that's a good thing. We're gonna move on to another color. Can you guess which color is next? I'm, I'm just gonna let you guess. I know what color it is. I'm gonna write it up on the board anyway, so like, just, just stick around for like a moment. Um, but... You can you can guess. Actually, Anna tried to guess what the second yellow, the, the second Shut color up. was, and she guessed wrong actually, despite knowing what the rainbow looks like. Um, you know, Roy G. Biv, if that's giving anything away. Who guessed yellow? Did anybody guess yellow? Did you guess yellow? Yellow! Yeah, you got it. You got it. It's yellow. I need a yellow marker. Yellow. Oh, I also forgot to take a photo of my orange mimosa. So let me take a photo of that because it looks beautiful. Wow, you were like, you were adjusting really well. I turned the macro off on this thing. It does not want to work. Come, come here, come here, come here. No. Next cocktail is yellow. It's called the Yellow Jacket. It's a really good cocktail. 
There we go. That's a... Ooh, that's a... Well, it was pretty good for a moment. See, one day, maybe I'll have, like, an actual DSLR camera for these things, uh, which would mean that I apparently have amassed way too much free money. Which, uh... I hope never becomes that way, because if that is the case, then I will not know what to do with it, or maybe. Rai says, so why does your writing of rainbow have yellow as the second letter? Hmm, I wonder why. I don't know. Does it look yellow from your perspective? I don't, I don't think it's yellow. I don't think it's very yellow at all. I think you're just seeing things. You're definitely not seeing things. It's a rough week, dude. So this one is a yellow jacket. That is not a yellow color. That's disgusting. Ew, I hate that one. Whoa. Did you aggressively hit my games? I apparently hit right on the mark of something and I don't know what it was. Incredible. Yeah, marbles, they're still on the floor. Yellow. Yellow jacket. And a long yellow jacket. It's, it's yellow. I don't have to put the color up there this time. Yellow. Got him. We got him this time. <laughs> Me, how I got it wrong. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was Anna's fault. That's what it is. You're right. I don't know why I did that. Hmm. Oh, actually, the rainbow is actually the wrong quarter. Quarter. Oh my god, yeah, I, could. I totally screwed that up. You're right. You get bonus points this time. You spot my mistakey, and I take full responsibility for that. So, the yellow jacket, moving on, <laughs> not worrying about it. The show must go on after all. Is this cocktail called the yellow jacket? I've never actually tried it before because for a while, I literally could not make it. This is not the yellow jacket cocktail that we made. I think it was about a month ago on the wine cocktail stream where we made a cocktail called the yellow jacket, just a single word, like the B. This one is the yellow jacket. Not like, I mean, I don't exactly know how bees spell it. Do they use a space in their names? What pronouns do bees use? I'm not exactly sure. It's really none of my business. I don't want to drone on about that for any longer. Otherwise, it's very unbecoming. Anyways, I couldn't make it for a while because uh, I didn't have any yellow chartreuse. But luckily, we've got friends in high places, or at least low places. Technically, he's south of me. But uh, we got some yellow chartreuse to be actually, actually use on this. It was just hanging along in the back. Yellow chartreuses. Mmm. It's great. I made myself in Alaska the other day using this yellow chartreuse, and it is fine. Love those puns. I hate them. Why would you love those things? Just kidding. Validation. So our yellow jacket is going to be made in a mixing glass. It's the first mixed cocktail that we're going to do this evening. And we're going to stir it for, according to Curiata.com, 40 revolutions, specifically. That's, that's a, and it even, it even, Curiata even pats themselves on the back by saying, love that precision. I don't love that precision. You're the guy who like goes to a bar and says, I'll have a Ramos gin fizz and make sure to shake it for 20 minutes. To which the bartender's like, I don't really know, actually. Oh my good, Rye says, the etymology of yellow, the color yellow, or what of its hues, Middle English yellow, from ad the adjective and from the Old English giolo, or giallo, yellow, noun, from Proto-Germanic, jelloise, also source, also of Old Saxon, Old High German jello, Middle Dutch genel, Dutch geel, Middle High German gel, German gelbe, Old Norse gerbil, Swedish jol yellow, from P-I-E root gel to shot, I don't even know what I'm reading here, oh my god. Denoted with derivatives denoting green and yellow, such as green chloros, greenish yellow, Latin pelvis, yellowish bay. So why is it called amarillo in Spanish then? Make it make sense. I don't know. I don't know. I don't do etymology very well, but apparently Rye does. That's good. So how do we do this, right? We gotta get things, gotta keep things going around here. That was an excellent summary, by the way. Hats off to Rye over there, who probably copied and pasted it. But if you didn't, take credit for that. Take that and be proud of it. We also need some Reposado tequila over here. Uh, and I got this, Reposado, it's got a, we got Patron. It's my mother's favorite and the only Reposado tequila that I have behind the bar right now, so that's just the one we're gonna use. We're mixing a relatively pre, uh, expensive tequila over here, not because it's what I have, uh, with, our, with our chartreuse over here. So naturally, with the elderflower liqueur that we have to use as well, we should also use the top brand, the most top shelf elderflower liqueur out there. Um, I don't have any of that, you know, Saint Germain or anything like that. Um, I got bulls, so. That's just what we're going to use. It's from Amsterdam, uh, 1575. That's a 100% natural product of the USA. Pride in your country, I guess. Copy paste. Double L is a Y sound. Double L is a... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. I completely forgot about that for a moment. I don't actually speak Spanish. A lot. A-double-L-L. -L, a yacht. Anyways.
taking shots at me like it's a Patron, and I'm just like, damn, Taylor Swift, lyric. Ly lyric? Lyric opportunity. I like that. Copy paste. I can't type that fast, but I can research very fast. I love just typing things in a chat GPT and being like, write me a, a five page essay. Not that I do that anymore. That didn't exist in my college years. I did it the hard way, you know, like on a typewriter and stuff. So we need. I'm not that old. I mean, I'm only 25 and counting. Stirring glass. Into your stirring glass, we are going to add some ice to it because evidently we're keeping this one cool. So the idea here, at least to my knowledge, when you put ice into your stirring apparatus is you're trying to control the dilution that you get in your cocktail. If you were to take this ice, break it into cubes or whatever, and you put it into a shaker, you're gonna have a lot less control on how much sort of a, how much water winds up becoming a part of your cocktail than you would when you stir like this. Um, there's probably a proper number out there for, and, and mathematics that goes into the, the, the temperature of the ice versus the temperature of the spirits and blah, blah, this, that, and the other thing. Um, but Curiata says, fuck it, we're gonna spin it 40 times. So that's what we're gonna do, because that's what the instructions tell us to. So to make time for all those revolutions, um, let's start with two full ounces of our tequila, our reposado tequila over here. Rai says, I had to take a typing class on type typewriters. Wow. I took a typing class on a keyboard. Um, I've always wanted to, I mean, I've used typewriters before. Uh, I've always wanted to like, I've never used it more than like, a couple seconds though just because like you know we walk by it actually i'd find the typewriters in like um in like um thrift stores what do they call those things yeah thrift stores and stuff and uh, i'd be like ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then i'd see the price tag that says like this is a 400 hundred dollar piece of mechanics and i was like maybe i shouldn't be touching this thing a little bit i'm just gonna let it i'm just gonna let it go yeah, okay. I don't know why. I just want you want to find one for under 50 bucks? That'd be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Well, well, I guess we'll talk about that during the budgeting family meeting. Next, we're going to add a single ounce. When is that? What did you say? Oh, tomorrow. Anyway, family meeting tomorrow. Everybody be there. Sit in your chairs and stuff. Everyone's got a designated seat, at least back here, at least. One ounce, we're going to add of our elderflower liqueur. Uh, that was two ounces of the Reposado tequila, by the way, or about 59 milliliters for those who are across the pond. And don't do that type of conversion in their heads. Annie says, I'm generating a funny, oh my goodness, copy pasta will report back shortly. My seat is on the couch. Rice Theroni, oh my God. Rice Theroni is popping in here with the, with the stub. We had to wear an apron that covered the typewriter so we couldn't look at our hands. Yo, we had a small little like a uh, uh, cardboard box that had space for our hands so we couldn't look at the keyboard. And we used, oh my God, what was it? Marion Webster teaches typing. And then for the life of me, I wanted to learn how to type using Super Mario, like Mario teaches a typing, uh, but I couldn't find it for the life of me. I tried to download it once and just like it did when I tried to get, um, oh God, what's that game? World of Warcraft that I randomly got in the mail on a CD. Um, my computer got hacked and it was destroyed and much of that portion of my life virtually is a uh, poof, gone. Next, we're gonna add a qu three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of our yellow chartreuse. Really combining things in the most mathematical ways possible here. Fill it up there. It's a very precise mark, I say. I definitely put a little too much in there, but it's okay. I went to Catholic school and I still type with three to four fingers max. Ever played Typing of the Dead? I have not. That sounds fun. Wait, 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 wait. I've heard of that before. That's the one where like you fight zombies by typing on the keyboard. I've always wanted to play a typing game on stream. One day I will. And if Anna's Catholic school was bad at technology and many other things, like um, like what? What else was Catholic school bad at, Anna? Your words, not mine. Sex education. Sex education. Anna doesn't know what sex is. Wait till she wants to have a kid one day. I'm gonna throw you. Anyways, any pop tea in here saying. Prepare for cocktail chaos. We mix unicorn tears, moon madness mystery, and a pinch of fiery hot sauce. Our mixologists do magic tricks while dancing in garners with flaming pineapples and partying gummy worms. Warning, pineapples and partying gummy worms. Warning, uh, uncontrollable laughter. Spontaneous dance-offs and yelling, bottoms up, may occur. Buckle up for a wild taste bud roller coaster. Cheers to hilarious chaos. Oh my goodness gracious. I also missed other things. Oh, my Catholic school My Catholic school was good at being homophobic. And Rai says their Catholic school lasted a week before they kicked, kicked them out. 
I don't have Catholic school. I don't know how you can make How do you make a school Catholic? Like, schools don't pray. The school body prays. You can have a Catholic oh, school body. Oh, yeah? Did the school clasp its big old doors together and say, Alleluia? That seemed rather insensitive. I'd like to take that back and make it significantly less religiously potent than it was. In any case, we've got our all ingredients in there. Oh, we also need a single dash of Regan's orange bitters. Uh, I don't have those types of orange bitters, so I'm just gonna do like two dashes of Angostura orange bitters because uh, I like that stuff and I think it tasted pretty good. We didn't have a school body. My Catholic school was also anti-divorce, which is funny considering my mom is divorced. LMAO, right? Didn't have a school body. Uh, we just had a school Eucharist. Get it? Get it? Get it, body? You, the Eucharist, right? It's the it's the little like, it's the little piece of what do you call it? A cracker? Is it a cracker? Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. I'd call it a cracker. That's funny. Wafer. Get it? Night wafer. I like that. Not Nilla wafers. Jesus wafers. Catholic wafers. Okay, Roman Catholics are the only ones that believe. Did you say a Roman Catholic? Roman Catholic. Oh my God, that's a cocktail idea for the biblically accurate cocktail stream. A rum and Catholic. Oh my god, I love that. And I know that's not this are you. I know that's not what you said, but I love it so much. Roman Catholics are the only Catholics that believe the wafer actually turns into the body of Christ. I love the Everyone idea. Else believes it's like a symbolic so evidently the Roman Catholics believe that the wafer turns into the body of Christ, which is great because apparently people are into vor out there, especially the Catholics. <laughs> Take the body of Christ into your mouth and savor it. Don't just bite it. That's what my that's what my priest told me when I was in not Catholic school. Just like Catholic Church. He's like, just don't bite it. Just let it like melt in there. And I was like, isn't this supposed to be the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. That's yes. why you're not supposed to bite it. That's why I'm not supposed to bite it, because otherwise Jesus would enjoy it too much. Okay. Mathematics time. Evidently, we need to stir this 40 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty! That's it. That's all we get. That's all we get, that's all we need. Guess I'm just going to hell. Oh my goodness. Catholic, Catholic cannab cannibalism. Can cannibalism. Catholic cannibalism. That's one for the that's one for the notebooks. This tastes amazing. I can't wait to put this in a cocktail. This is great. So I'm gonna grab myself a chilled coupe glass from the fridge. Uh, but first, we're gonna do it's garnish time. I'm gonna teach y'all how to make a garnish. Uh, and if I fail on it completely, then uh, I'm gonna teach y'all how to not make a garnish. Let's get the cocktail angle over here and see what we can do. Hello, everybody. It's garnish time. I'm gonna try to make a garnish as best that we can. Hopefully, the the cocktail angle doesn't do like the little 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 little. little, little words my god damn it i'm gonna put a lemon thing on here let's get a lemon this is a lemon now we're gonna peel that lemon i'm gonna show you how to peel a lemon or at least i'm gonna try to oh thank god i have my peelers up here it's all good rice says you forgot the two that you did before you started counting i'm glad that somebody caught that you're absolutely right 42 want to know why there was 42 meaning a life so essentially what we're doing i'm gonna peel that piece of the lemon I'm going to put that aside for some more juice later because there will probably be actually there's definitely more juice later however what we're going to do afterwards we're going to take our knife what we're going to try to do is we're going to kind of try to cut a triangle off of this thing let's do one that way get that off to the side we'll do one this way kind of put that off to the side i'll put that in the bucket and then we'll do that there we go those are our little bits of peel the bucket's gonna have a field it's a triangle. Those. It's a triangle! Please tell me I called it a triangle. Did I screw that one up too? No, my favorite shape. <laughs> Triangles are my Boys favorite shape. Me. Now, if I had a longer triangle, this might be an easier garnish to make. And if I fail, whatever, we'll just try it again. Usually you'd want to take all that uh, all that white stuff out of here because it, it tastes really, really uh, bitter. Uh, but I'm not gonna bother with that this time. The idea we're gonna do is we're gonna cut along the parallels of one of the triangle bits all the way off to the side so it's got this little like little tail over here next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another cut similar to that not all the way off the edge just like that just so it's in the middle that's gonna be where the cocktail glass is gonna go in the middle 
Next, what we're gonna do, it will do another one of those little not slice through cuts on the side perpendicular to this side of the isosceles. Isosceles? That's the triangle? Yeah, I think it is. So now, everything's cut. I really wish I could, actually, I probably should have zoomed in on that a little bit better. This garnish is doing the stanky leg. Stanky leg, stanky leg, do the stanky leg, do the stanky leg. Get this fly out of here. Do the stanky leg. And now we're gonna take this bigger part of the triangle and hopefully wrap it through itself to that hole that we made earlier. Oh, evidently I cut too far. Well, I made this. I need a bigger lemon, we uh, lemon peel, so I'm gonna go back for another one. This is the first time I'm actually making this one. This is really intricate. Oh my god. No, it's not that bad. It's not that it's not that crazy. Here, I'm gonna get a longer peel so we have a little more room to work with. Oh yeah, this is much longer. This is gonna be much easier to work with. There we go. Much bigger peel. This is the cute one. Cute first attempt. Nice job, everybody. Garnish art with Cam. Take two. Thick boy, I'm the thickest of boys. Thick boy, it's a pretty thick boy. That thick boy is a lemon. I'm just gonna make this easier for myself by making this into a rectangle. Then I can make the triangle. There we go. Oh, we have a full view of the entire cutting board here, right? Yeah, I don't even know why I'm trying to focus on one side of it. Makes no sense. All right, right? So this is, this is a rectangle. Isn't it beautiful? Now we're gonna make it into a triangle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoop. And then I'm gonna zoop. There we go, that's triangular. And then we'll kind of make it as isosceles as I can. Sometimes I have trouble with words now because of the amount of stress that I'm under. So uh, in case I missay things, I'm sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's an isosceles triangle. It just doesn't sound like a word right now. I feel like I've said it so much. That's a very appealing, get it? Get it? I got it. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did. Hopefully better this time. I'm glad I pointed that out. Here we go. What do we got? Oh, Nick, you cut so much off. It's still bigger than the first? Maybe. There we go. There's one. There's this cut that hopefully won't bleed into it. Also, I definitely could use a smaller knife for this. There we go. Did I bleed into it? Nope, we good. We good, we good, we good. And then we'll do that thing. Did this one do the stanky leg yet? There we go. The stanky leg. Maybe it was the stanky legging that I was doing before that screwed it up the first time. All right, now we should be able to, if I can open up this little hole, just a little bit. A little bit. I like embroider and stuff, so like, supposedly this is supposed to be easy. You know what, actually, let me just, let me just get in there. This needs an X-Acto knife. I would use the X-Acto knife I had. However, um, it is really rusty, and I am not comfortable putting that near anything that I would put in my mouth. No! I think I cut it too bad. Can I, like, poke that out? Poke it. Poke it real good. What is this supposed to look like? What is this supposed to look like? Honestly, I'm not even sure anymore. Triangle? More triangle? Triangle, triangle. The Instagram reel that I watched for this one made it look easy. This is so... Oh my god. How are we doing? Please don't cut your finger off, please. I'm gonna try my best not to. How's Abe doing tonight? Hold on a second. Oh my goodness gracious, this is difficult. Get out of there. Get. Just get. Get. Get it. Get. Yes! Yes! There's a hole now. Thread it through the hole. Threading through the hole! Not fire in the hole, I'm threading through the hole! That's my warning. Get it. No, it's so floppy. Who knew that lemon wheels are so floppy? Do you need help? I don't need help. I don't want help. Oh my god! I'm gonna get in there. He's good, trying to watch The Office, but this is on. Toothpick to open it up. <gasps> Toothpick! Great idea. Somebody's got great ideas out there. Right. You might be saving us right now. You might be saving us. Here we go. Here we go. Toothpick. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Okay, that's a little, that's still a little floppy. I don't know if there's enough contrast between this thing and the... Oh my god! Wow! It takes a village. They say it takes a village. Take a look at that. This is apparently what it's supposed to look like. 
Anyway, I'm walking away from that. I'm done with that. <laughs> we took way too much time to do that. It's supposed to look like that. Uh, what exactly is that? I don't know. When I saw this for the first time, I thought of Sonic the Hedgehog for some reason. I don't really know. Except it's yellow. It's supersonic. Head empty. No thoughts. Just non-sparkling mimosa and a bit of a headache. Apologies for the lack of thought in my chats. Oh, you're fine, dude. That's a queer lemon. Queer lemon? Get it? I was mentioned. I have been summoned. Hello. Welcome. So, now, I'm gonna take my chilled coupe glass. I got one of those. I know exactly which coupe I want to use. I know exactly why I have this coupe. For this cocktail. Here we go, here we go. This is chilled. Ooh, cocktail angle! Wait a minute. So much happening. Well... This is what I get for trying to level up live. That's okay. If, if anybody here thought that I was a pro mixologist, you're in the wrong bar. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're in the wrong bar. So, we can take our garnish, and let's see, what side would this look best on? I'm thinking over here. Hopefully. Shouldn't you garnish it after you do the drink? We'll try to. No! Oh my goodness gracious, it didn't work. I'm going to open that up just a little bit. I'm going to pull it through just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Maybe. 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 There we go. Maybe. I'm trying. Yeah. This is something that takes practice, something that I evidently do not have a lot of when it comes to garnishes. See? Look at that. It's got a pinky now. Pinky down. It's the pinky down lemon garnish. Anyway, let's strain this thing. I need a drink. There we go. This is our yellow jacket. It's definitely very chilly by now. And lo and behold, what color is that? Like urine. Looks like urine. Let me give this a little bit of a clean over here. Clean some of our guys out, prepare them for the next cocktail it'll appear in. This is our yellow jacket. Beautiful. Oh my god! It's the Marie Antoinette booby glass! Looks like beer. It kind of do look like beer. It's got a beer quality to it. Does it smell like beer? No. It smells better than beer. Let me take a pick at this. Gotta get a pick for the grams. Always get a pick for the grams. Switch! Gotta get a pick for the gram. Let me turn around in my direction. Come over here. I gotta get that garnish. Get out of here. Stupid cocktail angle. Don't spider your glasses unless you're the one drinking them. There we go. I'm so surprised that this garnish has not, like, unpeeled itself yet. Watch it, like, unpeel itself as I say that. It's crazy. It's wild. It's wonderful. Oh my god, the angle keeps switching. I swear I turned off the auto macro. Alright. Excellent! The pick for the grams is over. Now it just needs a piece of dry ice, right? So it has like a really cool, like, kind of, um... What do you call it? It's a cloud. Actually, it was interesting. I just started watching Drink Masters on Netflix, and the, one of the first rounds of cocktails, one of this guy, oh my god, I don't remember his name, but I remember as I started watching this guy, I was like, I hate this guy. He is so pretentious. I do not like him. He's like, ah, the world is going to experience my cocktails. The world needs to experience my cocktails. I'm the best cocktail mixologist. And he pops up there, and he serves a drink with dry ice at the bottom, and the judges are just like, you realize this is a health hazard, right? If, if one of us accidentally, like, pops this down our gullet, like, we just straight up die, right? And he's like, but it's anchored to the bottom. It's not going to go anywhere. And he's like, yeah, no, we're not drinking this. Sorry. And now we're on the redemption round. And I was like, schadenfreude. So this smells... Actually, it's really got a nice elderflower smell to it. This is a combination. I'd say the smells are mostly that elderflower liqueur as well as the chartreuse. Some of the, the tequila notes are... Very, very vague. They're combining with the smell of the elderflower. And you know, for once, I don't actually smell the garnish that we use. It doesn't really smell like lemon. Unless I put my nostril over here. I take it back. Kind of smells like lemon just a little bit. Mmm. Oh wow, it's such an interesting combo! This is the, a great combination of the sweetness of the elderflower, the like kind of almost licorice-y minty notes of the chartreuse, and then like hits you in the face with tequila. My entire mouth 
tastes like tequila and chartreuse right now. But as soon as I put this to my lips, it's all like elderflower sweetness. And what I mean by elderflower, it's like, I would describe elderflower as just having like a weird fruit note to it. It's almost like an apple, but more citrusy with like undeniable like points of like flowers or herbs. And I like it. I would describe it as kind of weird. I don't really know how else to describe elderflower in my opinion. Elderflower does, at least according to Rye, smell like menthol and complain about gen, gen Z flower. Gen Z flower. Oh, like jet German, like elderflower, Gen Z flower. Interesting. Interesting. The Gen Zers are too much into their sweet cocktails. I say enjoying my sweet cocktail. This is nice because it's not super duper sweet. It's very, actually, I take that back. It is very sweet. It is sweet like zipping chartreuse straight is sweet. It is sweet, but it is also undeniably boozy. There are so many like boozy qualities to this that I'm actually really happy that I used the Reposado that I did because it's the only one I have, but I don't regret using the Patron here because it's so much to pick apart. Like, and I feel like so far of all the different chartreuse cocktails that I've had, this accomplishes like the same spot. And it's really cool. And I dwell on that a little bit longer, but alas, there are more cocktails to get to tonight. There's the rest of the rainbow to get to. So I'm gonna swiftly move on to the next color that we have in our rainbow. Can anybody guess what it is? It's not yellow. That's the wrong order. We just did yellow, or maybe we just did orange. I guess it depends on whether or not you're colorblind or not. In which case, if you are, don't worry. We got you. Red. Orange, yellow. And I just noticed the mimosa over there. Yellow, says Anna from the corner, or signs Anna from the corner. It's very nice. The mimosa is completely separating right now. That is very interesting. I'm gonna put you off to the side. Oh, you know what? Maybe Pikachu, Pikachu's gotta get a piece of this because Pikachu's yellow. Actually, it's near Pikachu. You can suckle it from over there. Pikachu pee. Anyways. Moving on to another color, another colored cocktail. If you had to guess, what could possibly make this next cocktail the color it is, can you guess the color and can you guess the spirit? Because I guarantee, if you guess the color, you will accurately be able to guess the spirit. Things are supposed to be simple and easily followable tonight, unlike the garnish that we just made and struggled a long time with. Everything else though, simple. Simple, easy, awesome. Like that defunct Xfinity slogan, because fucking Comcast sucks. So the next color we have this evening is the color green. Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green. Green is next, or chartreuse if you want to. It's not chartreuse, actually. It's the melon liqueur. So the next cocktail that we have in our list of colors of the rainbow is going to be something that naturally features as its top spirit, Midori, which is the yellow, it's the yellow. It's it's the, like the green liqueur, not the green chartreuse liqueur, not the chartreuse, chartreuse green liqueur, the green liqueur. It turns things green. It turns things funky colors. It makes things just like sweet and stuff. And the cocktail that I wanted to cover for this one is something that I didn't even realize that Midori had like, Midori on their website actually has a slew of cocktails that you can try with their spirit. And there's like at least 30 to 40 of them. And one of the ones is a twist on a classic, the Japanese gin and tonic, which is essentially a gin tonic and Midori splashed into it. It's simple, and you build it right in your glass, so it's really easy. But they call it a Japanese gin and tonic. Appropriate because Midori is a Japanese melon liqueur. Let's see if you can use a little more oomph to it. Green is the color of my... I don't really know, honestly. If any part of me is green, I would be worried. So Japanese gin and tonic is actually very simple to make. A gin and tonic, depending on the way that you like your gin and tonics, is probably going to contain some combination of tonic and, and blue curacao. Just kidding, it's gin. Um, naturally. The exact ratio that I, I actually don't really have like a ratio to recommend because to be honest, I don't drink as many gin and tonics as I probably would being a gin lover. I like gin because I drink a lot of Negronis, not because I drink a lot of gin and tonics. That because most of the gin and tonics that I've had are a little, they're not exactly to my taste. I don't go out of my way to buy like really specific tonic waters. I just have like a can that I picked up at Whole Foods like a, a while ago. 
So that's just the one that I'm going to use. Uh, and I think the Midori is probably going to add an aspect to it, probably taking away from some of the bitterness of the tonic water and adding that extra, like, almost cotton candy sweetness kind of thing. It, it'll also make it green. So that, that's good for anybody who's into green stuff. So I think the glass I'm going to use for this one, what we have to do is we fill the glass with ice and just pour in all of our constituents. And we're going to squeeze a little bit of a lemon wedge. We're going to pop that right into our glass. I like a relatively clear, very, very unapologetic, very monotone glass over here. It's got no frills on it. It's circular. You can spin things in it if you want to. It just It's just a plain glass. And I think for something like this, this feels like one of those cocktails that like, it's a long day. You come home, you want to mix something quickly. You put the gin in with your tonic and you're like, I want more. So you throw Midori into it because that's how we play our game around here. So what we're going to do is the website actually calls for, it gives the ratio in terms of parts. Anytime I see like half part or one part or two part in a recipe, I just naturally assume it to be uh, a base of ounces because that's just the only thing that I can go off of. I would assume because this one calls for a half part, a one part, a two part, that this is a total of three and a half parts. This looks like it would fit three and a half ounces with some ice in it and a lemon wedge. So uh, that's just the kind of assumption that I'm making there. Uh, whereas sometimes, you know, you might make the assumption, I say incorrectly, because you'll pick the, in, the incorrect glass. You can just get a bigger glass or just get another glass if you make too much or too little of a cocktail. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if you're trying to match your glass, that's the, uh, that's the, re the, the restriction that you put upon yourself, then just like put a little less pressure on yourself. Get another glass or like drink straight from your shaker if you want to. This one requires no shaker though. It just needs some ice. And uh, it calls for, you know, just a little bit of ice. Ain't that much of it. Uh, so I'm gonna go for the smallest ice cubes that I have. We're gonna play which state gets iced. I don't know. I think the, think the name of that game has changed a lot over the over the course of this stream. Um, we're putting states state ices into our glass, um, and I think it'd be fun to actually see what states we're putting in there this time. So let's take a look, shall we? This is upside down. This is. Can I? Yeah, it's okay. We're just gonna get that angle of it. Y'all are gonna have to look upside down for a little bit because. Uh, I'm, I'm, this thing likes to flip around sometimes. I'm thinking that we put California. California. I hear it, California out there. Anna says California. California, California has Texas a yellow color Florida. to me. Texas and Florida says Anna. She's taking away everybody else's options. So if you have a problem with that, at Disney Queen and whoa, there goes Florida. Florida's on the ground. I'm gonna pick one now. We're gonna go with Louisiana or Louisiana, I guess. I think I'll put like one more largest state in there. How about, I think this one's Arizona. And that one's New Mexico. Yeah, I think that'll be good. That'll that'll be all right. I'm cool with that. And what we'll do is I'll move this down a hot bit and then we can actually watch this cocktail being made on its own because it's gonna be pretty simple. It's gonna be over actually pretty lickety split. So everybody, everybody watch along if you wanna. And if not, you can listen along because uh, we, got, we got more fanciful tales. All in all in all, just a dude making cocktails and talking about stuff. So first we're gonna part, start with a half a part. I'm gonna say about a half an ounce of our Midori liqueur. Let me grab one of my uh, measuring majiggers and put about a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of our green stuff in there. That'll be great. I saw MK Bryce popping in here saying, Elderflower, Pff, I hardly know her. Only time we're making that joke this evening. We only get one per stream and Bryce got it. Bryce got it, and we're very proud of him for that. I'm surprised that I didn't make that joke already. Dude, dude. Nice. Now we're, next we're gonna add, add a single part or a single ounce, about 30 milliliters of gin, the gin of our choice. Honestly, I feel like there is going to be mm, a lot here for the purposes of our, um, for our green. And uh, I was gonna say that as I put cheap gin in it, but uh, all I have is beef eater. I have other, but I have this bottle of the botanist that I'm just not quite ready to put in here yet because I don't know the quality of my tonic and I'm just afraid. I'm always afraid to use the botanist. About 30 milliliters in there, he says in some way, shape, or form. And then we're going to top it off with two ounces or, I mean, depending on how you like your gin and tonics, top it off with some tonic water. I got mine in a can. This is a very green cocktail so far. Nice. We're gonna add two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of our tonic water. This is tonic water, right? Yes. It contains quinine, quinine. That's how you know it's tonicky. 
It's also bubbly, and that's one of the reasons I'm glad that I'm not being required to shake this, because the last time I shook something with some with bubbly in it, oh my god, it went everywhere. So that's just it. That doesn't look great anymore. Just kidding. It's not a. It's not over yet. We still need a lemon wedge, so we're just gonna put a little bit of a. Gonna put a little. There we go. Got a lemon in the background. Oh, you can't see that. Here's our lemon. This is one of the lemons we had previously. I'm gonna try to get this as wedgy as possible. Lemon. Oh, that definitely did that wrong. Wait a minute. No, no, no. There's a better way to make the wedge that I'm thinking of. The orientation. I suffer from geometry sometimes. No, the lemon is traveling. Go back into your hole, lemon. Get back over there. Control yourself. I'm gonna take the sticker off first. There we go. We're gonna cut it into a circle. There we go. Cut it into another circle. There we go. Anna, are you studying over there? Yeah. Nice. That's why these sounds keep coming off. I honestly, this is the first I've noticed that your sounds are happening. Okay, I think I've had like five. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anna's doing some Quizlet over there, so. I have about 600 on this Quizlet. I'm on 545. Nice. 600. Keep on a studying, my love. I've been doing this all day. Keep I'm on so a studying. I believe I in you. Wrong. We all believe in you. I'm 106 so... wrong? That's okay. That means you have all the other ones correct. Right? Yeah, that means I have 400. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So this is our green cocktail. Obviously not as green as it was previously. We diluted the color a little bit by adding a bunch of other stuff into it. There's namely gin and tonic water and a lemon slice. And it's just the slightest squeeze of our uh, lemon wedge. It's a, it's a very... It's a very green cocktail. It's probably not the greenest cocktail out there, but it does spark that very neon. It, it establishes green. Maybe it edges a little bit yellow, but it does establish green. And that's really all I can ask out of the Japanese gin and tonic. That's that's all. And now, don't get me wrong. I would say that this particular version of the gin and tonic is kind of taking a little bit, you know? It's calling itself the Japanese gin and tonic as if Midori is the quintessential essence of the entire country of Japan, which um, maybe it is, but it's not my call to make it that. Midori apparently took that for us, so. Thanks to all of Japan and the Midori melon and the spirit that I suppose comes from the melon? Maybe, I don't know much about Midori's process. Maybe we do an entire stream on Midori. That'd be nice. They changed their bottle design recently. It's instead of it being cloudy, now it's very clear. And it looks like jello from the outside. Interesting. Ooh, that's a, that's interesting. Hmm. That's that's that, that's interesting. That is like so gin and tonics to me have a slightly bitter and sweet component to it. It's it's bitter and it's sweet, but instead of being sweet like like cane sugar, like I'm usually used to the sweetness from uh, from like a tonic water. This is sweet like, like, like candy, I guess. I'm trying to think of like which candy this reminds me of. Oh, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of like two weeks ago, I think, Anna and I were streaming our very sweet anniversary stream. Our, our, our yeah. Sickeningly sweet anniversary stream. And so one of the sodas that we had, we had two sodas. We had an orange cream soda, and we had this uh, frambuesa, a raspberry soda from, I think, I don't remember what country it was specifically, but it was very good tasting. It was very, very sweet. It was very candy-like. And it was kind of almost cotton candy-y, but very, very orange creamsicle-y. This is like creamsicle. This is like a creamsicle sweetness in the sense that like maybe it's not as vanilla forward as it would be from like actual vanilla ice cream but this is like sweet like somebody added like some sort of like maybe like a curdled cream to it and then like separated out the curdle it's got that texture to it that i think is it's not quite as smooth i'm just having a trouble describing it it tastes like clarified milk like a certain sourness to it that is also undeniably sweet and also just like the slightest bit bitter, but not like not like a not like a very astringent bitter like would be from let's say Angostura bitters or uh, certain kinds of um, I think I think the think the bitter truth orange bitters one of these guys has a very very bitter note to it. It's interesting. It's kind of I don't know if I like it. I think I'm just kind of talking around something that I really want to like, but I just kind of like can't. It's not really my drink. Is it sweet? No, definitely not sweet enough for you. 
Yeah. It is too it is too gin forward oh, for it to be good for you. I forgot there was gin in it. It does noticeably taste like alcohol. It's not sickeningly sweet. It just feels not unbalanced. But the tonic water is still very prevalent on my tongue. I still taste the tonic water, and I don't really want to keep tasting the tonic water. And maybe that just means that the tonic water I used from Whole Foods and bought a while ago just ain't up for the job of the Japanese gin and tonic. But it is green, and since it is green and was green, we're going to put it to one side of the bar, and we'll move on to another color. Uh, now time for a different color entirely. So we'll put you... You're a small drink, so I'm going to put you over here. I'm going to do a little bit of... Uh, uh, Reorganizing all of our uh, everything that I see on the bar over here. It makes more space for more cocktails. So far, we've had four, and we're about at the hour and a half mark. I think we're moving quicker than we usually do, uh, which is probably a good thing because we have, if there's 11 total and we've done four, we have seven cocktails remaining. Seven cocktails remain. And the next color is a different one. It's blue. This is the next color. Roy G. Biv. Blue. Blue. Anna's waving me. It's that princess. It's that, uh, uh, princess thing. I just noticed we definitely couldn't see Japanese gin and tonic on here, dude, could we? I don't know why I started coloring this in, in the color itself. I think I specifically told myself, don't color the words in the color itself because some of them will be impossible to read, so I'm gonna correct that going forward. No, it's more fun! Okay, Anna says it's more fun that way, so now we're gonna do the blue one in blue. This one is a lighter blue color. Oh, I guess it's not the lighter blue. It's gotta be the darker blue because the lighter blue is actually later. Lo and behold, there is another color in the rainbow that sometimes calls itself indigo. I don't really know what indigo is, but there's a lighter blue on the pride flag. So we're gonna do a lighter blue and just call that indigo. That'll be the one after this one. For our blue drink though, we're gonna do a drink called a blue Hawaiian. When I was thinking of blue drinks, the first blue drink I thought of was this one. And I'm glad it was this one because otherwise it would have just been every other iteration of blue curacao in something uh, that I've already had previously. And uh, this was a wet board, so that actually coming out, it's threaded. Blue Hawaii. Did I spell that wrong? No. Uh, yes, I did. Hawaii. Whoa. Hawaiian. Hawaii. Hawaiian. Trying not to spell the entire state of Hawaii wrong and the, uh, the demonym that is used to describe the island itself and some of the people. Hawaiians, if you will. Hawaiian natives or otherwise. People who just live in Hawaii. People who have that rainbow on their, uh, on their license, like McLovin. It's cool stuff. So a blue Hawaiian is actually a cocktail I've never actually made before. In the realm of cocktails that are blue, essentially what you wind up doing is you take blue curacao and you add it to... It's more or less clear spirit and you make things blue. It usually has a really bombastic blue color um, There's really no way around it unless you mix it with some other color to combine the colors to make it a different color Like purple for instance or like I guess lighter blue if you dilute it anyways I've never actually had a blue Hawaiian before because like it just never got around to it I don't usually keep pineapple juice on me, but we actually have pineapple juice and I've been using the pineapple juice ever since um, I think we had a bunch of pineapples here one time and I'm still using that pineapple juice. It hasn't gone bad. It's just been carbonating and getting better and even more tasty. I'm kind of accidentally making tapache in my refrigerator, but we're about to use the last of it this evening, so. R.I.P. What we're going to need is we're going to need a shaker glass for this. We're going to combine in it some ice as well as some other reagents and stuff, and we're going to pour it out into a glass that has crushed ice over it. The crushed ice is going to exist for only this part of the stream because eventually it will melt by the very end. But the color shouldn't go too much anywhere, or at least we're crossing our fingers for that. So first what we'll do is I'll grab myself a shaker. I think the one that I used already, the pink one, has a, you know, done its time sitting on the ground for a little bit. It's got a little bit of froth in it. Let me do this a bit quick clean again, uh, just so it's ready for this particular one. I don't really want any of the flavors of the Angostura getting a little, getting a little rowdy in there. It's not really what I have in mind, but I'll do a little bit there. We'll do that classic bartender thing where we like clean our apparatuses and stuff. It's a little wet in there. It's a little sticky on the outside. So we put a little bit of wetness there to make things nice. I'm pretty sure a lot of the other ones utilize shakers and I just, I don't, I don't want to use this shaker again. This is the last time. This is the last time. Baby, use a different shaker. There we go. Also, I don't know what's wrong with this thing, but it looks like this part here I can turn it. 
I don't know why I can turn it. I've checked on the inside. There is no screw hole inside of this shaker. I don't know why this turns. Anyways, it does. So, uh, it can do like this. And anyway, anyways, uh, fun bar tricks. Share your friends. Don't. Don't share your friends. Please don't share your friends. So in our shaker, we're gonna add some ice. We're gonna shake things with ice this time. Whoa, okay, my pineapple fronds fell on the ground. Those need to be thrown away. Those are very bad looking. Oh, please show me these pineapple fronds. I thought I could keep these guys in the, um, I thought I could keep these guys in the freezer. They've been in there for too long. They, they are dying. These pineapple fronds should not be used as garnish if we care for the health and safety of our imbibers, which I do. At least me, me being the one imbibing this time. I might put one of my circular ice cubes in here. It's probably a waste, but, you know, I just feel like it. It's not even a circular cube. It's not even a cube. I don't know why I keep calling it a cube. It's not a cube. It's a circular ice sphere. And then I'll add, like, there we go. I'll add a couple of small cubes in there. That's perfect. Absolutely perfection. So what we're going to add for our blue Hawaiian is obviously blue curacao, but not quite yet. First, we'll add coconut rum, a single ounce of our coconut rum, which is Malibu. It's Caribbean rum, coconut liqueur. I don't know if there's really any other coconut rum out there. I've tried Calico Jack before. Don't really like it. Malibu is just, it's great. And we're going to make this Malibu into Malibu because blue curacao, we're going to need an ounce, about 30 milliliters of our Malibu or just our Malibu. We haven't gotten to the blue yet. Gosh, let's not strain ourselves. Pushing things too hard. Single yeah, ounce yeah, of that. How dare you push yourself? Oh. Yeah, how dare I push myself? Anna, you are very talkative tonight. For, for for one who's studying, you're talking a lot. I just got through. Um, I got 113 wrong, but I got an 82 overall. Hey, congratulations, dear. That's pretty good. That's improving from last time, right? Um, well, I've never done the full 600 in one day, so. Well, there we go. That's it. That's progress. And somehow, all with me screaming in the background. Well, no, that's an achievement. For most of it. Oh, that's fair. Okay. So we're also gonna add a single ounce, about 30 milliliters of our blue curacao. Equal parts to your Malibu. This, or at least what is contained within this shaker, that's the Malibu. Not a Malibu who, not a Malibu who, just, just Malibu. Malibu, Malady, Malady, Malibu, Malady, Malibu, Malady. I'm blue, da ba dee da ba die. Anyways. Two ounces of pineapple juice is what we have next. About 59 milliliters of that. I hope that this does not utilize all of the pineapple juice that I have left because there is a cocktail later on, actually the next one, that calls for a splash of pineapple juice. And I want to make sure, I hope, that I still have at least a little bit of pineapple juice left over. Because I'm excited for that one. Two full ounces. About 59 milliliters if you're being exact mundo. There is a bit of pineapple juice left. Very, very good. Very good indeed. And then the next ingredient is, it says a cup of crushed ice. I'm not actually, I'm not adding a cup of crushed ice. This actually goes into our glass afterwards. So we're shaking this. We're shaking it up. Doing a bit of a mix. Shaking things up. Fun stuff. Um, right? Combine the first four ingredients into a cocktail shaker or mason jar. Hold up a second. Coconut rum, blue curacao, pineapple juice, one cup of crushed ice, fresh pineapple, and maraschino cherries. I don't, I, hmm. Oh, you know what? We put the crushed ice into the container. I see, I see. We mix that up and then we pour the whole thing into the glass. All right. Let's get some crushed ice then. I see. I was confused for a moment. I got my Lewis bag over here. Gonna crush up some ice. Hopefully not destroying any of the other things that we have on our bar over here. The way that I crush ice is rather simple. I take some ice, usually some of my larger cubes because I like to get all the energy out of my system. Um, we'll do one, we'll do two, because I know I have I have quite a bit of ice in there already. I don't think we need too much more. It's gonna come out all weird and stuff. Then again, I feel like most things come out pretty weird, you know, in a, in a societal sense, I suppose. Put it in your bag. I have a Lewis bag for this now, and it works pretty well, and I like it very much. Depending on how aggressive you want to be with crushing your ice, you might want to get some goggles. I personally like to use goggles because I know what my shtick is. And uh, personally, I like to use a wrench. I have a bigger wrench, but I just feel like using the smaller wrench this time around. Go wild, but make sure that you keep yourself safe. Uh, trigger warning, or uh, content warning? I don't know. Uh, things are going to get loud for a moment, so...
Turn this thing around a little bit so we can get it from all angles. I've only been crushing with the Lewis bag for a little while now, so I'm not exactly sure when this is adequately crushed up. When it stops being fun and my arm gets tired, it's usually when I stop. Now that you've crushed your ice, you probably don't need the goggles anymore, but in case you want to be really careful, you're more than welcome to just keep them on. You know, safety first and safety last uh, makes Cameron, I guess, last that much longer. I'm just gonna put it all into our shaker glass because apparently everything goes into the container and I put too much ice in there already, but here's all of our crushed ice. It's all in there. It's a lot of crushed ice. Definitely don't think that I need that much of it, but here we are. We'll top our shaker back off and we'll give this a shake. I don't really know how this is gonna go because there's just so much ice in there. There's so much, it actually works pretty well. It's great. It's leaking just a little bit. Okay, now it's leaking a little bit more than a little bit. And now, it, you know what, I'm done with it. Oh, my fingers were sticking to the side of the shaker. That was cool. So now let's grab ourselves a glass. Honestly, don't exactly know how many ounces of glass that I need, so I'm just gonna go for one that looks like the picture. Let's see, how about... I used this one last time for a, a crushed ice cocktail, so I'm gonna use this one again and see how this goes. Let's try that. We'll pop over to the cocktail angle. We'll see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. How we doing, how we doing? Hello there. Hello there. Nice. We'll go right here, and essentially, I'm just gonna take the top off of the shaker over here. I'm just gonna pour the contents into the glass. No straining necessary, batteries not included. There we go. Ooh, that was perfect. Great. This is our blue Hawaiian. Ah, but our Hawaiian isn't blue enough yet. Instead, we have to make sure that we garnish appropriately. And I think what I'll do, I'll grab myself. Usually we'd want to use pineapple wedges for this, but I did not go to the store specifically to get a pineapple because I just didn't want to be wasteful. So instead what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my little lemon wheel. I'm going to create it. Then what I'll do is I'm going to cut this wheel into quarters. Then we're going to use those in combination with some maraschino cherries to make a little skewer that we're going to pop into the thing itself. So let me also grab some maraschino cherries over here. I'll grab a nice, I don't have any blue bamboo sticks, unfortunately. I'll grab a straw while I'm over here. We're going to use one of those. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to make a little skewer. So first I'll grab my spare bar spoon and we'll go fishing go fishing for a little bit fishing for one maraschino put you over here there you go take a look at the maraschino put them in view there you go back here hello there we'll do two maraschino i think that'll probably be enough some of these guys are crushed does anybody have recommendation for like um a really good brand of maraschino cherry or just like cocktail cherries in general I feel like maraschino always comes to mind, obviously, and Luxardo is obviously, like, the go-to. But, like, I feel like there's more out there that are, like, unsung, you know? And I want to I wanna know what those are. So instead of using pineapple wedges, instead what I'm going to do, and it's going to be a little bit different, so obviously this is, this is a departure, is I'm going to add to the, my skewer here, alternating, a lemon quarter... Cherry, lemon quarter, cherry. And we'll pop this guy into our, uh, pop this guy in our glass. There we go. Put you over here with the rest of the lemon scraps. We'll try to use those again later. And for those who don't want to drink out of a skewer, you could, if you want to, add a straw. That's what I'm going to do. We'll put you up a little bit. There we go. This is what we got here. If there was, I feel like it would probably be a bit more pleasing to look at if I guess the ice were thicker, but the ice is pretty thick here. So it's interesting because the uh, the photo I have looks like there is a lot more garnish showing 
and um, I'm not sure how they're doing that. And I don't feel like sticking around to find out. This is our blue Hawaiian. I'll take a little picture of that. This is a very nice blue color. I would say this is probably not as close to, let's say, like the dark blue that I'm going for, but it is blue nonetheless. And I hope that the next blue one will be a, um, a lighter blue. Naturally, if you were trying to match colors as well, you can always, there's no shame in using like a little bit of, um, you know, like food syrup and stuff. It's, uh, I got some of that over there. We really need to match up the colors and I might do a little bit of color doctoring later because I really, there's a certain image that we're going for over here. I don't think there's any shame in that. If, they, if, you, if you've got a masterwork in mind, people like the, the food commercials that you see half the time, say most of the time, it's probably not even real food. They use like clay and stuff or pieces of glue. I think they use like actually like specialty glue to make it look like like melting American cheese. I don't think I'm pulling that out of my butt. I think that's an actual real thing. So our blue Hawaiian, like straight off the bat, smells like coconut. I love the way that smells. And honestly, I'm trying to think now, I don't remember if I used all the uh, blue coconut flakes from last week. Let me see if I got a little bit more in my fridge. I think I must have uh, must have done something with them. I don't have them up here. At least I don't think I do. Let me check real quick. If I have those, I'm gonna use them. Oh, I do. I do, I do, I do. This is totally not necessary. However, we had some blue coconut flakes from last week that we made for the cocktail stream last week, naturally. And essentially we took blue curacao and we put some coconut flakes into it. And we got these really awesome blue looking coconut flakes. They taste like coconut with like a hint of orange. And I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna like put that on top. Cause honestly, I think that's looking pretty cool. It almost looks like blue ice, almost like, like, um, I feel like blue ice is a thing, a thing that I'm not remembering the context for. Or like blue slush, maybe they use that to like, to like, um, clean up messes and stuff or something. Take an updated picture for what we have over here. Actually, it, it's an, it's an interesting look. It's a look nonetheless. Maybe not the best, but it is. It is a cocktail, and for that, we celebrate. Mm. Oh, that is an excellent drink. It's like, it's basically like a liquid pina colada. It's like a slightly altered liquid pina colada. There is significantly less thickness than there would be if you blended this thing together, but it tastes like coconut, tastes like pineapple, it's got all those tropical lovely notes in it. It tastes like Malibu, obviously, but there's a little bit of something else in there. A little bit more sweetness, a sweetness from the curacao. Like I recognize the taste of curacao in there and it is, it is prevalent. It'd be interesting to see like a blue Hawaiian done with like a different orange liqueur and also blue. This is like really taste. This is a crushable cocktail. This tastes really, really good. I absolutely love this blue Hawaiian here and I've never actually had one today. Cranky Pangs pops in and says, are you gay? Maybe just a little bit. I appreciate you asking. The blue Hawaiian here, very nice. For my first exposure to a blue Hawaiian, I'm happy with it. Again, it's just kind of a blue pina colada. And if that's like your thing, then all right. It sounds good. Snap, crackle, and pop. Rice Krispies is the only way I know how to respond to that. Feed picks? Nah, none of that stuff. Not this time, I got my slippers on. So our blue Hawaiian is the blue color that we have in the flag of choice this time. There is another blue-ish blue color per se over here. We have, let's see, as it pertains to the, the rainbow, right? We have red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. And I gotta wonder what exactly indigo happens, what, what like niche indigo covers here. When I tried to Google the term indigo, I saw something that looked like kind of a dark blue, but like not as dark as like the other one over here. Cranky Pants popped in over here with a Prime subscription. Sorry, is gay as fuck. That's okay. That's fine, dude. I love that stuff. You can come here and enjoy the view. You can come in here and not enjoy the view. So long as you're having a good time, we're all fine with this. Thank you for that. We appreciate it greatly around here. It is going to be used on more liquors and I'm cool with that. Kiri, Kiri? I don't know how to pronounce your name. If you wouldn't mind helping me out with that. Kiri, Kiri's, Kiri's. I'm down with it. 
but thank you. Thank you for the explanation. So Indigo's the next one. And so I was thinking to myself, what, what do we do for Indigo? And uh, as it pertains to at least the Pride Progress flag, there's like a lighter blue color on there. And I kind of wanted to capture that in a cocktail. So we're going for it. And Cranky Fans pop in here with a follow as well. You have a seat at my bar anytime. So thank you for that. We'll move this one off to the side. And... We'll go. Move on to the next one. This one is also blue, technically. It is indigo, technically. You could also call it light blue, technically. The blue Hawaiian's done. I love that. I love that blue Hawaiian. I like unapologetically love the blue Hawaiian. And I think the reason I've stayed off of it for so long is like, it just felt like an easy win for me. I know I was gonna like it. It used Malibu. Like, of course it's gonna taste good. Oh, the Cranky Pan says, eat it. What did I have to eat around here? I had like, oh, there was a maraschino cherry somewhere. I can't ruin these vistas over here. But uh, I can like take a piece of the, the lemon that I have from over here. I'll take some of that. Mm -mm. Cherry? Mm -hmm. I got the Anna. I don't want the cherries. I want my lemon. If my bro Lycos Laura is still hanging around here somewhere, he'd be proud of me to eat the lemon. So the next cocktail that I got for y'all is let me move over here a little bit. Is something called the Holy Water Cocktail. The Holy Water Cocktail is the one that is supposed to take the place of the light blue on the flag. I'm, I'm gonna go into this a little bit because I have no idea where this cocktail came from. But we're gonna do it anyways. So let me get my light brute color over here. Bring Anna in over here. The Cranky Pants requests your presence, my dear. Only if you choose to accept it. Holy water. Holy water. Holy water cocktail. And this is supposed to be what? Indigo? Question mark? Indigo, like light blue, L blue. Whatever you want to call it, that's the color that it is, and it shall remain to be. So the holy water cocktail, this is, this is actually interesting. So in case you don't already know, I have a lot of cocktail recipes that I have in a little compendium of an app that I have, and I love getting recommendations from people. I, like all the time, I'm trying to make sure I can put everything into the little compendium so it can pop on on stream sometime and give like the proper credit, credit of like who actually was the one who suggested this cocktail be made. And this one's actually kind of nice because actually this is a recommendation by, oh, hi, Anna, welcome. Yes, we're getting to that. Thank you. I will explain where this came from in a moment. But this is actually a cocktail recommendation that came, it was picked out by Anna. She gets the credit for that. But the recipe actually came from my grandmother, who every once in a while sends me like an unsolicited Facebook message being like, yo, I saw this cocktail and I think you might like it. Maybe you should try it out sometime. So this shout out goes to my grandmother who actually pulled this off of Facebook. Did she really? She did, she, it actually did. Oh, I and uh, I didn't actually have like, the picture itself was just a photo, but I did my Google searching. So I found out what the ratio was of it. Um, uh, it came from TopShelfFours.com. This one's got mad respect. Mad respect for me and Anna. Dude, I've got mad respect for my grandmother right time. She's not Anna. At least, Anna's not grandmother yet. She certainly wouldn't be my grandmother. Be Anna doesn't want to be my I grandma. Anna doesn't want to have kids right now. I don't want her to be my grandmother specifically. That's, who. Grandma can have my kiss. Cranky, I'm going to po pocket that kiss. And when I see my grandmother next, the thing I'm going to, I'm going to say... Some cranky pants on the internet wanted you to have this, and I'm gonna give her a kiss for you. And we'll just and like, we'll just see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. I think I think it'll go over pretty well. So the holy water cocktail, which evidently comes from TopShelfPours.com. Sure, I guess. I don't really know if something blue is gonna be your top shelf pour, but we're gonna try it anyways. So it contains vodka, rum, blue curacao, peach schnapps, and lemonade, and a splash of pineapple juice. I thought that maybe the blue curacao was going to be like a little too blue for this one. So we're modifying a little bit. Holy water, as it pertains to the name that it's trying to live up to me. I don't, I, I don't know. If this is like the search, like there, there are people who tried to find like the water of life and holy water for like centuries and stuff. And they settled upon, the fact that they settled upon, some, upon something blue, I'm not super sure if, I don't know, just seems, I, I want to like X the doubt on that one. So instead of using blue curacao for this one, and I had the wonderful idea of taking some of our rock candy from like two weeks ago, and a, I think it was a blue raspberry Jolly Rancher, and just dissolve it in vodka. So this is home infused blue raspberry vodka liqueur that we're going to use in this one in place of the blue curacao, and probably in place of the vodka as well, because um, it calls for vodka and curacao, and we're just going to strike those two and combine with this one, and we're just going to see what happens. I think it might be pretty interesting because we have a bunch of lemonade in there. 
Cranky says, oh wait, sorry, what's your pronouns? I go by he, him. I appreciate you for asking that. That's cool. This is the second time somebody's actually asked me for those. I really appreciate that. That's great. You could probably write it on your board. I could probably write it on my board. It's also in the about section. I think I have that in all of the about stuff too, so. But I appreciate you asking. That's a mad props, Cranky. Mad props for that one. You are a good G. What are yours? And as we continue with that, I will go over here and start with the holy water cocktail. It doesn't say whether or not we're supposed to shake this or not, so I think I'm just going to take the easy way and I'm just going to build this in the glass and I'll give it a little bit of a stir to agitate the colors so that they all combine with each other. What we're going to need, though, is a tall glass. I think what I'm going to use, I'm going to use my Stein over here because if I if I think about like the historical ramifications of of um, holy water, I think that the pursuit of holy water was probably more of a medieval thing. Like I'm sure people are still like trying to find holy water and stuff, but I would think like this is this occupies like the early 1200s in my mind, and people be drinking them out of like stone tankards and stuff, or maybe metal tankards. I don't really. Know. I'm not a history guy, so that that also just coming right out of my butt to be honest. But I'll use this guy over here. I'm gonna build it over some ice. I'll put a couple of ice cubes in this, and we'll just combine things together. One of the things that we have that this calls for is some lemonade, actually. So I'm thinking about lemonade, and I'm thinking, what do we want to use for lemonade? And I think all we're going to do is instead of like actually mixing up some lemonade, I'm going to take some lemon, I'm going to take some sugar, I'm going to take some water, and I'm going to put that in there. I don't really have a preferred lemonade recipe, and so I'm just going to take probably half part lemon juice, half part water, dilute it by half, and I'll just put in a sugar in there. And we'll just see how things taste. And I'll just add sugar until I feel like it's enough. This is a kind of a, a make your own thing, a bring your own ratio kind of cocktail here. And I, I'm cool with that. Cranky says, oh yeah, no problem. I'm a Zer, Zay, Zem. I respect that. Zer, Zay, and Zem. Very cool. So what we first need is instead of using just an ounce of vodka and a half an ounce of blue curacao, I think we're just going to start off using a full ounce and a half or about 44 milliliters of our blue raspberry infused vodka. So that's what we'll go with, right? I'll take my, I had a measuring majigger over here. I think, well, it was that one, but that one completely rolled underneath the bar. So uh, I'm just gonna use this one because we have extras around here. A full ounce and a half of blue raspberry liqueur. Blue raspberry infused. It has a nice blue color. And uh, because of everything else we're mixing with it, uh, it's probably gonna get even more, even less blue, I guess. Even more blue, definitely even more less. We're putting stuff lighter. into it. What'd you say? Lighter. Even lighter is another way of saying it, if, I, if, if I'm being correct, I suppose. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a single ounce of rum. I feel like for this, because we're trying to conserve color, probably just go for a light white rum. Bacardi, I think, is gonna suit us just fine. So we'll go a full ounce, or about 30 milliliters, of our Bacardi rum. There we go. I poured a little bit too much out of that. When people ask where all the rum got, I don't know where it was that I saw that phrase. Where'd all the rum gone? I think it was in one of my tiki drink books. And ever since then, I've been joking with myself. I was like, when everybody jokes where the rum is gone, it's all over the bar. I spilled it everywhere, but unfortunately the speaking. What'd you say, dear? You're chewing. That's the absinthe. That's the absinthe. There's, abs there's been absinthe on the bar. There's been rum on the bar. There's been plenty of stuff on the bar. There's been egg on the bar. I've never thrown up on the bar. There's been boiling hot chocolate on the bar before. That was caught on stream. That was like... That was like back in January, I think. That was a whew, that was a very authentic moment. So the next ingredient that we're going to add is a half an ounce of peach schnapps. Uh, there's plenty of peach schnapps in the world. This one, this one happens to be mine. This is Faber peach schnapps. It's a local peach schnapps. Faber is just like I guess the Pennsylvania answer to liqueurs in general. They also make a gin. And I couldn't for the life of you tell you tell I couldn't for the life of me tell you what kind of gin it is. It doesn't say London Dry, doesn't say American Dry, doesn't say anything on it. It just says easy drinking gin. And I don't really know what that means to be honest. But it goes well in a Negroni, I'll tell you that much. Because I've made plenty of them with it and it works just fine. So we've got our vodka our blue and our rum and our peach schnapps in here. The last thing that we need is some lemonade. Um, we got about half of our container left remaining over here. So I'm just gonna try to take some lemon juice. I'm gonna, I've got plenty more lemons to squeeze over here. And uh, we'll just see where we get with that. I'll try to measure it out into my measuring majigger and we'll, we'll see where we get with that. And then I'll just combine equal parts of the water and then we'll add some sugar into, sugar to taste. And then we'll give this thing like a stir to make sure everything is well, contained 
I knew that there would be a lot of lemons for this evening, so I did bought a whole bag, but a whole bag of lemons, half a dozen lemons for this one. Um, I'm a, I'm a little ashamed of exactly how much waste that is going to produce because I still haven't quite cracked the code on to use uh, all of my citruses, all the pieces of my citrus. Maybe one day. It's a learning process for everybody. So, Aren't thank you, you for try joining to make me. Tea with them? I, I will eventually try to make tea with that. Actually, some of the things that you can do with your excess lemon peels and stuff. Uh, one of my favorite ways of using excess lemon peels is you can actually take them and boil them. Boil the peels completely until they are tender, like very, very tender. And then what you do is you cover them in salt, uh, a little bit of vinegar, and you put it in oil. You just put it in olive oil. This is two full ounces of our lemon juice. And I just realized how lemon, how lemon, how yellow this is. So I'm going to try to watch how much lemon juice I add because I don't want to change up this color too much in this cocktail. I want it to stay as blue as possible. It still has a nice blue to it. We're about an ounce in. This is still still quite blue. And I'll pour the rest of it in. I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be okay here. I might even add a little bit more blue to it just to, just to make sure we got everything right. All right. So we added about two ounces of our lemon. And we're going to add two ounces, or about 59 milliliters, of our water. Nice water. And then we'll add some sugar just to see how much, uh, I don't exactly know how much we're gonna add there. We'll just, we'll try until we need, we'll try to add some until we feel like we need to not. Right now, I'll grab one of my, grab one of my stirrers, my bar spoons. I would say this still has a nice blue color to it. I think as we add sugar to it, let me bring the cocktail angle over here so we can actually see what's going on. I realize I haven't put that up on the screen yet. Hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, you know what? From wow, from your guys' angle, I think this looks like this is like the perfect color. I think that looks really good. Wow. Anna, good choice. Excellent choice this time. I need to add sugar to this. Uh, let me grab a straw so I can taste this as we go along. Let's see. Right now. Ooh, it's very sour. Very, very sour. That is a very, very sour drink. I do not like the, the way it is. Let me grab and sugar over here. I wonder if this thing has a measuring spoon in it. It looks very yummy. Indeed. Well, right, right now, right now, it just looks yummy. At least for me, I know my own flavor preferences are not sour. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to make this as least sour as possible. I haven't opened up this container yet. Here's a little bit of plastic ripping ASMR. Here we go. Maybe. <laughs> Tear here. That didn't work at all. There we go, maybe. I'm gonna be quiet for this one for all the people to enjoy it. There we go. <laughs> I opened up the sugar container. Um, I don't really know. I got a bar spoon. We're all good. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna guesstimate by adding I'm gonna say four bar spoons worth of sugar. One, two, three, and four. They're heaping, four heaping bar spoons of sugar and see if that gets it to the sweetness level that I want. This is gonna vary, right? If you are making this holy water yourself, you probably, your mileage is gonna vary a little bit. It really depends on whatever you want to drink, whatever you're into. And if you really don't know, there's apps. If you're doing your own home bartending stuff, there's absolutely no shame in just like mixing it and changing the ratios until you like it. I do that all the time. So, still needs more sugar. Definitely needs more sugar to me. I'm gonna add twice as much. I'm gonna add four more bar spoons. This is a total of eight bar spoons of sugar. Exactly how many grams a bar spoon is, I really don't know. i it really depends on your bar spoon. Your mileage is gonna vary there too. Your mileage to your mileage is going to vary because not only are you using, I guess, a vehicle that has a, a, a variety of miles per gallon, but you also have, I guess your energy, your body, right? Your car can drive for so long, but you personally can only drive for so long. So your mileage may vary on your mileage because of your gas tank and your car's gas tank. Yeah, that's better now. I like that. I really, okay, I really like that now. That is good. This is 
Our holy water cocktail. I'm not going to drink it out of straw. I don't like the way it looks. I'm going to put my sugar away. Craig asks, is this your job? This is just a really kick-ass hobby that I have. By day, I am a firmware engineer for a small startup company in Philadelphia who works on medical electronics. I'm going to take a picture of this guy for the, for the grams. It really did come in as that like light blue color. And I'm like really, really happy with that. And this, the, the phone does not want to focus. Oh my God. Oh my God. There we go. Works pretty well. Works pretty well indeed. Yeah, I've been streaming for about, I think I've been streaming for about, let's see, almost three years now. It'll be three years in December, so about two and a half years now. And I really only started doing this bar thing here. Actually, that started at the beginning. What am I saying? I've been doing this for a while. I just like mixology. It was a hobby I started in college. What was that word, dear? Somatostatin. All right, I'll take it. I like that. Suppresses the secretions of glycogen and insulin. Nice. If anybody's interested in physical therapy, that's Anna's actual job. It's great. I haven't started working. Well, she'll get there eventually. She's still got to pass the boards first. She'll get there. We have faith in her. So our holy water cocktail is interesting. It tastes like sour blue raspberry lemonade. Sour blue raspberry lemonade. This is something that I honestly could imagine. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll take this for a moment. This tastes like you took like that Minute Maid lemonade mix and you poured way too much of it into a glass of water and you somehow turned it blue. Let's say like you took one of those like those blue dum dum lollipops. I'm thinking specifically those ones because I know they have a sourness to them that I'm not a big fan of. And if you took like two or three of those and you stuck them in the drink in your lemonade and you just let that sit all day, that's the kind of cocktail that you get here. Evidently, it is the recipe for holy water. So we're all getting this much closer to sainthood and potentially even godhood by drinking it. So with that said, spend a little more money on the on the lemonade stands that you see across the world. Those kids are going to be entrepreneurs one day. Cool. Or they not might to be. Oh, hello. That sounds good. Hello there. Would you like to try it? Yes, you do. Holy water. How's the holy water? What do you think? Anna doesn't usually pop on to drink drinks, so this is, in this is interesting. She it's likes a lot of stuff. lemon. Lots of lemon. I think there's, there's a little, there's like a a little bit of, of blue, like raspberry. blue raspberry. Yeah, it's like, a but little it, bit it's, it. it's like a sour lemonade, but there's something off. And mm -hmm. It's kind of like the lemonade. The lemonade that's sort was of made like wrong. that's sort of like Minute Maid flavor is kind of what I'm getting there. It's like no, it's because too Minute, Minute Maid is too sugary. That's fair. Yeah, I'd respect it. Pass, smash, pass, pass or smash. A little less alcohol. Less alcohol. That's fair. We had. One and a half ounces plus a full ounce of rum in there, so we have two and a half. That's ounces. what's the funny flavor. I, yeah, there's a little bit of rummy flavor in there. That's that's probably why. Because I'm like, it's an off lemonade. Very very interesting. <laughs> it certainly did accomplish. Wow, that is super acidic. My goodness. For me, when things get really acidic, I will. My mouth gets. My teeth feel like sandpapery. That's that's like what it feels like, you know. Sardonic Jeff has just popped in here saying, Anna! And he's got the emotes going like, Yee, come back here, come back! <laughs> Jeff requires you. Yeah, actually, that was what I hit. That was what I hit. Did I break it? No. Oh, thank goodness. Thank God, because you can... I threw something that direction and hit something right on the mark. Hi. Anna's back. Would you like to tell the world? Actually, while I do a little cleanup and go to the next color of cocktail, how's your studying been going today? We're on hypnotic because I couldn't remember how the word was spelled. <laughs> that has to do with the sleep. Um, we have cardiac rehab phase one. That would be three to five days inpatient, typically to work on like just being able to sit to stand. You're not going above one to three Mets. What's a Met? Um, it's a metric unit. Like the like... Metropolitan Museum of Art? I don't actually know what it stands for. Anymore. That's okay. That's okay. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Give me. Wait, wait, wait. Now Move I'm going to look up it. what the Mets are. Met in physical activity physical activities because met mets are like units that we use in order to justify like how Does much met, is it met like an acronym probably that's what i'm trying to figure oh. out jeff says the word is spelled i the word is is spelled i s what <laughs> is that's true um that's about all i know about the word is alexa define is no 
Don't do that. The verb is is usually defined as third person singular present indicative of being, which means used with the present participle or infinitive of the principal verb to indicate future action. Oh, I found what met it. means. What does met mean? Metabolic rate of time. A met is a ratio of your working metabolic rate relative to your resting metabolic rate. Metabolic rate is the rate of energy. Oh, it's gone. Okay, that's what we usually use to justify like certain exercises. So mm -hmm. like if you're in different kind of rehabs, you want to hit you don't want to hit beyond certain mets, especially if you have cardiac problems or things like that. Mm -hmm. It's also like how do you progress someone that doesn't have the full like blood flow? It's basically um, like not pushing yourself too hard, right? Go back to studying. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> That was our that was our little that was our little inkling of physical therapy knowledge for the world today. You'll be able to find Anna in universities all over the world teaching no, the wonderful not. people of this nation probably never. She does not want to be a teacher to my knowledge. I don't want to be a teacher either. Not in that respect. I, go work I don't even know what I would do professionally was. She's going to work with she'll be a pediatric nurse. It'll be great. It'll be great. Nurse. Nurse, sorry, not nurse, physical therapist. Just slipped. So what is our next cocktail color this evening? On our journey of color-coded cocktails, for the sake of pride in general, the rest of the rainbow, we have so far covered the color red, the Angostura Sour, the color orange, the Mimosa, the color yellow, the Yellow Jacket, the color green, the Japanese Gin and Tonic, the color blue, the Blue Hawaiian, and the color indigo, light blue, or otherwise, the Holy Water Cocktail. And we have more or less half the rainbow to go and we're at the two hour mark here. This is gonna run definitely a bit later than I usually do, but I'm hyped up on the adrenaline and I just, I, I wanna get things going over here. So I'm gonna swiftly move into the next color that we have on the pride flag here, which is going to be the color of purple. I think after we hit purple, we've more or less covered all of the horizontal colors on the pride progress flag. That's just the one that I'm referring to here. The colors that remain are brown, white, black, pink, and I think that's it. I think those are the other ones, right? We'll get there. So long as we come up with 11 different cocktails, I know we counted correctly. So the purple cocktail that we have this evening is something a little bit purple. So let me pull that up real quick. It is called, it is called, if my recipe keeper works for me, it is. It's called Purple Rain because it is purple, naturally. And it's a cocktail that I actually wanted to cover a while ago, and I honestly, I, I don't remember why I didn't. I don't remember. Oh, that is a terrible marker. I don't like that marker. Get out of here. I don't like that marker. Sorry, loud noises happen on this stream sometimes. It just just winds up happening. Richno says, Happy Pride, everybody! And that is a beautiful, like, oh, it's a paint bucket with slinging rainbows everywhere. I freaking love that. Rich, how are you doing, my friend? Purple. That's the color. Rain. Purple rain. Purple, purple, purple rain. I don't know. Can, can anybody read this? I don't know if anybody can read the purple over there. I'm trying my best this over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline it in white because I feel like that purple color is not very prevalent. I'm also putting it over here. Purple rain. There we go. Purple rain. That's the wrong color. I don't really know where to go with the color purple, to be honest. So we were talking earlier about how, like, there, there are various different ways to make the color purple in cocktails. There's, there's a number of ways, really, to make the color purple in general. But the ones that, the, I feel like the thing that usually comes to mind is either purple gin, which is merely butterfly, I mean, it could be as small as butterfly pea flower infused gin. Butterfly pea flower is a type of tea. If you steep it, it turns the water blue. And if you let it sit for long enough, it'll turn out like a deep, deep purple color. But you could also just combine the color blue and red together. Um, I've done a couple of different, like, purple cocktails before and a lot of times i'm using that M uh, butterfly pea flower infused gin i still have a little bit left over of it down here and it looks so purple like you really can't tell from this distance over here but um excuse me i'll pop it on over here anyways just so everybody can kind of here compared to my shirt it's a nice purple color I see Jeff in here saying, if Prince were alive, he'd have a purple rain drink, right? Oh, maybe that's what the reference is supposed to be. This came from the tipsybartender.com, and I don't exactly know whether the tipsy bartender listens to a lot of Prince. That might be the reference that is completely lost on me. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blame my potential millennialness or Gen Zness or whatever year that I was born. And Rich is doing well over here, which is great. Watched a couple of episodes of The Bear tonight, so coming in a little bit late. Interesting, what is The Bear about? I feel like is that the bear like like in the prideful sense or is that the bear like there's a there's a like a cocaine bear sense where it's an actual animal rolling around? I don't know too much about that one. How Personally, is the actual bear cocaine. There's a there's a movie called Cocaine Bear. 
and it's inspired by a bear taking cocaine and going wild in the forest. Although the bear died shortly after in real life, but obviously dramatics in the cinema universe. You know, like the animal who's get jacked up on cocaine because that's how wild nature is, dude. Um, in any case, Prince would want a purple rain cocktail, as so we would be said there. Purple rain, in this case, is going to be made purple by combining something that is red, in this case, grenadine, combined with something that is blue. And yes, it is blue curacao in this case. We'll combine it together again. Jeff says, maybe it's a bear like bearing, like bear with me here. But I think, isn't that bear like B A R E? Like kind of like the right to bear arms? Or do I just not know how to spell today? Because that would be two people so far in this apartment, and there really is only two of us. And uh, we're not very good spellers. I've been doing great. Anna's been doing great with spelling. Except, I don't even know um, what I'm I've talking about there. Funny. She's been doing great, letters. despite the fact that she's been reading things a little bit funny and skipping letters, but she reads great. I don't even know where that comment of mine came from. I'd like to withdraw that from the record. <laughs> Withdrawn. So for our purple rain cocktail, we are going to put things in a shaking glass. I got a shaking glass over here. It's got a glass thing in it. I was going to throw this one up into the air and do fun tricks and stuff, but hmm. Yes, says Jeff. It's like bear arms, like like bear, as in like right, the bear arms, or like my bear bear arms, or they're not really bear. This shirt fits funny, but you know, you didn't need to know that. What do we have over here, right? The purple rain is going to start off with a half and an ounce, one ounce and a half of vodka. In this case, I'm gonna use, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of flavor coming from the lemonade and the curacao and the grenadine, so I'm gonna use this really, really cheap cut vodka that I bought. I tasted it last week, and it tastes like straight up isopropyl alcohol, but sometimes that's a good thing. So uh, I'm gonna give that a try and see exactly what happens here. It might be good, maybe this recovers the cocktail, maybe not. Oh, and I also need to add ice to this thing. So let me grab some ice as well. Rich says, ha, it's a Hulu show, that's pretty great. It's actually a fast paced show about a chef running a restaurant in Chicago. Don't wanna throw in any spoilers, but it's worth a watch on season two now. Si My coworker told me about the bear. I remember that now. That, that's, that show seems really, really cool. I think when I was, I was talking about, I wanted to watch, and I'm currently trying to go through Drink Masters, and when I was mentioning that at work, he's like, oh, oh, you should definitely watch The Bear. And I was like, what is The Bear? And he told me all about it. So eventually, I need to add that to my, my, watch, my watch list or something, but that's a Hulu show, you said. I think we have Hulu, right? Yeah, we have Hulu. Yeah, we got, we got Hulu. By the way, I just put Nevada, um, Utah, and New Mexico into the glass. So if anybody's there, you're now a part of this cocktail. You're welcome. We're going to let that dilute for a little bit and come to temperature while we add an ounce and a half of our Vladimir vodka on its own. Tastes like sanitizer. Combined, maybe less. We'll see. I will say this. As far as spirits go... It accomplishes the job. The next ingredient that we're going to add is, it says to call for three ounces of lemonade. And the same way that I did the lemonade last time, I'm gonna do the lemonade this time. I'm gonna take three ounces, I'm gonna divide it in half. Half of that goes to lemon juice, half of that goes to water, and I'm gonna add sugar until it's okay. I think what I did previously was there was four ounces and I added four bar spoons of sugar. So this time with three full ounces, I'm going to add six bar spoons of sugar to keep that ratio that I used previously. Just a little bit of mathematics that I did for all of us. And the fact that I made it this far is actually quite impressive. So I'm going to take that as a win this time. We're going to need some lemons. I still have all my lemon scraps from earlier. I'm going to grab my leader. And we're going to try to measure out an ounce and a half for about 44 milliliters of our lemon juice. Um, it's possible I might be able to get it from the rest of the lemon scraps we have, in which case, cool. I will take it. Well, this one was a very aggressive lemon. Very, very aggressive indeed. I'm going to see if this works. Come on. Come on. Yep. Yep. There we go. Lemon has been released. I think I might need to cut another lemon. It doesn't look like we're gonna get enough juice from these two little pieces over here. Yeah, we're gonna need to we need to sacrifice another citrus. All right, this little glass can go to the side because I've used it to the extent that I can. We'll grab another lemon from our lemon supply. It's this guy. We get us give it a slice, a quick slice. I don't really need too much more of it. I cut through the sticker. Great, I love it. And uh, we'll. Top off the rest of our one and a half ounces of lemon juice there. There we go. Perfect. That is the perfect amount of juice from the yellow citrus variety. So we'll add that to our glass over here. 
Then I'm going to take the same part in water. I'm going to add an ounce and a half or about 22 milliliters for a grand total of three ounces or just about like 88 milliliters just about. And then I'll go to my sugar container, which is over here. And I'm going to try to use the same bar spoon as I did previously because for the sake of consistency, we must hold ourselves to a different level of standard. Although it got wet and it's been sitting in the bucket, so I'm going to give this a clean because... <sighs> Taylor does not keep their mouth very clean. Taylor's the bucket, by the way. The bucket has a name now. I don't remember when that happened. I think that was when uh, we had Corrupted Jasper on. One. Two. Three. Four, five, and six bar spoons. Six heaping bar spoons of sugar. So heaping um, that you can see it kind of dusted on the bar a little bit because uh, I made just the slightest bit of a mess. But that's fine. It's fine. It's all right. It's going to be great, you know? Um, let me just make sure real quick that I am on track for what we're doing over here. I just want to double check something real quick. Yes, we are totally on track. This is great. So I added the water, I added the sugar, we've essentially added lemonade. And um, if anybody really wants to fight me on that, you're welcome to do so. This is this is a place for discussion, really. The next ingredient, aside from the three ounces or about 88 milliliters of lemonade that we just added, is going to be a half an ounce of blue curacao. I think this time around, instead of using the blue curacao, I'm gonna use a blue curacao syrup because I think I want to see how the flavor of this lemonade coincides with this cocktail artist syrup as opposed to the, I think that's Haram Walker, Haram Walker Blue Curacao. Personally, I think this tastes a little bit lighter. It's more thick, but it reminds me more of the flavors that I want from like, I guess, I don't really know. This tastes more, I would say this syrup tastes more like lemonade itself than the blue curacao does, and I think it would, personally, I think it would be a better combination. But we'll see. We are here experimenting. So we'll add a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of our blue curacao syrup, which has naturally turned things a beautiful blue color. Actually, what I'll do is I'll bring the cocktail angle over here a little bit so we can see how dynamic or how uh, great a color change we're going to get when we add our grenadine into the mix, because this is supposed to be purple. So uh, we'll see whether or not we actually get to that point. This is the blue color that we have so far. Right around here, I'll move this to the side a little bit. This is the blue color we have right now. That is just from the syrup alone. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a quarter of an ounce of grenadine, which last week when I used the grenadine, this grenadine has a really, really deep color to it. I assure you that this is red. And actually, if I, as I take out my flashlight, hopefully I'll be able to prove that ever so slightly. It is indeed red back there, but it is a very, very deep red. So I think the quarter of an ounce here is probably going to work all right, because uh, I don't think we need that much of it to affect the color. How is Drink Master, asked Rich. I need to check that out. So I've only gotten through most of the first episode, and uh, so far, I love the drama. There was this, not to give any spoilers. Mm, maybe I do want to give spoilers. It's been out for a hot minute. Okay, I'm gonna try to be as vague with this as possible. There was a dude who I hated as soon as I saw him and he got what was coming for him because of a stupid mistake. The mistake that I would probably make in a competition too. Um, that's all I'm saying, but it was incredibly fun to watch and uh, I am a person who enjoys shopping for it, so uh, that's probably why I enjoyed it. So as you, as you can see, there's a blue layer on top. There is a darker layer on the bottom. If I mix this up, I'm hoping that it goes purple. We'll see. So it's not actually as purple as I was intending it to be. So I pretty much, I thought that this was probably gonna happen like this. So that's all good. Instead, what I'm gonna do is for the sake of color. It's interesting. I'm going to get the grenadine back out. But I find for grenadine cocktails, anytime a grenadine cocktail, like I see a picture of it, it, de it depends, right? If you get like Rose's grenadine from the store, it's probably going to be the same type of red as you see in the pictures that you get. But I made my own grenadine, so the red color is going to be a different red color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add enough grenadine to turn this a different color, hopefully to balance out that blue to make this a little more purple. Actually, this is not really coming out the way that I wanted to at all. So, that's okay. Luckily, we have food color to the rescue because 
Uh, this is going to be a purple cocktail. It is going to be a purple cocktail. So instead, I've got got my blue and I got my red. We're just gonna try to see what happens over here. I want it to be purple, so we're gonna make it purple. I'll add one, two drops of the red. It is definitely a darker blue color. I'll add some more red to it and see what happens. It is turning it a dark blue color. I'll add a little bit more. It's still very, very dark. This is a very, very dark color. Wow. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I add a little bit of blue there, whether we can recover this. I'm not sure. I think this is probably too much. I think there's just too much in here to make this the right color. But, according to our flashlight, it's kind of purple. <laughs> it is kind of, kind of purple. I think... We're gonna have to talk, chalk this up to a little bit of a loss this time. So far, so far, we were doing pretty good on our colors. We're gonna mix this up anyway, so that we have our purple rain cocktail. What I'm gonna do afterwards is, there's other ways to make purple, as I was mentioning before. And uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do a very quick gin cocktail afterwards um, to, to bring forth that purple color, just so we, just so we have one. Because I promise we'll have a purple cocktail and we'll make it happen no matter no matter how long it takes us. I need to do a little bit of a quick a little bit of a quick cleanup over here. Anyway, I'll put that back together. We'll combine. And then we'll give this a shake. It's very possible. Now it's possible. After I shake this, it's going to aerate so much that it's going to lighten up in color a little bit. We'll just have to see. Sometimes we just have to trust the process. Maybe this is a trust the process type of thing. Rich says color science is a lie, which I agree with that, and that will definitely have to add drink masters to the list. I would definitely if you if you start watching it, let me know because I'm not that far into it either. I'm trying to say like so far watching this, not a very prominent purple color here. However, what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna strain this over ice. So there as there is gonna be a little less of that potent purple color. Um, so again, we're gonna put this into a glass and see what happens. I'll grab one of my um, old-fashioned glasses over here. I'll pop that down here. We'll add a little bit of ice to it. Looks like this gets strained over ice. So combine vodka, lemonade, blue curacao, grenadine, shake well, strain, mix in a rim glass over ice. And we garnish this with a lemon slice. Let me grab some more ice. I'm gonna t I grab some more states over here. I'm gonna grab Washington. Whoops, as Washington tries to fly across the bar. I'm going to grab Oregon. I'm going to grab Idaho. I'm going to grab, I think that's Montana. I'm going to grab Colorado and Wyoming, because I don't think I remember which one is supposed to be more. So there we go. And now we'll strain this over tub. Actually, I think this is the first, first cocktail that we've actually strained. So you used the oh, no, no, no. Actually, we did use it a little bit. We did a little bit. By Northwest States. They're all out of here now. We haven't come for the East Coast yet. Damn. This cocktail, like, straight up came out almost black looking. So you know what? It could be, it could be a win. This looks like, this looks black from that angle. I don't know if anybody else differs on that. To me, this doesn't look very purple at all. It is a cool color nonetheless. That looks like black. This is not the black cocktail that I had planned for this evening. The black cocktail he had planned for this evening was the black Manhattan, but this looks really dark. I'll take that. I think you should just make up the black one. Well, we'll still make a black Manhattan anyway, because I really want a black Manhattan. That's dishwater. It is black dishwater. It is what it looks like when I'm cleaning out. This is like the first little bits of water that comes out of your Brita filter after you change the filter. Ew. Yeah. Black water. It's purple. It's purple at night. It is. This is our... Okay, so imagine this is purple. It's raining purple outside, but it's like it's dark outside, and like there's a little bit of moonlight, and the, the road is like shining. This is purple rain as viewed from a late night drive um, as you're suffering from highway hypnosis, and you look at the asphalt, and you're like... I still have two and a half hours remaining and I can't wake up the person in the, the passenger side seat or else he'll probably scream at me, but I'm the driver here, so I take that responsibility and by God, we'll get to Indianapolis. I promise. When did that happen? 
I don't know, or some other like hyper specific situation. God, that is so sweet. Remember, we added a bunch of food dyes and stuff to this. Extra sugar. That's literally sweet. This is sickeningly sweet. Anna, do you want to try this by chance? What does it have in it? Uh, vodka, lemonade, grandine, yeah, blue curacao. You might like this one. This might be this might be an Anna cocktail. It actually looks a little blue from my angle. The froth is kind of blue looking. What do you think? Anna's notes. I don't like that. That is too sweet. That is like. That is like sucking no, on candy. No, that's definitely an Anna. That's cocktail. sucking on a gusher. No, it's more of a sour. So it's like a sweet version it's of a lemon tart. sour. It is slightly tart. I will say that. It is slightly tart, but it reminds me of a gusher. It's like a knockoff version of a lemon head. Sure. I don't know it's as sour as that. But no, but it has the very it. potent, like, lemony taste. Mm -hmm. You heard it here first. Purple rain. Gusher. Lemon heady. It's sugary. A little emo depending on when you catch them. So this is supposed to be a purple cocktail, right? It's not really a purple cocktail. I'm gonna put this on a coaster. I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna do a different purple cocktail and I'm gonna make a, a clean a clean and simple one. Simple and clean is the way that you're making me feel tonight. If, if you're making me feel anything. Do I feel anything? Yeah, I feel stuff. I'm definitely feeling things. Hydrate, hydrate my friends. So instead what we're gonna do, so this was supposed to be the purple cocktail. It didn't actually work out that way. Every, you know what? We play it as, we, as it comes. Another way to do purple is we utilize butterfly pea flower infused gin. This has a wonderful purple color to it. And I think all we're going to do is we're going to do a simple gin and tonic utilizing specifically this butterfly pea flower gin. And uh, we'll just see where it goes. Rich says, what color does it look like with the blue light blocking glasses? The blue light blocking glasses. Oh, my glasses are the- Oh, yours. Oh, glasses. oh, that's true. That's like, yeah, what is it? Can I can I take a look through your yeah, rose tinted well, shades for a moment? Yeah. Technically, wow. yeah, I guess they are. What? The world's pretty okay. So these shades, oh, actually, you know what? I think it looks a little green, but here, here, chat. Let's, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Everybody can look through the rose tinted shades. A moment. Rose on. Let's see if I can make this happen. There we go. How's it looking? It still looks very dark. Still a very dark color. Actually, can you, can you, for a moment? Let's Give do this light. flashlight. Can you hold up the flashlight behind this? Watch out, everybody. You're going to get blinded a little bit. Where am I supposed to go? Oh my god, it looks yellow. Holy cow, it looks yellow. Quick, somebody type exclamation point photo. I want to keep track of this. Oh my god. This is so cool. This, this is so cool looking. They're not going to do that. Oh my god. I don't have enough hands to do it myself. <laughs> oh, this is so cool looking. That's so cool. I love that. Let's see. Got it. Sweet. I Actually, how does this look when it's off? Oh my god. Okay. It also kind of looks weird. It definitely looked cooler with the shades on. That was so cool. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. I'm going to back my concussion. Nice. That was cool. That was cool for a moment. I kind of like that. Exclamation point magic. Ah, missed opportunity for me. Gosh. Yeah, you do have secret ones. Though. I do have. There are plenty of Easter eggs around here. I remember a couple of them. That's plenty of secrets around here. All right. Quick purple gin and tonic. The only ones I remember are the food ones. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this glass over here. Actually, we'll just we'll watch the magic happen, right? We'll watch it all happen. There's no command for magic right now. However, that would be the question, right? Let's, let's make up a new command. What would, what would an exclamation point magic do? What would it do? Potato! Here's a spud bud. You got it! I love that one so much. I need tonic water to have down here. Let me grab a circular ice cube. This is what we're going to do. Now I'm just going to mix this. I'm just going to mix it. That's all we're going to do. I'm going to grab one of my ice cubes. It's not an ice cube. It's an ice sphere. This is my ice sphere. There we go. That made it. I'm going to do laundry. Okie dokie, love. Thank you. I'm gonna add a single ounce of my butterfly pea flower infused gin. And I'll add some tonic water. I think about two ounces. Actually, that has a cool blue color to it. Here, let's see what happens, right? We'll add our tonic water. There we go. Y'all knew that was gonna happen, right? Did y'all know that was gonna happen? And there's our purple cocktail, just like that. 
That's purple. That's purple indeed. So, a little bit of fun magic just happened there. As you might have caught, it was blue at first. It was very clearly blue at first. But when you take butterfly pea flower and combine it with something acidic, it's actually a pH indicator. So it transforms into a different color. That's cocktail magic. And that's one of the very few tricks that I know. So, there you go. There's our purple cocktail. A purple, a purple gin and tonic. That's all it is. Very simply done. There we go. I'll take a picture of that guy as well. That was actually a lot more bombastically pur purple than I thought it was going to be. And I'm very happy that it turned out that way. Obviously, I gotta give this thing a taste. Um, I've never actually used, I, I've never used my home infused uh, purple gin before uh, for a gin and tonic. So I'm actually curious. Yeah, I like that. I think it's still a little too chemical tasting from this particular tonic water. Um, but I bet actually, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of simple syrup to this. I feel like that might actually do it for me. Just a, just a tad of, just make it a little bit sweeter. Give that a little stir. Let's see how to recover this from my palate. Change the color ever so slightly. Yeah. So much better now. Wow, that's good. That is really good. So, what I'm getting here is that bitter chemical bitiness of the tonic water, gone now. Completely mellowed out by the smidge of simple syrup. I'm gonna call that like quarter of an ounce, maybe like seven milliliters, or maybe like a bar spoon of that, maybe two bar spoons. And it completely, it mellows it all out. Now all there is, is that nice botanical features, like those more herby notes of the gin, very powerful on the juniper there. And it melds with what's left of the tonic water, aside from that chemical astringency. It's that other, like, I feel like tonic water also kind of tastes like a plant, but I don't know what plant that is. It's very herbal. I like that very much. It is much better than, let's see, black magic. Purple, purple, purple magic and black magic. That's what happens. When you create good magic, you must create dark magic in the other side. It's a, it's a metaphor, if you will. Rich says, this stream should totally end with a rainbow shot. Have you ever tried one? I've never tried a rainbow shot before. I will say, I'd love to give it a try. However, I don't know if we have all the ingredients for that. Layered shots are a very interesting combination of physics and splendor. And if we can actually create a shot with all the colors on top of it, that'd be very impressive. I will say, if you happen to have a recipe for it or a set of ingredients, feel free to drop it down. I'll try, to, uh, try it at the end. But alas, so as not keep you here too long. Oh, actually, we have it already. Let's see. Grenadine, sweet and sour mix, orange juice, vodka, and blue curacao. I'm hoping that it goes in that order. A rainbow cake drink. Dude, I love rainbow cake. Freaking love the way that tastes. Let me take a quick repast as I write that down. Let's see. We have grenadine, grenadine, sweet and sour. We're probably going to use some lemon juice and lime juice and simple syrup. OJ, vodka, and we have... B Curacao, B Caracao. If somebody can hold me accountable for that, we'll try it at the end. Don't let me, don't let me forget. Uh, yeah, but Jeff's saying the rainbow cake trick, dude. Rainbow, rainbow cookies are like my favorite cookie. I freaking love those things. One of our anniversaries, Anna and I went out to this area. I think in like uh, Lower New York, where we had this place sells like rainbow cookie donuts. They were so good. Actually, I'm going to put you over here because you're a tiny little drink. Look at this pretty array that we have so far. This is great. I mean, it probably doesn't look that nicely over here, but we've gone through a number of drinks so far. Let's see. We're at the bottom of the rainbow flag, and we now need to go into the other colors of things. The colors that remain this evening, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drinks. There are three, three drinks remaining? No, 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 no. We had an extra one. There are four drinks remaining. Four drinks remaining there. So we have the color black the color white, the color brown, and the color pink. And as we're kind of still in that realm of potent colors and stuff, the next color that I wanna cover is the color pink with an original cocktail by yours truly. So we'll pop into that in just a moment. I see that Rich just had a whole big slew of text there. So let me do this a little racy thing over here. I'll turn myself around and see, see what this is all about. What 
we got to go over here? Rainbow shots. One ounce of grenadine. All right, I'm going to take notes on this one. One ounce of grenadine. One ounce. A single ounce. We have three ounces of sweet and sour. Three ounces. We have one ounce of OJ. One ounce. We have three, oh, two ounces of vodka. Two ounces of vodka. And three quarters of an ounce of blue curacao. How do we prepare it? Oh, it gets even more complicated. I'm guessing, okay, in a shaking tin, pour in grenadine, gently add ice so as to not splash the grenadine. Using a spoon, slowly layer on sweet and sour mix. Orange juice, vodka, respectfully. So it's first layer is grenadine. Makes sense. Next layer is sweet and sour mix. Also makes sense. Oh, then the OJ, then the vodka. That also makes sense because the vodka can be up on top. Pour in blue curacao. The blue curacao will sink right away. So be ready to pour. Carefully strain the mix into your shot glasses. Into your shot glasses. Interesting. That, interesting. I wonder how that's going to execute. Because I'm thinking like, I because it says that we have to pour everything into a shaking tin, right? But it says to pour in gently. Gently add ice was not special than three. Using a spoon, slowly layer on the sour mix, orange juice and vodka respectfully. Pour in blue curacao will sink to the bottom. Be ready to pour. Carefully strain to a shot glass. I'm gonna follow the instructions exactly as they say. If I remember. So we're gonna try I'm gonna try with that. Actually, what I'm gonna do is to make sure I don't forget that, I'm just gonna copy and paste that over into another tab real quick. Let's pop up a little pop up a little note tab. There we go. I've got it. I don't even know where I write it down. I have the beauty of technology right before us. Multiple shot glasses. Oh! In a Oh! Oh, that makes so much more sense. You'll need you'll need seven shot glasses. I've got plenty of shot glasses. That's such a good idea. Y'all are so smart out there. Significantly smarter than I can than I would contain myself to be. Oh, duh. Oh, pfft, duh. I saw it into the shaker tin and I was like, you're not gonna be able to make a layered cocktail inside of a shaker tin. It's opaque. You won't even be able to see the layer. Dummy. Anyway, the color pink, ladies, gentlemen, and those in between. The cocktail that I have for you this evening is one of the other day. We went to a farmer's market and we found a, uh, we found a, um, what was it? Found a rhubarb. So we took some rhubarb and I went into one of my cocktail books, specifically this book called Wild Drinks and Cocktails. And there was a recipe in there for rhubarb and rue syrup. And it tasted amazing. It's so, so great. And so I figured we'd kind of put a little cocktail together with it and uh, I will share it with you all now. It is called the Pink Amilico. Oh, and I didn't write it in pink. I'm so dumb. Where the pink color at? There's the pink color at. Pink. Amelico. Um, there we go. Oop, I gotta put these over here. I'm running out of space and whatnot. It changes color as it comes out, says Rich. So each shot glass will have a different color. Oh. So you layer it in the... Okay, so let me get this straight. We layer it in the tin... And then we strain it out into the shot glasses all in a row. Is that what I have? Is that if I'm saying that correctly, then I think I got it now. That seems like it'll be difficult to pull up, but I will most certainly give it a try. I don't think I'm pro bartender enough for it, but a little bit of confidence goes a long way. I'll grab this recipe over here. Yep, confirmed. I love it. So our pink amilico is going to be stirred and then strained into a glass. The first thing that we're going to add is we're going to add some London dry gin to our serving apparatus. This one's still a little wet from when we used it earlier. So let me grab myself a big old cube. Big old cube. Tig, tig, old, no, not tig, old, uh, tig, old, no. Big old cubes. Kig? I don't like that word. That's weird. Oh well. Add a big cube, and we will add to it a couple of the following ingredients. The first thing that we'll add is some London Dry Gin. I happen to have this beef aider over here, and it works just fine. We'll add a single ounce, about 30 milliliters, of a London Dry Gin. There we go. Next, what we're going to add is half an ounce of rhubarb and a rose syrup. I happen to have over here. This is a really awesome color to it. Like, I will I will show you all as it is juxtaposed to the lights. So we're gonna get a little different view than we normally do. Let's see, try to get the light in here. We can see 
That's my apartment. Check that out. Oh my god. This is the color that we have here. It is such a beautiful color. And it is all from the rhubarb. It is really, really cool looking. And it tastes really floral, and it's got a wonderful sweetness to it. And it's a nice, it's, it's, it's floral, right? So, if anybody's interested in that, I will put the recipe over in the Discord or something. It was, it's super duper cool. And I loved making it too. And what actually, what you can do afterwards is you'll have this massive like rhubarb and rose and stuff. And you can just like put it in your oven and you can eat it like fruit leather if you're into that stuff. Um, it's all right. I'm trying my best here. So I'll take half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of our rose and rhubarb syrup and add it to our, our shaker thing here. I wonder if anybody is familiar with like other syrups and stuff. Like, specifically stuff that you can get at a cocktail store. I don't know where you can buy... I know you can buy rhubarb bitters, but I don't know where you can find, like, rhubarb and or rose syrups and stuff. You could probably get rhubarb bitters and add it with a little bit of rose water, and you'll get something close, but not sugary enough. Um, but there are many different ways to play. There are many different ways to mix, and that's the beauty of mixology. The next ingredient we'll add is half an ounce of honey syrup. Um, I found personally that the rhubarb rose syrup itself had a bit of a quality to it that kind of reminded me of honey. So I added a bit more honey to even things out a little bit. I see Rich saying, yeah, please post that recipe. Sounds awesome. Note to self, join Discord. I got you. I got you. In case y'all need it, that's the place to go. We got you around here. I will say, being that the topic comes up, there are plenty of things to find in the Discord, aside from the community that we call ourselves. Every single cocktail that you see here will be recollected in a cocktail blog that exists in one of our channels over there. Uh, I'll give like, the I'll put the pictures there, I'll put all the recipes there, I'll put some other unadulterated thoughts and stuff there. Technically speaking, you don't have to sit through the probably four hours long stream. You can just go there and you'll get all the cliff notes. The cliff notes exist in the Discord. If you literally can't sit around for a live stream this long, I understand. I got you. I thought of that. I'm just as smart as I thought I wasn't before, but just like a little bit extra. I got you. So after we add our honey syrup, we're gonna add a little bit of strawberry gin there. Strawberry gin. I bought this randomly at the store like a while ago. It's Snoop Dogg's strawberry gin called Indigo. <laughs> and I was like, I have to buy this because actually I bought it first and then I found out that it was like Snoop Dogg's gin. Um, it smells like strawberry. It tastes like strawberry. And apparently strawberry rhubarb is a thing. When I tried to look up things to mix with strawberry rose, I could not not find strawberry along with it. So it just felt like the obvious choice to add a little bit of it. This is really strongly strawberry flavored. So we're only going to add a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters. You don't need that much of it. It is, it is plenty fragrant all on its own. So we'll pop that on there. Thanks, Snoop Dogg. Appreciate it, dude. All right. So after we've added everything together, we're just going to give this a stir and we are going to strain it into a glass. We'll strain it over... I don't really know whether or not this needs to be strained over ice or not. I'm just going to put it into a coupe glass and we'll see if the proportions work out properly. I don't really think it needs any more ice. I don't think this needs any more dilution or chilling than it already is going to get here by shaking it. So if there's a certain number of times that you like to, to stir, you can do that. We earlier we stirred 40 times. I just kind of stir until I feel like we're done. The side of this glass has just begun to get a little bit chilly. So I think that'll be just fine. And what I'll do is I'll grab myself a little coupe glass. We'll go with one of these guys. I like this. I like these ones. Over here. Pop over here. We'll swap to the cocktail angle in just a moment. Bring you down here and put you over here. That was all right. There we go. Put you a little bit higher up. A little bit farther down so we can see what's going on up on top. There we go. And we will strain this over top. Now, if you had like rose petals and stuff, or if you had like like a, an edible flower, you probably you could probably put that right up on top. Um, I actually used all of the rose petals that I had for to make this syrup. Um, and I have yet to be able to find a place to reliably and safely source edible flowers. So I don't got anything else for you. So that's all we got for this one. Uh, but if you have access to edible flowers and stuff, or like roses and stuff, I would recommend garnishing with that. I realized that apparently we're kind of under 
we're under volume for this one so the ratio the, the total amount of drink probably has to be adjusted just a little bit if you want to fill up a coupe glass or if you add like a little bit of ice in there or like how much of the other stuff uh, might work out a little bit better but this is our pink amilico the cocktail that uses that strawberry rhubarb syrup that i made the other day uh, i will try not to forget to post that i'll do my best this sounds and looks great yeah it's pink i'll take that it's a nice pink color when i made this i didn't expect it to come out pink and i was like oh perfect that's a, a cocktail that i'll use this week works out pretty well I took a sip of it already, and I kind of spoiled it for myself. But this smells very, it smells, it smells very strongly of the strawberry. The indigo gin is very, very prevalent. It is like it has a very, very strong odor to it, so it smells very much like a combination of rose, like those kind of sort of like floral notes, and a little bit of strawberry. But like, there's plenty of booze in it, so it also just kind of smells like gin. I think if I had to pick a spirit. I would know that this is gin just by smelling it, just because of those, I guess those more junipery notes, those more botanical notes, I can smell off the nose. And the way that it tastes, it is delightfully floral. I love the level of sweetness in this cocktail. I like the way that I can taste the rose. I can taste the honey. I can taste the strawberry, but I can also taste the rhubarb. The rhubarb was interesting because I took a bite of this thing and it had a tanginess. I, I didn't really know what rhubarb tasted like. So I took a bit of it and I just took a big old bite out of it. And I was surprised to, to find that it was sour. It was almost as sour as like a, a citrus fruit, despite the fact that it wasn't quite citrus. It was almost like you had combined a cranberry like that type of tartness with celery. It was almost like you imbued a celery with cranberry and that was the kind of like tartness that I was getting from it. That is also prevalent here. I would almost think that there was some sort of citrus in this because of just like the slight tartness that is there. Like maybe like quarter of an ounce of like lime juice or something else, maybe even a grapefruit. It tastes really good. I like it. It's certainly more on the sweeter side. It's probably not as balanced as it goes for other like more desire, like more like classic cocktail combinations. But for the purposes that it serves, I think it tastes pretty good. And it gives us an excuse to make some uh, rhubarb and rose syrup, which uh, I now have an entire bottle of. So if anybody has ideas on what else to use that for, I go for it. Sardonic says, I've had a rhubarb pie. Never liked it. I had a rhubarb, it was a rhubarb tart. I think it was a, a rhubarb scone at one of the restaurants over in Center City over there. And I was surprised at how sour it was. I didn't realize that like rhubarb itself was very, very sour. And then when I made the syrup and I took the bite, it was like, oh, this is sour. So evidently it's like, it's, it, it occupies the same space in my mind as like lemon meringue, I guess. Although not quite as much because meringue, I, I love the texture of meringue. Although I'm not a huge fan of lemon, but you know, the different, different, there are different niches in the flavor palette for different purposes. This satisfies that tart sweet. It's almost pop tarty. I don't know why, but I just like randomly thought of pop tarts and I can imagine this being a pop tart flavor. I like that. It also tastes like gin. It, the the gin, gin in this, if you were to switch it out with a tequila, it would probably taste pretty good too. But this I think goes really well with gin. I just like gin cocktails. So I went with that one. So pink is out of the way. I'll move this over here with the rest of our cocktails. A variety of coasters and stuff that keep these cocktails well. So we are getting to a point where we are almost, I mean, we've got about three cocktails remaining, I think. We still have the color white, we still have the color black, technically, and we also have the color brown, and we will get to all of those, I promise you that. And technically a rainbow shot, if we can manage to pull that off over here. So far, we have covered all the other cocktail color, the, all the other colors that appear on the Pride Progress flag. June is Pride Month. I'm a prideful individual, a lot of people out there are, and this is something that I think that we should celebrate and end with a big old rainbow celebration. Technically, the VOD doesn't come out till after June, but to the people who are here today, welcome to our celebration. The colors that we've covered so far is the color red, the Angostura Sour, the color orange, the Mimosa, the color yellow, the Yellow Jacket, the color green, the Japanese Gin and Tonic, the color blue, the Blue Hawaiian, the color indigo or light blue, the Holy Water Cocktail, the color violet or purple the purple rain aka purple magic aka black magic and uh just a and a purple gin and tonic uh and we also just did pink for the cocktail called the pink amilico and so we still have three more colors left to uh left to go and uh, we'll get through them we're about we're not quite at the um uh, we're not quite at the three hour mark here. we're uh, from what i'm seeing here with all the intro and stuff we're about two hours and 50 minutes in so evidently this marathon is going 
Keeps trying to get, keeps trying to get a nice pick. Oh my goodness, y'all are trying out there. Uh, we have folks in the audience who are using the photo command to be able to take a picture of what's happening over here. Isn't it great? Oh, as you'll know, as you watch like shows and stuff, like those in action photos are rarely ever good. Uh, it's fun, I like it. Anyways, I'll smile for this one. There we go, we're moving on. So the next cocktail color we're gonna cover, I don't really know exactly what order to do these last cover colors in. Actually, I'm just gonna look up the picture of the, Ooh, did I take a picture of the Pink and Milico? I did, sweet. I'm gonna look up the Pride Progress flag because I don't remember what other what color orders remain. It goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, brown, light blue, pink, white. So I guess the other ones remaining, black, brown, and white. Black, brown, and white. We'll do it in that order, black, brown, and white. I'm happy with that last one. You are people in the audience now. Everyone's people in the audience. Technically speaking, I, I, I will, I'm a part of the audience sometimes. People in the audience, people in the chat, this is an audience. This is a performance, y'all. This, this isn't just chat. This isn't just Twitch. This is a whole show happening here. It's like the audience. It's the li This is the live Twitch studio audience, technically, as opposed to, you know, in the way that this is the studio and we are all merely extensions of the studio. Dizzy says, yeah, I switched from live audience to online downstairs to behind the bar. And is a very multi-versatile person. And it's great. So the next color, let's see, the next color that we're going into now is the color black. And the color of the black that I had imagined was not this black magic cocktail that you see here. This was just taking a bunch of different colors and combining them together for something that apparently appears kind of yellow under rose-tinted shades. We're gonna do a real cocktail. <laughs> a real cocktail, I say. A real black cocktail in the sense that it has black in the name. A cocktail that I've had in a couple of different forms before and want to explore more of. This cocktail is called the Black Manhattan. And I'm not gonna be able to write on the board in black, so I'm gonna write this one in white. Now, a black man, this is not the first time that a black Manhattan has actually made its appearance on stream before. The last, I think the first time I tried one was actually over at a bar uh, close to me where I had, their, I had their black Manhattan. I thought it was really, really cool. I thought it was okay. I didn't exactly know what goes into it. Usually it uses a Verna Amaro, um, a dark looking um, spirit. I don't exactly know much history about a Verna Amaro. I know more about Chinar or Chinar because it's got an artichoke on it. Not this one, unfortunately. Um, and then we made one, I think, during the bitter stream where we were using one of our uh, charred current, it was charred current and oak bitters in a black Manhattan, which again, also called for a, a Maro Averna, which I don't actually have access to, so we use something different. I'm going to utilize this recipe, subbing out Averna Amaro for this other Amaro that I have from the local area called Vigo Amaro, which is very, very earthy. It's very, very leafy, and it kind of tastes like eating bark off of a tree. I just kind of want to see how it goes. So we'll see how it goes. Jeff says, hold up the applause sign for the audience to know when to clap for you. Um, Apple Oz. Y'all can clap. You can clap whenever you want to. Nobody is stopping you from putting emotes and stuff in chat. Actually, I encourage it. Clap all you want to. Never stop clapping. And with that unrealistic expectation out of the way, let me introduce to you all the Black Manhattan. The Black Manhattan is all combined together in a stirring glass and then strained out into a chilled coupe glass. There is at least another one in the freezer waiting for this one. What we're going to combine together is usually rye whiskey, Averna Amaro, Angostura bitters, and some orange bitters. I don't have any Averna. I called the liquor store today and I was like, do you guys have it? And they said no. So... I was not able to find it. Um, I do plan to be play taking some cross-country journeys within the past, uh, within the next month or so. So maybe somewhere along the way, <clears throat> Jersey, I'll be able to find a Verna Amara somewhere to be able to bring back. I've also been trying to find Amara Montenegro, but every single time I see Amara Montenegro in the store, I'm like, mm, I don't need it yet. I don't need it yet. And then it pops up in another cocktail restaurant. And I'm like, well, damn, I missed it again. Um, also, apparently everybody's buying that shit out. So everybody wants it. Uh, people know how to use it in cocktails, or at least the local bars and stuff do, so I'm not, I'm not entirely surprised. So our black man hat in this case, instead of using Averna, is going to use Vigo, and we're just going to go with it. We're going to see if it makes things good. Um, I'm hoping that it does. I'll grab this stirring apparatus, which is actually, a little, it's a, it could use a little bit more of a rinse out, so let me do a fresh rinse for this guy. Because it's had a couple of interesting sweet things in here so far, that's going to affect our cocktail just ever in the slightest. If I had more stirring glasses... I'd use those. 
but uh, I think I have two stirring glasses. I have four shakers total, and that's more than the one stirring glass. Actually, I've always had two stirring glasses, but it's more than the two shakers that I had previously. The bar with an X is slowly but surely growing. But alas, in our stirring apparatus, we are going to add a large ice cube. Put that on the ground, because that ice cube is gone. Oh, I need to close my freezer, or else it will not do the freezy things. It'll do the melty things. We're gonna add two ounces of our rye whiskey. I have this Rittenhouse bottled in bond. However, I need to do some more experimentations with Manhattans that do the cooking by the book. So I'm not gonna use this Rittenhouse bottled in bond for this particular version of the Black Manhattan because I'm doing a little bit of a change. Um, I think it's far enough away from the intent of it that I want to keep this for a little bit more personal research. I could also go to the store and buy more Rittenhouse. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. Um, but um, Mixologist has his reason this time around. And I'm, I'm going to stand by that. So we're going to take any sort of rye whiskey you have. This old grand over Dick Grit. Whoa. This old granddad over here is a Kentucky, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Um, and it is high. It has a high rye mash bill, which I believe means it has at least... 51% rye in it, and I did have a post-it note around here somewhere saying exactly what this mash bill was, but um, I don't have that anymore because it got lost, because the bar gets wet, and post-it notes and paper in general do not stand up to wet stuff very well. So we're going to add two full ounces, or about 59 milliliters, of your rye-type whiskey into your stirring apparatus. Rich says, I prefer the Amaro Nonino, but it does seem like there are more recipes out there from Montenegro. It's actually interesting you say that, Rich, because I was buying stuff. I, I didn't, I've only ever done one online liquor order, and a part of that liquor order was me determining whether I want to buy Amaro Montenegro or Amaro Nonino. And I had seen more cocktails from Montenegro out there, so I was like, I'm going to get Nonino. So I have Nonino down here because I want to find more Nonino recipes. And for the life of me, I can't find any good Nonino cocktails that aren't just variations on the paper plane. So I'm like, I'm a little, like, a piece of me is a little disappointed, but a piece of me also acknowledges that it is probably a really cool, like, little niche opportunity that when we have the chance to go through, I want to do an entire stream dedicated to Amaro Nonino one day, because I know that there are cocktails on about that. And if anybody has suggestions, feel free to use exclamation points suggest for cocktails that use a Mara Nonino. That will go, actually what that does, it'll go straight to the Discord, to my Discord, so that I have a record of when people request it, so that I can put it into my cocktail blog later. It's, a, it's specifically built with the people in mind. And with the people in mind, we continue, because it's getting late, folks. One ounce of your Amara of choice. You would usually go for an Averna here, which I don't have any tasting notes on because I've never actually had it before, if not in a black Manhattan that's already been made for me. So I'm going to go with this Vigo Amaro, which I believe has notes of trees, leaf, and like not quite forest floor like peat, like, like you would for like a scotch whiskey, but like something a little more, quite literally, dirty. Like it kind of tastes like dirt in the most botanical ways possible. I promise you that. Um, although I tasted this a while ago, so. Smells really good. This smells absolutely amazing. That rye whiskey, the, the old, old granddad smells so good here. So next what we're gonna add is a single dash of Angostura bitters and a single dash of orange bitters. We have both versions in Angostura form, so I think it's only right to uncap the both of these, do a little double tap, double dash, Mario Kart double dash, and I did two dashes for both because I like my bitters. I like my bitters how I like my men. Dashing. That was authentic. I made that one up right on the spot and I'm actually quite pleased with that. I'll take it. We appreciate puns around here. Drop your favorite puns in chat. Mine's the Mockingbird. It's a tequila drink. Tequila Mockingbird. I see, my fingers are really wet. I can't snap very well. Anyways, so we add everything together. We put it into a mixing glass and we stir until it's well chilled. And we put it into a coupe glass and garnish it with a brandied cherry. I will get my cherry prepared. And um, yeah, and then we'll stir it. And I'll get my chilled cocktail, cocktail coupe too. I'll grab that after I'm done stirring it um, so that we have the maximum chillage on our actual glass here. Oh. So this is the part where we stir. What we're doing is we're trying to control our dilution here. If I had a thermometer, we could do this a lot more scientifically, but yeah. 
I'll admit, when my fingers are this sticky, I have problems stirring things. This is, this is going here. I see Meow Meow pop in and say, that was great, LOL, dashing, right? I know, right? He says, totally patting himself on the back way too much. I've got a little bit of an ego, if you couldn't tell. And then Jeff says, don't leave your cherries with these drinks, people. This would not be the thing that I lose my cherry to. The thing that I lost my cherry to, in terms of a cocktail thing, was, uh, I think it was, I don't remember what IPA it was, but it was at my fraternity house. And I liked it, wow, that tastes good. We'll get to that in a second. I was not expecting that, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. No spoilers, no spoilers. Let me get a chilled coupe glass first. I had at least one. Um, I hope this is enough. Quick, somebody switch the cocktail angle. Oh, I got you, I got you. It's all the way over there, but now it's all the way over here. Hello, everybody. We are chilled glass. I'm gonna change this up a little bit. There we go. It's a little cockeyed, but that's okay. Some of us are. There we go. And we will strain this and garnish with a cherry. This is our black Manhattan, which I'm gonna be honest, looks a little brown. But for the purposes of this, it's shocking. This is this is more black than the black Manhattan is. It's fine. Color theory, as we've all discussed already, is uh, is is just false. It is just false. Color theory doesn't exist. And then we will add a cherry in there. Gonna get a little bit of cherry juice in there. It's gonna fall right to the bottom as we do so. There we go. Excellent. Put that off to the side. This is our Black Manhattan. This is the second Black Manhattan that we've made on the show before. Definitely different than the one that we had previously. That looks pretty good. I'd say, like, I'm, I mean, as good as it can get. I, I'm actually really happy. Like, we were quick enough about it that we got that nice, chilled look to the glass itself. It actually does look really nice. There is just something aesthetically pleasing about a chilled glass. And I think the thing that I love about it is the contrast that you get between like what's left of the glass that doesn't have liquid in it. Like there's a, such a cool contrast between the top here, which looks very, very white, very, very light gray to the rest of this, which is very brown. It's got a nice red at the bottom as well as that kind of like clear faceted stem. I love that. I love it very much. Not only do I like the way that cocktails look, I like the way they, I was, that was supposed to be the opposite way around. Not only do I like the way that cocktails taste, I also like the way that they look. That's why the gram of the Instas is cool, as opposed to the delay gram. Instagram, Telegram, all the grams. This smells really nice. This smells like whiskey and that Amaro. I, I don't quite know how to describe it. It's chilled enough that I think the smell that I'm getting is not very prevalent. When things are cold, you tend to taste it less. When things are cold, you tend to smell it less. So there's not too much of a smell coming off of this. What I am getting is notes of whiskey, and that's nice. And on the sippage, that is a take your time drink. It was a very safe take your time drink. This is nice. It was a very, very nice drink. I gotta slow down for this one. This one like hit me in a really good way. There are that, those whiskey notes are so pleasant. I'm getting like hints of char. Actually, this uh, a com combined between the whiskey and the amaro. There are notes of char. There is notes of woodiness. There's notes of vanilla. This It's almost chocolatey in a way. I love drinks like this. I love things that taste like chocolate, even vaguely. Things that taste like cocoa and coffee and stuff. I'm a big coffee drinker. And this almost tastes like like cold brew that I'm really used to. I think there's a, there's a bottle of, there's a, there's a brand of cold brew, I think that came around here from um, Pennsylvania, called La Colombe. And La Colombe's cold brew, specifically the one in the yellow container, remind, has, gives me notes that are similar to this iteration of the Black Manhattan. This is wonderful. I like, I'm more of a short cocktail kind of guy. I'm also a very short person. So things that are a little more booze forward and have that sort of balanced nuance to it are things that I really, really like. That's why I really like, I think one of, that's one of the reasons that I really like a Negroni because those sort of like, like tart notes, those bitter, those, those bitter notes combine with the gin and the sweet vermouth super duper well. That's why I love a Negroni. I've been trying, when I had my first Black Manhattan, I was like, I really like this. 
I need to figure out why I like this. And it's very possible that I might have just figured out why. I think it's all those, it's all those like uh, phenolic, phenolic cocoa notes that I'm getting. It's, it's almost like a really good, like, chocolate bar without all the sweetness. I'm talking like 80 plus percent cocoa there. This is delightful. Not to mention, if you were to use, let's say, like a rye whiskey here, a specific rye whiskey, I use a high rye mash bill, but that spiciness, I think that's probably one of the contributing factors of those cocoa notes that I'm getting, that sort of char almost. Burnt things taste good to me. I like them. I like it when the bacon's a little bit too burnt. And honestly, this is reminding me in the best of ways of a little bit of like Sunday morning burnt bacon. And I love it. It's so good. And it's got just enough sweetness to keep everything uplifted. That is good. I like that. Although technically not, it's a, it's a black Manhattan, right? Because it just looks darker. Um, actually, I don't really know what the color of Averna would be. Because I've never, you know, I think when I had the black Manhattan, which I assume had Averna in it, I was in a restaurant. It was very, very dimly lit. So I don't know if it was actually a dark black color. But this one came out an interesting brown. And I like it. I like that very much. Two more cocktails. Two more colors. Two more color-coded cocktails left. We'll move on. We're getting far with this. This is fun. I like this. I was a little intimidated by what this night might become um, because there were a lot of cocktails on the list. And honestly, this was a bit of a this was a bit of a test. The test to be whether or not we can even get through this amount of cocktails in a night. And so far, with the help of everybody, I did not do this alone. We've done it so far. I'll put you in the back because you're pretty you're pretty tall. You're a pretty tall, dude. Pretty tall dude. We have cocktails. Plenty of cocktails so far. Moving on from the black Manhattan, the color black and the pride flag, we are move, going to move on to the color, I think brown was next. And although technically this is a brown looking cocktail, there is a brown cocktail that I wanted to try. Excuse me, get a little gassy. Don't forget to hydrate, folks. I've been taking very, very small sip of these and I had a really, really large dinner, so. I'm doing okay. And I hate this container because it does not let me drink the way that I want to. There we go. I'm like, I'm like a water gulper. Sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and like, I know my body just needs hydration. And so I just basically pour myself a whole glass of water. I chug the thing. Not, be, not because I'm trying to get it down fast. It's just because like when I'm thirsty, that's the way that I drink water, which I know is not the healthy way to do it. But, you know, I'm a man who's aware of his shortcomings. That was good. So next color is the brown, right? Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna grab a little brown, brown color over here. This next cocktail is one that I've always kind of wanted to try, uh, but never came around to. This one's called the Brown Derby. It uses bourbon and grapefruit juice, which I don't normally have, but we do have this evening. A Brown Derby. Oh, that is a wonderful looking brown color. Nice. A derby that is brown. What is the brown derby, right? Where does it come from? The classic brown der 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 I got it. Brown, brown derby cocktail apparently features bourbon, grapefruit, and honey syrup. The trio of simple ingredients, the complex taste of a drink in which honey bridges the gap between tart, citrus, and spicy bourbon. It was apparently in a 2002 book called The Crafts of the Cocktail by bartender Dale DeGroff. It comes from Dale DeGroff. He's a familiar uh, name in the cocktail world. Do I know too much about him? No. Do I know him personally? Absolutely not. Am I aware of his existence? Yes. Yes, I am. Very vaguely. I see Jeff saying, Blue on Blurby. It's the blue, it's the blown blue, it's the blown Blurby. That's what it is. I'm losing my cherries a little bit over here. Oh my goodness. Shit happens when you're drinking, you know? After, ugh, after like 10 drinks or so, you'd think a guy would be getting like off his rocker over here. I've been off my rocker for 25 years now, so this is nothing new. So our brown derby is going to be put into a shaker with ice. It's a shaken drink. We'll see how that goes. We'll take our cocktail. Oh my god, I'm making a mess over here. Cocktail shaker. I caught it. That was pretty cool. Um, we're gonna add things appropriately. I'm gonna take some ice. I'm gonna put it into my uh, large side of my shaker. Let me grab that real quick over here. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. You can't see me doing it, but I just added one large cube and two little cubes to this side of the glass. And I'll put that off to the side. 
We'll also add, now to the other side of the glass, the one that I don't have the ice in, this is probably just like a matter of technique, but also a matter of preference. I don't personally think that there's a wrong or right, right way to mix cocktails. Some people will tell you there is. Why? I don't understand. Unless you're like getting paid for it, I guess, but it's all opinions. Everybody's got opinions and they all stink. Just like buttholes. Not my joke. I don't really like the joke, but I said it anyways. Um, you just do whatever you do. I do this because if I'm trying to do dilution properly, then we're, this ice is going to come down to temperature. It's going to let off a little bit of water. I'm going to pour off that water so that it doesn't mix with the other stuff in the other side of the shaker tin. That's just the way that I rationalize it for myself you will probably have a different version, and that is totally okay. But in the other side of the glass, if you do it in my way, we're gonna add one and a half ounces of bourbon. And I have a couple of different types of bourbon here, honestly, and I think the one that I wanna go for is this, this bottle of bourbon that I picked up while I was visiting my brother in Vermont. This is Maple Smuggler's Notch Distillery, straight bourbon whiskey infused with 100% pure Vermont maple syrup. I tasted this on its own and it really wasn't that maple syrupy to me, but I wanna use it in this particular cocktail because I think those honey syrup notes and that grapefruit notes are gonna bring out uh, a, like a certain facet of this particular bourbon spirit that I wouldn't have experienced kind of on its own. I'm also not the best at sipping whiskey. It is a skill that I am still attempting to uh, nurture in my life. Um, we're gonna use it anyway because I've been meaning to, uh, to find an excuse to use this because it's one of those local things. Actually, I did mention before that I'll probably be making my way around like the more eastern parts of the country in the coming weeks or so. I am definitely, within the next couple weeks or so, going to pass through um, the east coast down to about North Carolina area. Uh, I'm also going to be going up from kind of Georgia up to Indianapolis over in Indiana. So I'm gonna be passing through, I know like Tennessee and Kentucky, Virginia, other states along the way i'll be passing back through like ohio and stuff and i want to try to find local spirits in all of those different states and uh, i'll try to like put a little journey notes and whatnot on the discord or probably tweet about it or something so that everybody can come along for the journey so if there are any if there is anybody who's out there who feels like just being visited by yours truly i love to meet new people and i think it's fun that we get to destroy experiences together i'm not a creep i promise i'm just as much as a creep that you see here over there, if not a little more introverted in real life because anxiety is a thing. In any case, we'll add an ounce and a half of our bourbon to our cocktail shaker over here. And this is the one that's supposedly maple syrup infused. So how that's gonna taste in this brown derby, I am so looking forward to trying out. Those are safe pride streets. Hell yeah, they are. Good thing I'm not making my way all the way down to Florida. Uh, Anna says, chuckling on the side. She's been keeping track of all that Disney stuff and whatnot. Oh my God. Also, her grandparents live down there. Drama for another time. Next, what we're going to add is a single ounce of grapefruit juice. I have big old grapefruit and uh, I can juice it somehow. My, uh, my little orange juicy thing is not big enough for grapefruit. So how are we gonna do this? Ugly, it's gonna be very ugly. I'm gonna try my best on it. So how are we gonna juice this grapefruit? Um, I'm gonna turn my measure majigger over. I need a full ounce of this grapefruit juice. There is definitely more than just an ounce of ju grapefruit juice in here. So I'm gonna try my damnedest to squeeze the grapefruit into the measure and majigger and hope to get an ounce out of it. I'm gonna try to do it very carefully. It's actually working just fine. Don't get any funny ideas about the grapefruit. Or do get funny ideas and share them. I don't care. I mean, I guess I do kind of care. I don't really know. So yeah, that's a full, that's a, that's a full, that, that's a heaping ounce of grapefruit juice. And there's a single seed in there, so I'll give it one more pump for good luck. There we go. One more pump of the grapefruit for good luck. Oh my god. I'm gonna put you in the whatever container I was using for the lemons. There we go. The, there you go. That one's on top of the Lewis bag. It's not on the floor. I'm not just placing citrus on the floor, I guarantee that there's at least two towels back here. Oh, this smells so interesting. Hmm. Well, we still need to add a half an ounce of honey syrup, so let's go for it. Yummy, 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 I've got honey. That's it, that's all I got. Half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of honey syrup. This honey syrup was made, and we've been using it a couple times, but it's been was made using a one-to-one -one ratio of 
honey and water. And that was it. We just made the honey just easier to pour. It's great. It's wonderful. It's cocktails and mixology and a bunch of other things that are subtly nuanced throughout this stream. Like this. So that's everything. We just uh, put it all into a shaker. We actually shake this one. It's interesting. I, I don't usually see, at least in my limited experience, uh, cocktails that have like this number of ingredients that gets shaken. And I'm sure there are some out there that'll totally prove me wrong, but I can't recall them right now. So we'll just we'll just go with that. So we'll take the ice that's been chilling, that's been heating up, and pour out any water. There is basically none. This, these shakers are really good at that. Pour liquids into solids, give that a slap, and uh, this gets strained into a cocktail glass. I'm gonna guess it's probably going to be a coupe. It didn't specifically call for this one to be chilled. So uh, I'm not going to. And then we're gonna use a uh, grapefruit twist. This is my favorite shaker. I feel so cut like this. I don't remember what shaker this is. This is oh, bar six. Actually, this is not my favorite shaker. Huh, I mix and match this time. I'll take it. <laughs> the seed can be the garnish. If the seed winds up making its way into the drink, I'll take it. I will I will allow that. Where are my coupe glasses? Oh, these are a coupe glass I haven't used before. It's a tall one. It's not technically a coupe glass. This is this is not a coupe glass. This is not a coupe glass. It is just merely a cocktail glass that we are going to use. So, let's see. Before we pour that out, I'm going to make a grapefruit twist, right? I have a grapefruit. Or at least I have a piece of a grapefruit, the side that wasn't um, absolutely muti mutilated. And I'm gonna grab my peeler, which is over here, and I'm just gonna make a grapefruit twist. The way that I'm going to do this is uh, I'm going to peel the grapefruit, get a long peel from that, as long as I possibly can. Ah, that was okay, I'm gonna do it again. I can do better. This is also half of a grapefruit. It's a grapefruit half dome hemisphere. So uh, it's not gonna work exactly the way that I wanted it to. This one can go. Ugh. So, grapefruit peels are just ugly. I don't like them. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this to look like a rectangle, just to make it easier for me to twist around. There we go. Rectangle. Rectangle. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my metal straws, take from one over here, and I'm just merely going to wrap this grapefruit around the metal straw. Uh, the opposite direction. No, actually, I don't even know which direction was the right direction on this grapefruit peel. It's gonna wrap it around. I'm gonna pull it real tight. And uh, now it's slightly twisted. This is the way that the internet told me to do it. Didn't really work that well. That's fine. I'm gonna put that over the glass. There we go. It's, mm. You know what I'm gonna do instead? I'm gonna put a little slit in the center of it, and I'm just gonna sit it on top of the glass. And I broke it. That didn't work at all. I'm gonna go back for that piece of grapefruit that I missed from earlier. I'm gonna try again. I dropped it on top of the other grapefruit. It did not work very well. Maybe the grapefruit goes in both directions. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. I did not do that very well at all. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna cut off a smaller, a thinner point of it. Maybe it just wasn't thin enough, right? Now nah, I'm gonna twist it. Nope, it's just it's just falling apart. This 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 grapefruit does not want to twist. I'm gonna Wow, this grapefruit just wants to- this is just breaking apart! This is incredible! This grapefruit doesn't like it at all! Maybe I'll take the other grapefruit. I know I have two grapefruits. Hold on a second. This grapefruit being difficult. We'll take- take this grapefruit. This is a better grapefruit. I'm gonna try this. We're gonna watch this. Y'all are gonna see what I'm talking about over here. And uh, if it doesn't happen with this one, uh, it's because, uh, evidently, I'm just a little bit crazy. There we go. Here's our grapefruit, right? I'm gonna peel it. Big old grapefruit peel. There we go. Peel. Peel it. Peel it real good. And I try to fold this thing into itself. It just kind of like cracks. Just kind of like... Kind of breaks. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I'm going to show you exactly what I was just doing. Here we go. All the other grapefruit stuff. I'm just going to... Here. And try to make it thin. And straight. 
It doesn't have to be straight. That's not the point of the stream. And when I try to twist this thing, you just gotta be more careful with it. I think I just gotta be more careful with it. It kind of does want to fall apart, but if I hold up like this just a little bit more, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. It's it's not that twisty. It's okay. Here, cocktail angle. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put the cocktail in its place now. Ta-da! Look at that. I'm gonna put my poorly executed grapefruit twist on it. Here we go. Here we go. Other way. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I need to find people who have made brown derbies before and uh, do it better than I do. Anyway, we strain this out. <laughs> perfect. It's a perfect drink. Brown, brown derby. It's the brown. It's the brown derby. That's what it was. There we go. This is our brown derby with the probably the most poorly executed citrus twist. Um, that I have ever seen uh, by yours truly. It was me who did it. I take full responsibility for this monstrosity. It's okay. It was a valid attempt. She tried her best, and honestly, that's why we love her. All right, put that back over there. Do a little bit of cleanup over here. Put that car off to the side. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. We're good. We're fine. Put this grapefruit away. Put you over here. There we go. Let me take a picture of this guy with the fill phone. So long as the grapefruit, like, twist doesn't fall off, I think we're fine. It kind of looks like the grapefruit wedge is, like, holding its chin up. Like, I'm trying- oh, it fell. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, girl. One, one for the gram. One for the gram. One for the gram. One for the gram. Just one for the gram. One for the gram. Ooh. Ooh. One for the gram. Work it, dude! Work it, girlfriend! I don't know what your pronouns are, but they should be she, they, bomb! Queen, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that one. Rich says it looks a little blorange. She is beauty, what can I say? The brown derby. Oh, that smells delightful! She smells awesome. She looks well kept. What is her name? Derby. That is her name. And she smells like grapefruit, by the way. Ooh. Ooh. The grapefruit peel has dropped within. That is so different. So usually what I expect from something that contains a sizable amount of citrus, right? Like lemon juice or lime juice. There is going to be something overtly sour about it. I don't think this is very sour. I don't think it's very tart either. That grapefruit is combining so well with the honey syrup that all it's doing is it's actually there is something almost, there is something drying about this, but almost mentally. It's almost like citrus and mint had like a baby. And that's what this cocktail has amassed itself to be. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, actually, this is a kind of brownish color. It did kind of come in on the brown category a little bit. This tastes wonderful. This is like a very, very mellow citrus cocktail. I got, man, I got to do more with grapefruit juice. This is delicious. This is great. This is like, this is like, I'm trying to think of what this tastes like. There is a candy out there. Um, and I think they might just be called candy buttons. I think they come on wax paper. They come in a variety of different colors, but this reminds me, I haven't had them in a very long time. So this reference could be very, very rusty, but I think it reminds me of the sugary taste that I get from candy buttons. I don't know if they come in flavors and stuff. Dots? Maybe they're called dots? I don't really know. I don't usually eat a lot of candy, especially not in this day and age. But like, this is like, this is almost like powdered sugar, maybe? I don't know. I'm getting like powdered sugar notes from this. This is delightful. Maybe it's possible that some of this angle is coming from that maple infused um, bourbon, which if that is the case, then this is awesome. 
and I'm glad that we made this combination here. It has this interesting, like the thing that distinguishes grapefruit for me, uh, cause I've tried to make like, I've tried to make uh, citrus preserves before with lemon rind, with lime rind and with grapefruit lime, rind. And the grapefruit rind tastes terrible as preserves cause it's way, way too bitter. And it dries out your mouth considerably, but this is actually working to the cocktail's advantage here because of the way that it combines with, let's see, if it's the bourbon whiskey, there was like notes of, I, I could say that this is... No, I, I wouldn't even say... I was going to say there are notes of vanilla, but I'd just be playing to the crowd there. No, I don't really get any vanilla notes here. This is almost like... Oh, I'm trying to describe this. It feels very breezy, if that makes sense at all. It is very airy. This is almost briny in a way without the salty umami taste to it. This is like crisp, cool air. Like like in the like in the forest this feels like crisp air and it's sweet and i like it i like that i've never had a brown derby before wow that is really cool i'm gonna add that to my favorites because i think i really want to go back and try that again wow i usually steer away from things that are really heavy on the citrus because i usually don't like them this is wonderful i love this so much it's almost like drinking juice that's good Damn, I love that. I love that brown derby. That's good. She is poise. She is perfect. They are all perfect. Perfect queens. All right, there is one more, right? There's one more, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus the extra one, eleven. There's one more. The next one is white. That's the last color. The last color of the unit is white. That's the one. And then I am still remembering to. Uh, do that, or at least try my hand at that rainbow shop thing. I have plenty of shot glasses. We might as well do that. So that's what we're going to do. What is the next color? Here we go. And the cocktail that we're making for whites is going to be called, or it's called, the White Lady. I'm dating a white lady. And I, I assure you that I do not sip her the way that I sip cocktails. Let, let alone if sip is even the proper verb to describe we're going to withdraw that for the record, too. I can feel Anna staring daggers at me right now because she's still studying on the couch. So the last cocktail that I have, the last planned cocktail that we have for the evening is a cocktail called the White Lady. A White Lady is a, apparently another Cointreau cocktail. I found it on their website where you combine some Cointreau and egg white lemon juice and specifically the botanist gin. Specifically the botanist gin? Spe specific. I didn't notice that at all. I have the botanist gin. Oh my god. Wow, that's so cool. All right, well, this one's called the white lady. And the white lady prefers botanists. A white lady, white lady cocktail. This is cool. What a fun little coincidence. Shipply, specifically the botanist gin. That's so interesting. I actually ripped this cocktail recipe from the Quantro website itself. Quantro, you know, it's it's this one. It goes in Cosmopolitans and stuff. It's pretty good. I like this stuff. I tried this for the first time last week, and I'm a big, big, big fan of it. I've been a big, 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 a big fan, big fan of Quantro. It's got it's it tastes to me like orange juice and vanilla. And I like that very much, as opposed to most other orange liqueurs kind of being like orange zesty or like orange peel or like orange oil. This is not that. It is something different entirely. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine everything together. This is a shaken cocktail. Then we're going to add ice and shake until a little chilled and strain into a chilled coupe or cocktail glass. That's why I have the other chilled coupe. However, I know that it's too big for this cocktail. So instead, I'm going to grab this other coupe glass. I'm going to put it in the freezer and uh, it should be chilled by the time that I uh, talk through this monologue of mine as i continue to do on these shows pretty much all the time if you're into long-winded monologues and also mixology this is the place to be <laughs> go ahead and drop a follow but you didn't but you didn't hear it from me you heard it from the other guy get a little bit of water in my body okay so what i'm gonna need is a cocktail shaker i'm gonna reuse because i think we're gonna need to use um another one for the next one so i'm gonna take i'm gonna clean this one out uh, i'm gonna clean this guy out a little bit and then i'm gonna use this in, and then we'll move on i need to move the bucket over here for a little bit so i can clean up this spring of mine i need more strainers 
Need more Hawthorne streamers. Definitely got to get more of those guys. Jeff says, use Florida, Louisiana, and West Virginia. You got it, Jeff. I'll be doing that. I don't know why I had a southern accent there. It's fine. Let's chill. Put all that stuff in there. That's a dirty shaker. That's a dirty side of a shaker. And where's the other part of it? Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. I already threw you inside. I threw you before I even had a chance. All right, let's put these guys together. This will be the shaker that we use this time around. Put everything back together. I gotta get more of these ones. I really, really like this strainer. This Hawthorne strainer is very good to me. Very, very good to me. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in. So it says, so this is according to the Quantra website. Combine all ingredients in a cocktail shaker. Add ice and shake until well chilled. This calls for an egg white. There is one egg white in this cocktail, and evidently we are not dry shaking at first, not at least according to the, uh, the recipe that I'm seeing here. And I gotta do the cooking by the book, so I'm going to do that. I am going to take a single egg white, we're going to wet shake right from the beginning. That is just how we're going to do. Uh, but first, before you do so, we're gonna get some ice, we're gonna grade it to temperature, um, and this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna grab a big old ice cube for our cocktail shaker, let me grab one of those. Hello there. And then, I'm gonna grab the United States of America, minus Hawaii, uh, and all the outlying territories, and Alaska. And first we're gonna take, oh, Florida's already gone. I dropped Florida on the floor, unfortunately. We're gonna take West Virginia, which is actually combined with regular Virginia, because apparently it's just too damn small. And we're also gonna take, oh, uh, Louisiana, which I already used earlier. So I'm also gonna add North and South Dakota. And I'm also gonna add Nebraska, because <laughs> Nebraska. If there's anybody in Nebraska, please tell me you're from Nebraska, and I'll pick another state to make fun of. It's fun. Where's Delaware and Rhode Island? Ooh! 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 We're coming for the East Coast now. Uh... Delaware and Rhode Island. They're combined uh, with New Jersey. They're combined with New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. They're all- they're just all together. Oh, and Maryland. We get- we're taking out Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Maryland. The stream is going into the glass. Because I'm located in Philadelphia. Nice. <laughs> that's so funny. All right, so that's chilling in one glass. In the other glass, I'm going to do the egg thing first. Uh, so if I screw it up, I can clean up and try again next time. I'm going to take out the eggs that I had previously. It was funny. We started off the stream with an egg white, too. And I still have the yolk in here, and I'm probably going to cook that in the morning. It's great! I'm gonna take my egg yoker and hopefully do this correctly. If it doesn't work out, I'll say this, not once have I ever accidentally gotten yolk into a cocktail and have it taste bad. Like for some reason, every time that I fucked up an egg white extraction, it's always gone pretty well. Not, not because of my skill, just because like an egg yolk really doesn't do anything bad. It just provides a little bit of texture and color. Easy. That worked out. That worked very well. Put you in the bucket. Put you over here. Jeff says, just glad we're not stuck in Boston. Thank goodness we're not in Boston. I went to Boston once. I swiftly came back because MIT denied me entry into their college program. It's fine. They didn't know what they're missing. I'll pop this out of here. Egg white goes in. Egg yolk. Ready for breakfast in the morning. Excellent. 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 Oh, God. I said that three times and did not realize the, what I was saying. Chew it there, chew it there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, camera's not bitter at all. I'm not bitter at all, dude. I have an MIT sweatshirt that I wear sometimes, and people are like, "Oh my god, you went to MIT?" I was like, "No, I didn't." So next, what we're gonna add? Uh, now that we have our egg white in there, we're gonna add a full ounce of Cointreau. Full ounce of Cointreau. About thirty milliliters, by the way. Quantro, very nice smelling. I like it. Goes into one side. Next, we're gonna add a full ounce of fresh lemon juice. We're gonna squeeze that up real fresh here. I have more lemons, right? I do have more lemons, yes. Great. Uh, do I have any extra lemons, actually? I have a little bit of lemon left over. It's wedged in with the other grapefruit. So let me pull those guys out and extract as much juice as I can from them as possible. There we go. We need a full ounce of this, full ounce of lemon juice. Rich says he likes his bitters like he likes his men. Dashing, hey, the jokes are coming full circle. I like that. I like a nice dashing man. 
And, and by a dashing, let me expand upon it a little bit. I like men who, when they shake themselves, as opposed to pouring all over the place, it's only a little bit at a time. Very controlled amounts. Take that as you will. And then, oh, I broke the glass. It's okay, this one was cracked anyway. Hey, this is the first time we've broken a glass on stream. Mazel tov. I dig it, but I still want that lemon in there. There we go. Got it. Sweet. That was a very clean break, too. Yeah, this one was already... This has been broken for a while. Been broken for a while. We'll carefully take that and put it into the recycling bin. Awesome. Is there any glass shards over here? We'll make sure to do a thorough analysis later. Very cool. Hey, dude. What's up, Cranky Pants? I just broke a glass. Is the internet proud of me yet? Dad? Are you proud of me yet? Actually, I know my father is proud of me. We've had a lot of really awesome conversations recently. I love him very much. And now we have a full ounce of lemon juice where I can ponder my parental issues or lack thereof and combine together. This is great. I love this. It is truly party time. Dude, what's a party without a couple of broken glasses? I wouldn't know it. And I didn't even to crack. I didn't need to crack open another lemon. Hey, buddy, I've been thinking. Oh, yes, Kiri? Kyrieus, 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 Kyrieus. The yes part is easy for me. The next thing that we got is apparently, according to the Quantra website, a single ounce of specifically the botanist gin. And who am I to argue? I have the botanist gin, we'll utilize the botanist gin. Also, I don't know why I still have this grapefruit. Oh, because it was in the container that is now broken. I'm going to put you down with the other half of you there we go that's fine single ounce of specifically the botanist gin and isla dry gin from the isla the isla isla in i believe that's scotland or ireland it's one of the two foraged island botanicals distilled from 100 percent grain spirits from the island of isla i think that's scotland or ireland i can't remember Scotland! It's Scotland. It says Scotland on the bottle. I definitely did not say Ireland. I definitely don't get those two confused sometimes. I'm not a, ge I'm not a geographist. And that's fine. Alright, so we've added Cointreau and egg white, fresh lemon juice, and the, specifically the botanist gin to our cocktail shaker. Now all you need to do is shake it and pour it into the coupe glass that is currently chilling in the freezer. So let's do that. Let's strain out any excess water that we have. There was actually a lot of water in that one. Combine liquids with solids, including egg white. Yum. And uh, no dry shaking the egg white. This one gets wet shaken with all the other reagents. And give that a shake. I got a couple of grapefruit seeds on my desk. Desk? It's a bar. It can also be a desk. This is a very multi-faceted piece of furniture. Now we're gonna strain that out into the coupe glass that I had chilling. It's not as chilled as I wanted it to be. I really should have chilled that a little bit earlier, but ah, here we are, so it's all good. So now I'll bring the cocktail angle over here. Oh, actually, actually, it is doing the thing. It's doing the thing that I like when I chill glasses, so let's take a look. Take a look at that. I'm gonna put you over top of, currently this is over top of the other cocktail. Actually, you can you can actually see the rim of the glass that it's currently over top of. There we go, there we go. That's a happy looking desk. It's a very happy desk. It's got alcohol over it, dude. Ain't no happier desk out there. This is imbued with the alcohol of the ages. And so now it says that we're gonna strain this into a chill coupe glass. No double straining here. This is just it. All right, here we go. And I don't think it gets garnished. Garnished with a lemon twist. Let's actually get the lemon twist prepared first. That way, everything is fresh. Here's a lemon. I'm going to peel it. There we go. And I'm just going to merely twist it. Twist it real good. That's a well-twisted thing to me. All right, well, strain and garnish. That is so frothy. Because it's got an egg white in it. Mm. 
And that's our white lady. Now I know why they call it a white lady. It's very white looking. I, yeah, I can definitely see where that color is coming from. I didn't think that this was gonna come out as opaque that it did. This is actually really cool looking. That's awesome. And it smells so fragrant even from here. Wow, very nice. Make sure we get a picture for the grams. Let's see how that looks, the white lady. Wow, that is really cool looking. I love the way that looks. Wow. Good job, lady, you rocking it. All right, cool. We'll give this thing a taste. Uh, that's, the la that's the last colored cocktail this evening. So many cocktails, it's great. I'm pretty sure, I just need to make sure that I took a picture of everything because this there is after stuff that I must be doing. There we go, we did take a picture of everything. We are all good there. So let's see how this thing smells. Right now it's very like zesty to me. Very zesty, wow, incredibly zesty. This is so potently like, I didn't plan, I mean I did express the lemon because I twirled the thing up, but this is so overtly like lemon zest like everywhere. It's completely taken over my olfactory senses here. It smells wonderful and it tastes Oh, that's so interesting. That is dry. Oh, it's it's dry. It's orangey. It's very... This reminds me of something. This reminds me of the way that Curacao tastes without all the sweetness. Like, it's that, like, zesty orange. I know there's a bunch of lemon juice in there, but this is so zesty. This is so interesting. It's also really, really dry. Like that egg white is doing the job of drying things like considerably. It's very noticeable. Um, that combined with the, the lemon juice, those two things are really, really dry in my mouth right now. Mm. It's not even super duper sour. Like there is enough else in there from the botanicals of the botanist, from the orange flavor of the Quantra. I, I actually, I've never had, aside from, I think the Cosmopolitan that I made last week, or I think, I think the Cosmopolitan was with lime juice. So that, co that combination of Quantro and citrus juice is something that I've only just begun to explore a bit. And that's nice. So far, two for two. Quantro has done a really great job at combining with tart and sour reagents that make it more or less pleasing for me to drink. The Cosmo is still a little bit too tart for me, but this is pretty good. That's not bad at all. It's still very, very drying, and it's definitely gonna come up and bother me later. I mean, more so in the my esophageal reflux stuff. Disgusting. But it's so zesty. It's super duper zesty, and I really like that. That's really good. Definitely, definitely lemon zest. I was getting a little notes of the orange before, and that's probably the Quantro kind of doing its thing in there, but it's also, it's it's mostly lemon zesty. Like, this is very, very much like, oh, it's almost like I was making a note about lemon meringue before. This is like almost lemon meringue, but a lot more dry. It's less on the, te it's, a, it's like lemon meringue, but a completely different texture. It's like taking a lemon head, right, and grinding it all up and turning it into a foam, uh, but it also has enough acid to wear, wear away your teeth. Which I guess, I guess lemon head essence will do anyways. That's what I would guess. And that's our white lady. That is our white lady so far. And so, and so, this is where we find ourselves 11 plus cocktails later, a single cocktail for every single color in the Pride Progress Rainbow. All the way from the top, we have our Angus store. I'll do, a, I'll do a whole wrap up at the end. We'll do a whole thing. There's one more thing that I really want to try because I was tempted by doing so. And I believe it was Rich who was the one who gave us the recipe for, it's like a rainbow shot type thing. I'm going to try that. So I'm going to try that my best. Apparently it's possible that it really, really needs like proper ex execution. And I don't know whether we're going to be able to properly pull off that execution, but Damn, we're gonna give it a try, nonetheless. We'll give it our best shot. So I think this was called like the rainbow shot or something. Actually, I have my I have my notepad over here. Here we are, here we are, here we are. Pull it up over here. I see. Hmm. It was rich. Rainbow shots. It's rainbow shots. That's what they is. That's what they are. And it combines a couple of things together. So let me get my shaker ready. 
Um, what we start off with is in a shaking tin, we pour in some grenadine. So I have my shaking tin and I will pour in some grenadine over here. Let me kind of do a little bit of an adjustment. Now we got the recipe right on standby. If this works out, that's kind of cool. I need shot glasses. So let me go get some shot glasses while I'm at it. In the front of the bar, there's a lot of things in the front of the bar with an X that you don't necessarily see, and one of those things is a bunch of shot glasses. So, and I'm sure that I have enough for the occasion. So I have one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven. We got it all. Oh, I'm tripping over myself. Your boy was in a fraternity. There had to be shots. Actually, one of the things that I bought while I was at my fraternity was a glass chess set where every single piece, I guess glass checkers technically, each side of the board was re represented either by circular shot glasses or squareular shot glasses. And the thing about that was the, the fact that like the square ones clearly hold more liquid than the circular ones, so it's not a fair fight. Like, the square side's getting dunked on. Um, and I'm trying to think about that, but the best way to, to arrange these shot glasses, I'll worry about it a little bit later, because I want to arrange them in such a way that we can see them as we're pouring the shots. So I've never actually done that before, so if you'll join me to the end, we'll, experiencing some, we'll experiment with something and uh, together. So we'll see how that goes. So the first thing that we need to do for our rainbow shots is we need to take a single ounce of grenadine and put it at the bottom of our shaking tin. And I know we're going to need a piece of ice on top of that, so I'll grab one in preparation for that. We'll see if this works. And if it does, cool! If it doesn't, well, where's my grenadine? Where is my grenadine? Oh, oh there you is. I was standing behind it. Apparently I forgot to put that back in the fridge. This is exciting. It's exciting indeed. So a single ounce, right? I have... I need a clean measuring majigger. Let's use this guy. There we go. That'll work. Could definitely use more measurers. A single ounce of grenadine goes at the bottom of the shaker. If I had any more pint glasses remaining, I would mix it. Actually, you know what? That, that we're, we are going to do that because I want everyone to see what's going on. So let me double check to make sure that this other pint glass of mine actually fits. And we'll use that, right? Don't we? Don't we? I know I have another pint glass around here somewhere. Oh, there you is. Behind me. There we go. Let me clean this out real quick. I want everyone to see the color that's happening on the inside of here because I'm actually kind of curious about it too. There we go. Give that a little bit of a clean. I could definitely use more pint glasses now that we're down one. Ooh. I think we all right. I felt something nick my hand a little bit. I thought maybe it might have been a shard of glass, but it seems that we're all good. No blood. All's good. All right. So let's actually, we're going to watch this as it happens. Because I want to see, I want to see whether or not this works. So, and uh, it'll be a testament to skill as a bartender. I don't really know. Let me get this angle a little bit closer over here. I'm going to do a little bit of an adjustment. We're going to watch that bar from this angle and see whether or not we can make things work the way that I hopefully intend them to. I'm trying my best over here. Let's try that. We're going on along for a little bit of a ride. I think I can work with that. Here's our apparatus. There's the other side of it. Let's go here. Yeah, that looks all right. It was purple rain seeking revenge for losing its color. I knew it would come back to bite us. I knew it would. So we have a single ounce of grenadine all the way at the bottom. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add gently ice so that as to not splash the grenadine. I feel, I don't know whether a large piece of ice would work with this or maybe smaller pieces of ice. Let me see if I have smaller ice cubes remaining. That might work a little bit better with this. We have the rest of the continental United States. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna use that. We're gonna take Maine, Connecticut, Vermont, and more or less the upper uh, Northeast. We're gonna take North Carolina, pop that in there. We're gonna put South Carolina, pop that in there. We'll take Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. We'll put them all in there. I think that's more or less enough ice for the purposes that we're working with this. Ah! Well, I dropped Alabama, so we're going to use Tennessee and Kentucky to make up for it. There we go. That's ice enough for me. I'll take it. Now what we need to do, we're going to do the next one with sweet and sour mix. Now, 
sweet and sour mix can be made in a variety of different ways. Everyone's got their own recipes. Uh, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna split the difference, right? I've got some limes, I got some lemon, I got some simple syrup. I'm gonna mix it all together. So I'll do one ounce of lime, one ounce of lemon, one ounce of simple, and we'll call that our sour mix. And I'm gonna try, as I may, to f kind of combine that together in something that I pour in a carefully. Rich says, if this works, I'll give five subs, and if it doesn't work, I'll still give them for the effort. The only time Georgia and Vermont will see eye to eye. This is, this is a whole, I love the fact that, I think it was my future mother-in-law who got me uh, those state things. And at first I was like, I don't know what kind of use I'm gonna get out of these things, but they have been very, very fun to mess around with on this stream. So I'm very happy that they're hitting the mark. Good job, future mother-in-law. All right, so let's grab our jitter. And we'll add a single ounce. I'll put this over in our jigger over here. I know I need a single ounce of lemon juice. So I got about a single ounce of lemon juice. Let me get a an intermediary glass. That's all out. I'll grab an intermediary glass. Let's go with this guy over here. So that's a single ounce of our lemon. We'll do a single ounce of our lime, which I'll probably need to sacrifice a couple of limes for. You cut through the sticker again. Oh, nice. Oh, and Rich is in Georgia. Nice. Stickers add flavor. At least I didn't juice the... I guess technically I juiced the sticker, right? I like... A piece of me is like... Oh, do I have to take off these stickers before I do these streams and stuff? Nah. It's fine. It's just a little bit of... You know, everybody's got to have a little bit of... I mean, it wouldn't be American mixology if not for the vast amounts of various chemicals that make our way into the water and also pass the FDA around here. So I'll take it. It's just like, it's just the American way, right? Fast food, big, big, div big burgers and uh, chemicals in my body, I suppose. And people telling me that artificial sweeteners are going to make me sterile. I don't know, man. I don't really know. To each their own. <laughs> Is that the mistake the guy in Cocktail Masters did? He forgot to remove, remove stickers? Well, if removing stickers was, is deadly, uh, I don't want to spoil anything. But uh, if you believe, if you believe with all your heart that not removing the stickers may kill people, and that my life is at risk up here, then yes, that is exactly what it was. One ounce of lime, one ounce of lemon. I, honestly, I think sour mix can be done specifically half to half of sweet and sour. Um, but I'm just gonna do this instead. I kinda wanna see how this goes. Um, I don't usually make uh, sours. Um, I don't because I don't like make cocktails in bulk. I don't usually have a need for like sweet and sour mix that I didn't like, you know, buy from the store. And I try to do things fresh if I can. Sing single ounce of simple syrup. I'm gonna give that a little bit of an agitation, and uh, that's our sweet and sour mix. We'll have to taste it first, obviously. I have to see. I'll mix it with a knife because I'm edgy. We'll see whether or not. This actually works. And what was it? Actually, it said that we need uh, three ounces of sweet and sour mix. So this actually works out perfectly. We have this taste. I would say I actually really like that. That is sweet and it is sour. So I'll take that. So now what we need to do is gently add a spoon sweet and sour mix. I said that most definitely in the correct order. I'm going to use this gl this spoon I got over here. This is probably not the best glass for pouring, but we're gonna try our best anyways. Now, supposedly there is a trick to like actually let this travel down the back of this bar spoon. Let me let me move this up a little bit just so we can kind of get an idea of what we're seeing on the top over here. I don't know if that's gonna work. I'm gonna try my bestest. And if it works, cool. If it don't, whatever. This is probably not the right glass for it. It should travel right down this spoon here. It wants to. It's not really working the way I want to, but we're making our way. Slowly but surely. If we just do it gently, it will work. It is definitely layering, I'll put it that much. There we go. Now it's traveling down. There we go. Keep that at the top. There we go. It actually worked. It's doing. It's working. Nice. There we go. Cool. Oh, let me move this angle down a little bit so we can actually see the layers that are forming. There we go. 
There we go. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh, we got a shot glass in the way. There we go, we got a shot glass in the way. Put this back over here. Great. Next, what we need to add is a single ounce, right? Single ounce? It was a single ounce of orange juice. I still have orange juice left over from earlier. So we'll measure out a single ounce of that, about 30 milliliters. Hopefully we have enough. Otherwise, we're gonna have to sacrifice some more oranges. Yep, oh yeah, we got plenty. Got plenty there, nice. And I'll pour this as well. Uh, this is a little steep, so let me... This is my stream, I'll sip if I wanna. All right, let's see if I can... This does not wanna go very well. We'll work with it anyways. We'll work with it anyways. Kind of wants to drip down the side of the glass. I'll take it. There we go. That's the... I'm not sure if y'all can see what's happening here, but it is traveling down the bar spoon. The little ridges in the bar spoon allow it to kind of travel along down it. Working pretty well. And lo and behold, I can't believe it. It actually layered on top too. That's so cool. All right. So far, Rich is three for three. I'll take it. All right. Next, we have to add a single ounce, I believe. Oh, two ounces of vodka. So let's grab some vodka. I'm going to use the good vodka that I've got. I got this Union Forge vodka. It's a locally made one, and I like it very, very much. So far, best vodka that I've got in my collection so far. We need two full ounces of that vodka. So we'll add that to this side, and we will, just as we were doing previously, <laughs> spill it all over the bar. Duh. Obviously. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully trying to keep everything up on top. Oops. Hello there. As it tries to make its way down the other side of the glass... It's vodka. It should, it's got enough alcohol in it that it should float to the top pretty well. It's kind of pouring down my arm a little bit. Just a tad. Let's try to see if I can do it this way. I might actually learn to trust myself a little bit more with this one. This, this is working pretty well. I think I should just trust the process with that bar spoon. This is, this is working actually incredibly well. That is very clearly combining with the yellow. That is working very, very well. That is great. And I can clean my arms up a little bit because I got vodka all over them. I love it. Might need a little bit more, but it's okay. I think we'll be all right. Put that Union Forge away, away. Put them in the back. And the last thing that we need is we need to add three quarters of an ounce of blue Curacao. Now, I remember it says here, the blue curacao will sink right away, so we have to be ready to pour. So, carefully strain the mix into the shot glasses. So, now, what I'm going to try to do is set this up in such a way. I might have to move my microphone out of the way a little bit. Take this orange juice and put it back over here. And we'll try to set this up in such a way that this works properly. Will it? I have no idea, but we are most certainly going to give it a try. Let's see. So, if I arrange this in such a way that we can see all these shot glasses all in a row, can I fit seven? Let's see. Uh, we might be might be pushing it a little bit. I think we'll make it work. Let's see. If I line them all just up like that, is that working? Ooh, it looks like I'm going to... Okay, let me move it back just a tad. Put it back just a tad. Rich, you man of your word. Look at that. Wowza. This is going to go to... What is it going to go to? Dude, this is going to go to my bottle journey. Because as I travel and stuff, I want to buy some local bottles and stuff. You are the reason, my guy. Thank you. Let me put... Here, I need a little... I need another little surface over here. Actually, no, I don't. No, I don't. I'm going to pop it right there. If I spill it... If it falls onto the floor, it's fine. We'll take it. We'll pop it on the floor and it'll be just fine. All right. Let's see. We've got all these in a row. We've got our combination in the background. We need to add three quarters of an ounce of Curacao. We'll see how that goes. Let me grab my Curacao. Haram Walker coming in for yet another victory this evening, evidently. That's about 22 milliliters for our folks across the pond. There we go. Dude, if this if this works the way that we think it does, I'm gonna be surprised. 
Dude, I'll take myself out for a night. I'll take everybody out. If I meet anybody along my journey, I'll take them all out. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to put the Curacao into the thing here. And we're going to carefully strain the mix into the shot glasses. So evidently, I need a strainer as well. I need a strainer? I guess I do kind of need a strainer. Um, yeah, I'm just going to... This one's kind of eggy. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> let me clean that off a little bit. Significantly less frothy than it was before. All right. I'm going to try as best as I can to put this down. The bar spoon. I've learned to trust the process, so I'm just going to... I'm going to trust the process. Here we go. Blue curacao. Down, 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 down. Poured, put it to the side, bar spoon to the side, strain, let's go. Let's see how this works. Oh, sorta kinda. Oh, wow. No, you know what? I can totally see a color gradient there. It's not quite, I gotta say, it's quite not, it's not quite rainbow. However, I can definitely see a color gradient there. That's actually really cool. I totally take that. I think that needs more light. I want to see how that looks with a little more light on. You know what? I like that gradient all the way from the blue all the way to the red. That is kind of cool. I'll dig it. I dig it. That's kind of cool. Okay, I think I should have been... Actually, you know what? I can really see. I can really see the, the blue over here. I can see it shifting to kind of a green. And I can see it going towards the yellow. This is very stoplighty over here. And this is very much just a variety of blues and stuff. I will take it. Rich, I am so glad that you shared that. I would have never even known that that was a thing. I give you full props for that one. That is cool. That was cool and that was awesome. And I'm glad that we have some nice, that because we caught it right on stream, we have some nice screenshots from that too. I'll try to make sure that I add that to the cocktail blog later. Otherwise, oh my gosh, that was so cool. Let me bring it back to this guy. That was cool. That was fun. What a way to end things off. That was awesome. Now, actually, I'm super curious. I am going to taste all of these because I want to see if I can discern any flavor differences for our little rainbow thing. I didn't update our cocktail recipe. It's fine. It's going to be all right. I consider this a success. This is absolutely a success. The fact that we tried is definitely an A for effort here. So let's see. Very curacao. Tastes, it tastes like blue curacao. Not a fan of that. Ooh, I can get the sour mix and the curacao on that. And I like the way the sour mix tastes. So I like that. This one here. More sour mix, less curacao. Actually, this flavor gradient is working. This is totally working. I'm, okay, I'm into this. That is also very sour mixy, but it's also green. That's, that's okay. Getting a little bit into grenadine territory. Oh yeah, that tastes like grenadine and sour mix. Mostly still sour mix though. Sour mix is very prevalent in the middle over here. That is mostly grenadine. It's all right. That's all right. It's mostly grenadine. A little bit of sour mix. And this one over here. Oh, that's like grenadine and vodka. Wow. That is, just, that is very alcoholic grenadine. That's not bad. If I had to pick a favorite. If this one is to be orange or yellow, I'd do this one. I like that very much. Down the hatch. This is this was wonderful, y'all. Thank you. That was great. Who said that? Taste the rainbow? Yes, I love that very much. We tasted the rainbow tonight. That we did. And this is time for a little summary over here because this is all I got planned for this evening. This was very fun. And we managed to get through all of it. That's awesome. Pat on the back for everybody. We made it all the way through. And so, going in that order... We'll do a little bit of a summary around here as we tasted our way across the rainbow today, and then quite literally at the end, tasting the rainbow itself with a beautiful contribution for our buddy, from our buddy Rich out there. So we started off by going through all the individual color codes of the Pride Progress flag, which I'd put it up on the screen now, but I didn't prepare for that. It's the one that has like that little arrow on the side with a little bit of the trans flag in there and a little bit of black, white, and brown and stuff. We started off at the top of the rainbow with a color red. Our red cocktail for the evening 
was an Angostura Sour. Very nice, very good. It's a nice combination of your bitters and whatnot. With a little bit of sour mix in there. It goes great with the textures added by the egg white. And even still, shockingly enough, that layered foam up on top is still there. And it's been pff, four hours. So evidently, it stands the test of time. The next color that we had was orange. And that was our mimosa over here, combined with two ounces of orange juice and whatever amount left that we had for Prosecco because this container does not does not bode its very itself very well to volumetric measurings. This is, it's, it's, it's okay. It's been separating itself very much so over here. I've had better mimosas, but it is a mimosa nonetheless, and it is orange, and I have to respect that. The next cocktail that we made was the one over here. It's very full. I'm not going to grab it, but it was called the Yellow Jacket. That was our yellow cocktail of the evening. It combines elderflower liqueur. It combines yellow chartreuse, and I believe that there was gin in there as well. I'm going to go back and double check that real quick, because that was a really, really tasty one that I'm really happy that we went for. I also tried to make a little garnish with it it was difficult it was fun i enjoyed myself very much oh and it also used reposado tequila and that was a great way to use that i think it blended very very well with the other flower kind of overpowering but like there was this interesting dance being played between the elder flower liqueur and the yellow chartreuse and my mouth tasted like reposado afterwards that i really kind of appreciated i really like the way that reposados sit Especially Patron in this case, because that's the only Reposado I got. So it was an expensive one, too, even with having the Chartreuse in there as well. The next part of the rainbow was green. So we made this Japanese gin and tonic over here. Now, evidently, Midori feels themselves the kind of top of the throne there to decide that this is the gin and tonic that represents the entirety of Japanese culture. It was okay. It was like a gin and tonic. It had some Midori in it. It was it was all right. It was still very... The, I think the tonic water that you choose there for most of your gin and tonics, this applies to all of your gin and tonics, is really going to make it. And I don't think I have the right gin and... I don't think I have the right tonic for the occasion. So the Japanese gin and tonic also kind of suffered from that. Partly on me, partly on, I guess, Midori for claiming all of the country of Japan for this gin and tonic. It was good. And we put a little lemon slice in it. It was all right. It kind of tasted a little weird though, I'll be honest there. Next up to the color green, we went to the color blue, and we have two blue cocktails over here. One was the blue Hawaiian, which basically just tastes like Malibu. It's, it's great. It's coconutty. It's pineapple. It's like a pina colada, but significantly more liquid and less thick on there. We garnished it on top with a little, little bit of um, lemon wedges and some maraschino cherries and a little bit of this blue, co these blue coconut flakes that I made last week for a cocktail recipe called the Caribbean Blue, where you essentially took coconut flakes. You put it into blue curacao, you have blue curacao that tastes like coconut, or co-curacao, and we have blue coconut flakes that taste like coconut, and if they've been sitting in a freezer for a week, um, they're a little dry. Um, but the thing tastes great. It tastes like Malibu. I love Malibu. I've never had a blue Hawaiian before, and it was mostly because I figured I knew exactly what it was going to taste like, and I knew it was going to taste good, and um, lo and behold, I was right. The next blue cocktail that we did is kind of an ode to the light blue part of the flag, which I also kind of subbed in as like the whole indigo part of the Roy G. Biv mentality. And that one was a cocktail called Holy Water. Why is it called Holy Water? No freaking idea. It was a recommendation from my grandmother, and I'm glad that she sent it over because Anna actually got the idea of dissolving some blue raspberry rock candy and blue raspberry Jolly Rancher into some vodka, and we used that as the base for this, which is basically a combination of lemonade, rum, and blue raspberry vodka. You could either infuse it yourself or you could buy it out at the store. My recommendation for a blue raspberry liqueur out there is Old Smoky Moonshine. It's really, really good. It was a gift from a friend of mine, and it has popped up in a couple of different places in the street so far and i love it every single time it's a it's a it's a good hit honestly tasted pretty good just the kind of a delicate balance between sour and sweet a little bit with like what anna describes a weirdness that i think comes from the blue raspberry she says comes from the rum whatever your interpretation um it's holy water so take that as you will the next part of the rainbow was obviously the color purple and we tried to make a purple drink the purple rain cocktail over here which kind of looks like asphalt has oddly enough this is interesting it is kind of separated as it's uh as it's been sitting there there is a, a layer up on top and a layer down on the bottom so that's kind of separated a little bit as it's been sitting there that was weird right we tried to make it purple you combine we combined grenadine and blue curacao together hoping that red plus blue made purple and it really didn't work so we tried to recover it with some food dye it got really really dark looking kind of went to a couple emo and punk concerts and it came back looking like this hoping to take revenge on us later in the stream where i blame what this i'm calling now black magic breaking one of our pint glasses it was great fun 
and whatnot as, a, as are some of the mosh pits at the concerts I've gone to. Some of them being punk, some of them being rock. Rock on, dude. That was supposed to be purple. It obviously wasn't purple. So we kind of subbed in with a really quick uh, purple gin and tonic where we took some butterfly pea flower infused gin, which comes out a nice blue color and combine it with tonic water. This tonic water, in our case, was very acidic. It caused the blue butterfly pea flower to turn purple. And that is the easiest magic trick that I know how to cover on these streams as it pertains to cocktail magic. Uh, so that's, we've, we've got a couple of purple contenders there. Well, let's just say one is violet and one is purple and move on with our lives. After the main part of the rainbow, we moved on to the other different parts of the ra uh, the, the pride flag itself well, per by going first to the color pink. And we have a cocktail over here called the Pink Amilico, which is a cocktail of my own creation, which utilizes a rhubarb rose syrup combined with some strawberry gin, some honey syrup, and some regular, regular as it can be, London dry gin for something that is very floral, it's nutsy balanced, and it has all of those notes that you would expect. It's got the strawberry, it's got the rose, it's got the honey. I think it's a little sweet and it probably needs a little uh, volume changing but overall I think it's pretty good and it looks pink so I'm gonna take that and run with it afterwards we did uh, the color black the black cocktail that we used for the evening was the black Manhattan and although it doesn't really look that black it is definitely darker on the color spectrum than a regular Manhattan would be namely because we add a dark Amaro spirit to it Usually you would create a black Manhattan using an, Aver an Amaro Averna, which I don't have any tasting notes on because I've never actually tasted it on its own and I can't seem to find it at my local liquor store. However, I did use this Amaro that we have over here, this Vigo Amaro, which to me kind of tastes like the forest floor and it was actually delicious. I had a black Manhattan out at a bar uh, a few weeks ago when we had our friend More Than Awesome up here and I loved it and I needed to take it back. I needed to take it back to my bar to figure out why I liked it and and this particular version of it allowed me to figure that out. There was a spice note from the high rye whiskey that I used. There was a wonderful, like almost like dry cocoa note to it that I just, I love in, when I drink beers, I like to drink ports and stouts and stuff. And a lot of them have those cocoa notes to it. I felt that in this cocktail and I loved it. And it tastes really, really good. So I would highly recommend anybody who likes their classic cocktails a little shifted, a black Manhattan should be your next drink, I would say, in my opinion. After the color black, we went to the color brown, something significantly more brown, especially on the lighter side of the spectrum than the black Manhattan that we made. The brown derby, a cocktail that combines in it, um, it was grapefruit juice, there was honey syrup, and there was something else in there, and I can't exactly remember what it was, and it's gonna smack me right in the face when I remind myself what it was. My computer is slow, so it's taking me a hot minute over there. It was, oh, it was bourbon, right? I'm not even gonna look at the stream. It was bourbon, right? It was bourbon. It was bourbon, grapefruit juice, and honey syrup. And like, I had never had one of these before, never. And I was shocked to find that despite the fact that it had the grapefruit juice in there, it wasn't super sour, it wasn't super tart. It tastes amazing. I've never had a brown derby before, and I think that aspect of the uh, grapefruit juice goes a little um, potentially unnoticed in other cocktails and stuff. It provides, it brings the citrus without necessarily bringing the, the astringent sourness that personally, I'm not a big fan of. So I like that brown derby very much. Jeff popping in here saying there was a broken glass along the way. I don't remember when we did that. Oh, I think it was, I was specifically trying to get, I think lemon, lemons out of the container. I, I was trying to get lemons out of a container. And I think that was when we were making the last cocktail. And that was this white lady over here. This is a white cocktail. It is probably the most bright thing that you can see on the screen right now, aside from, no, not even that stuff. This is not that bright compared to this cocktail right here. This is the highest, I guess, Saturate exposure setting that you'll see here aside from I guess the shirt I'm wearing No, that's definitely brighter That's a white lady cocktail it combines as a part of it Cointreau lemon juice a single egg white and specifically the botanist gin according to Cointreau.com It's great. It's lovely. It is a very it is a very drying cocktail. It is very lemon forward It is very much the essence of lemon zest but all over my mouth and inside of my teeth and all the way to the dentist's office. It is very, it is a, has a nice tartness to it. At some point in time, I was trying to get a lemon that I had shoved into a pint glass out of the pint glass and uh, we wound up breaking a glass. I think that's, I think that's the first glass that I've broken on stream so far. Although there might have been something farther back, like in the old apartment, I don't exactly remember. Um, but, you know, lechayim, or so we say. We celebrate those things. It just means that I can get a better pint glass for next time, because that one was definitely the one that was already cracked. 
And so after we made our way through the entire rainbow, we settled upon trying our hand at a rainbow shots cocktail where essentially you combine in, um, in a layered fashion inside of another container, another pint glass that didn't get broken, some grenadine, some sour mix, some orange juice, some vodka, and some blue curacao, and you try to pour that quick enough to get a gradient between your sort of blues and your reds, or your reds back to your blues. And lo and behold, they can, I'll, I'll post some pictures in the Discord later because what you see before you in terms of shot glasses does not do the justice of that occasion, but we did get a gradient from something that is a little blue, kind of green seafoam-ish, to something that was definitely red, like very obviously some sort of orange muck thing that crawled out of the depths. Um, my favorite was whatever fell between red and the farthest yellow, because I drank it all and you can't see it anymore, but it tasted good. Honestly, not necessarily something that's known for his taste, as it was astutely pointed out by our friend Rich out there. And I'm thankful for them to actually bring it up, because that way we were able to try it. And we did! And I think, more or less, could it have been better? Of course. But uh, we're, we're, I think I'm very confident in my noviceness here. So uh, maybe like two or three years from now, we'll come back to this and it'll be a chef ki chef's kiss. And that's where we'll leave it. So in any case, to everybody who joined me around for that, this has probably been the longest cocktail stream that we've done in a while, but for a very good purpose. For anybody who doesn't realize it already, Pride Month is ending. It's June. I'm a prideful individual myself. Maybe you are one as well. You all are welcome here at the Bar with an X. And this is our way of kind of tip taking our hats off and saluting to the end of yet another wonderful half of the year, I suppose, because we're like six months in and stuff. And the year's not over. We've got six months left, but I promise. I promise that we're going to make it till the end. And we did. We made it all the way to the end. Lo and behold, here we are at the end of the stream. This is all I got for this evening. This is a lot of fun. This was very, very fun. I had a lot of fun with this one. And to everybody who stuck around until the bitter end, some of them were bitter. Some of the drinks were not. Some of them were actually very sweet. I thank you very much for joining me until then. Cheers to everyone. Good night. Take care. Be well. Be safe to everybody out there, no matter where you are. I'll be back again next week with something very, very different. There are some really exciting things coming to the bar with the next. And if you enjoyed this one, I'm sure you'll enjoy the next one as well a completely different stream entirely there will not be a pride part three because it's not june anymore it'll be july it's not for the july either i'm not a very patriotic person you'll just have to wait until then thank you everybody so much for joining me along on this this wonderfully colorful adventure that we had if the moon is out where you are then i hope you have a wonderful rest of your night as well as i will most certainly do after this because it was so fun if the sun is rising where you are then maybe your cup of coffee has something a little extra into it let me know i'm very curious to see what you're drinking out there dawn twilight otherwise afternoon may you have a wonderful one whatever your time zone may be I hope it is a wonderful one. Till everybody, thanks very much. And I'll see you next week. Until then, y'all, bye.